to day two of the Padrol Onboard Classic QS1000, the second of two events, and today we'll be crowning a tra champion and we'll be finding out who will be qualifying from the Asia, re Asia region for the World Longboard Tour. We'll be taking one female, one male, and with Natsumi Taoka in this heat, current ratings leader, and uh, with yesterday's high heat total of 19.5, uh, Natsumi will be looking to and she's looking good to clinch that win and take that spot. And in the men's division, we both have our top three with Tucker, Denny, Kai Hamasi, all, all progressing through too. So, and we've also got uh, Jared Mel joining us right now. Woohoo! <laughs> in this heat, we're starting off with women's round two, but some highlights of yesterday. Well, of course, JR. Esquivel from the Philippines who he was seated into the event and he ended up taking the win as well so yeah the ratings leading rated rate the ratings leaders in the top five all progressing through in the men's and the women's so today it could go any which way with there's a lot of possibilities with 1,000 points for first place and some prize money to boot taking that win is going to be prestigious but of course going to be very important for the points as well so in this heat that's Sumi Tayoka. We have Mink in blue from Thailand. Kaidi Anui and Antoinette Valdez as well in green. So, uh, mixed nation heat. We've got Japan, Thailand, another Japanese surfer, and Philippines. All right. How are you, you this morning, Jared? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for asking. How are you? Doing good. I was exhausted after watching those highlights yesterday if you haven't had a chance if there's any sleepy heats you want to go back and have a look there's some amazing waves still a um, surprise from our competitor in red she got that 9.5 and 9 yesterday and unbelievably we missed it on the webcast it was the only power <laughs> outage of the day right during the most excellent uh, heat score as well so in uh, true Bali fashion as we see our competitor in blue, nice beautiful cross step up to the nose, short little ride. Just uh, getting started here this morning, Sunday here in Bali, down at halfway Kuta Beach. It's round or heat one, round of 16. It's gonna be a great day. I think the conditions are a little bit better today, Matt. Sure. How about you? Todd's just we're starting a little bit earlier. Oh, nice hang ten there. Uh, incomplete. So 20 minute heats. And uh, we will be progressing. We started yesterday about 7.40, so we've actually started 7 on the dot. So we're 40 minutes earlier and an hour different and tired. So today we should be finishing in some uh, better conditions than what we finished in yesterday. It was quite challenging. And saying that, after the contest finished, it did improve as predicted. Tide yeah. did come in, but uh, the whoever gets knocked out of this heat will end up making third place. We'll have three f 350 points. So Natsumi was to be knocked out. She'll have a, an amassed a total of 1350. And in Australia, that was enough for, uh, in the male side of things, Max Weston to actually take the qualifying position. Uh, one of his good friends, Kylas Flint, won the event at Manly, but got knocked out in the first round. So it was narrowly in second place, and Max took that win. So. 
We'll see how Natsumi goes. Currently in second spot, but she does have a tough heat ahead of her too. So there's a lot of possibilities, but as we expressed uh, our, I guess you could say, enthusiasm at the competitors' um, y you know, performances yesterday, there's a lot of commitment on the line. There's a lot of you know, financial investment, and um, a lot of these people have families. A lot of the, the women are mothers, and they have careers back home and surf schools, surf camps. There's a lot of pressure on them to, to do well and today's finals day and they're all vying for that spot. <coughs> Obviously there's prestige there too, Jared, but they are vying for that spot on that World Longboard Tour. Well, they're gonna have plenty of opportunity to start their campaign to getting closer to performing on that world stage. Mm. But um, The waves are going to be really good today, mid, just on the lower side of mid-tide, so I think about 10 o'clock is high tide today. Yeah, yeah, and we were fortunate yesterday that, you know, the beach breaks, the sandbars here, allowed the waves to continue all day. So whether it was high tide, low tide, there was a corner you could find out there. We saw a great display of surfing yesterday, and we're looking forward to more action today. As we see white up and riding, going right, quick nose, five, ten. Oh, she just digs it right there through that next section, unfortunately. But she's got 13 minutes left in the heat. Plenty of time to get back out there. As we were saying yesterday, it's not that big of a paddle out, so you can get back out there in 20 seconds. Exactly. Here goes green. Quick bottom turn, quick five. Nice little turn back into the section, trying to line something up on the inside. Possibility, a little side five there. Kind of on the side of the nose. That was interesting. Um, yeah. Just gonna take it all the way to the beach, folks. Oh, just kind of comes unglued right there. Looks like they didn't listen to our commentary yesterday. Some of these competitors are still opting to wear that knee leash. There was quite a few heats yesterday uh, for anyone tuning in for today and did get to catch yesterday's highlights. It got quite small. Uh, still heaps of <coughs> consistency, and if you're a competitor in a heat, that's all you want is just consistency. Doesn't matter how bad or how good it is, you just want the same opportunity. But I couldn't believe it. It was. We're talking like knee to waist high waves breaking in uh, two feet of sand and the, the leashes were actually inhibiting some of the competitors' footwork. And Natsumi, clean footwork, gets the 10, straightens out, nice carve, and opting out of that, not looking for the reform. But uh, that was a spicy little wave there for Natsumi. Great little nose rider. Open up her, oh, that would be her third wave of the first heat of today. She's the one that had those big scores from yesterday mm. out of the men and the women. Her display of surfing was just uh, great to watch. So looking forward to seeing more of that today. And we are down here at Kuda Halfway Beach. So if you're on the island of Bali, there's no traffic. Being a Sunday at the moment, it is pretty relaxing. And we're down here right in the middle. I'm looking at heaps of car spots across the road. So come on down. The Warungs will be they're setting up now. They'll be firing very soon, the coconuts and the coffee. Oh, can't wait. Where are those BGS guys? Usually they're bright. They're up and early. So, uh, but um, nice beautiful. replay of the nose ride. I love that. Uh, getting some speed. That little turn down. Yeah, a little turn down. And talked about yesterday the. Ooh. It was blue. Yeah, this is uh, Mink, an intelligent surfer from Thailand. He's been studying around the world. She's been in Australia. And, um, oh, see that big smile. She's stoked to be out there right now. Another beautiful day here in Bali. We're just getting things started today. The sun's going to break out shortly. The wind's going to go offshore. Well, you know, and it's overcast in the morning. Usually the winds are offshore, right? Or no wind. Yeah, no wind. It's going to be a beautiful day, as predicted. Thanks to uh, Elon Musk for the weather conditions and surf report. <laughs> uh, with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left, folks. Red is out in front with a total heat score of 9.50. Followed by our lady in white, the 7.67. Right behind her is green, the 5.00. But looks like actually blue jumped up in third. She's got a total of 6.17. So still plenty of opportunities. We see green trying to make her way up oh. the standings. Standing tall right there, cool and collected. So what, oh, we'll see the replay on that shortly, but. Um she did get the tan, she put the hands by the side, but the judges will be looking for a lot of um, what we call levitation and some clean nose riding. So 
Yeah. Quite clean nose running means the water displacing around the nose isn't spraying up too much. And we'll see Natsumi here. Fast paddle, knifing it, hunting down the line, and she's up on the high line. Clean footwork. That was a nice five from Natsumi. Unfortunately, she's not going to get anything else on that wave, but plenty of time still in the heat. So last one, the good scoring wave was a 5.83 they gave her for that cut down. Yeah. Um, and I think that was well rewarded. It's a clean rail work. Um, and then, yeah, 4-4-1 four, four, for our Surfer Mink to progress into second place. Oh, this is Kaidi. Gets the nose, it comes through in the middle of the board. See the surfers here with her just tapping the ear a little bit and water in it, perhaps. <laughs> She's, she was doing that out at the surf uh, earlier. Just see her sitting there, just tapping the ear. And oh, wow. Epic the set there. Commitment. Oh, oh no. Oh. Ooh. Good thing yeah. she had a leash on that one. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's still in one piece. <laughs> Wrapping around the fin there. Um, that was committed. Yeah. But uh, you've got to make those. Judges will be looking for... Let's, let's dive into the criteria, Jared. That's it's uh, well maybe I can. Yeah, well yeah, go for it. We love it. Let's see so a display of uh, some good criteria right here. Like what is the footwork's a major element that separates longboarding from other forms of surfing? So tell us, Jared, what's the advantages of cross stepping as opposed to say shuffling or jumping up the board? Well, it just looks better first off. <laughs> I want to see a, a squat shuffle up to the nose. Really? Oh, oh, maybe like a, a squat shuffle? Maybe in a CrossFit gym, but maybe not on the surf, I suppose. Yeah, surf. yeah, definitely not on the surfboard. But um, there's a beautiful display of some fine cross-stepping mm -hmm. right there from our competitor, Red. And, um, yeah, I think it's just smoother. It looks better. It's mm. faster. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that you want to get fine-tuned. Fine a little shuffle to the nose there for Antoinette, and she's just pumping through this one a little heel turn uh, you see her actually like lift the toes off the board and that's usually an indication that you're not traveling very fast and you have to do that you lift the toes off the board yeah that way was looking a little soft for her but she'll get back out there and hopefully pick off a better one as the sets are rolling in quite frequently it's a little bit yeah. more consistent than yesterday morning uh, and a little bit bigger so this girl's gonna have plenty of opportunity make it through to the next round P2 is coming up after all let's watch is this replay. replay so shuffling actually to the nose that last step and then losing all that speed bogging down a bit back up cross stepping this time she gets a 10 but you see the water displacing off the nose four steps back and carving so she's using not quite the rail she's more using the tail it's like a tail turn a pivot uh, and here this is uh, Kaidi four steps up high on the wave lack of control but she makes it, steps back. The judges will note that, the, the arms and the squat, and just sort of like a recovery move, but it is complete nonetheless, so they will get, the judges will give some reward for that. And just there, a little shuffle at the end. She does get a cleaner 10, but the process there on this wave, maybe some nerves, and yeah, just trying to perform tricks as opposed to surfing what's in front of her. Um, just trying to jam it all into a package, but the judges are really liking something a little less premeditated. Yeah, I'd hope so. I mean, always looks a little bit better as we see competitor in blue. Just trying to make the most out of not much, but she's doing a great job. Cross stepping up to the nose, gonna ride oh. and straight off of it. <laughs> Under six minutes left, oh. uh, competitor in red is out in the front. You see that the nose yeah. ride? These surfers are aware though, so luckily they've got a. They're professionals. They're professionals. You've so. got to watch that re recoil from the leash sometimes, oh, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people listening know that, that feeling when the leash comes that's, bouncing that's, back at them. That snap back is a scary thing, as we see a replay from our last wave from Competitor in Blue. It's a nice long little nose ride, but unfortunately she just walks off the end of the tip right here. Ooh, quite um, relatively heavy steps as well, way out into the face, so... Uh, that those delicate little steps generally mean less turbulence for the board and the board's able to trim. She's going to have smoothly. to. She was looking for a 466 on that and falling off at the end won't do her any favours. So Antoinette in green, 423 and a 347, needing a 4.6 to advance. <coughs> and with Kaidi Anui with a 623 to first, so you can say Natsumi's pretty safely out in the lead in red, holding priority. And then in second place and second priority, we have 
Kaede Inui. So both these Japanese surfers carrying on their momentum from yesterday. And the Filipino and the Thai surfer looking to get just below a mid-range score. Very attainable. Lots of opportunity. I'm still four minutes 30 left. But this heat still has plenty of stories left written in it. Well, while we have a short break of the surf, um, how was your evening last night, Matt? Did you get up to any fun down here with the competitors and fans after the contest was over? You enjoy that sunset? It's quite beautiful. Such a classic Bali sunset. It was amazing. And someone who was focusing on today would have been Antoinette Valdez. Probably wasn't enjoying those sunset uh, beers with the sponsor, Bintang. But a lot of these competitors were checking the waves. I saw... Augusto Linto down here quite light, late, putting eyes on the surf. Just just checking it out. One of our Brazilian competitors uh, saw quite a number of them just, just hanging out, having a chat, but also keeping one eye on the surf. The Russians are down here quite late as well, uh, keeping an eye on the waves. <coughs> and uh, I think that was just a combination of them hanging out as well. Beautiful place to hang out. How about you, Jared? Oh, man, it was wonderful. I packed up for the day and then went for a nice little sunset swim down here to avoid the traffic on the way back home for me but um yeah i saw some competitors out there actually our lady in green in this heat she was trying to practice and find that that moment to make it all happen today and oh as we see red right there uncharacteristically mm. just going off the top so that's put our surfer mink in blue in second priority and now into it in third so i wouldn't really say it's a Priority mistake for Natsumi, being pretty safe where she is at the moment, but I know being the seasoned pro she is, she'll she'll call that as a mistake and maybe a missed opportunity, but we'll see what happens with green and blue if they can... Well, it looks like Antoinette's caught a wave as well, so we'll have to catch back up with that one. Only needing a 4.6. A lot of these surfers have got a huge fan base at home. I was looking at some of their Instagram stories, and I'm sure you got tagged in a few as well, where it was phenomenal. Some of them had you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 posts reshared from other people's stories about people tuning into the broadcast and watching them from home. So they've got their surfing culture. All these little villages these surfers come from, these big cities, you know, the board rider clubs, their sponsors, everyone's getting behind them at these events. And it does mean a lot. This is one of the first uh, two-stop Asian qualifiers for World Longboard Tour in quite a number of years. And to have some good waves like La Union in the Philippines and here at Kuda, this is quality longboard waves. So there's a lot on the line for these surfers and everyone supporting them back home. Yeah, it's great to see the support of all the family and friends and everybody down here at the beach. It's a little slow start, but they're going to start rifling in. I'm sure the shoreline will be packed as we're getting closer to crowning the champion today. And making her way, hopefully, through to the next round. Let's see. Is our competitor in red. She put a fine display of surfing so far. Nice quick footwork. A little up and down roller coaster hit. She kicks that one out, completed ride, with a minute and 26 seconds left in the heat. One thing I loved about that was she was actually fully under priority. She got that in third priority and found that left. So the surfers may be sitting a little further uh, down the beach, would you call it down? Yeah. With that yeah. long shore drift. Yeah. yeah. And oh. this is being there up and goes. down. Oh, gets a beautiful poise and unable to get to the nose again, but she was on her way and just losing control. So I really enjoyed that sort of one foot balance. Often you'll see uh, talented longboarders get to the nose, know that it's a critical section, but not quite positioned properly to hold the five. So they just sort of do that one foot balance. You do that quite regularly actually. And then you'll just <laughs> get back on the nose when the time is right. Um, the other option is to do a little six step nose ride. You know, you just do that little baby step because you know you're, the nose ride's coming. Yeah, that six stepper is um, it one of my favorite to see, especially like yesterday. We we're saying Matt Howard's one of my favorite of doing that. Eight steps, six steps. Yeah, there he goes. Ah, oh, Jimmy Gamboa. Oh man, that would be legend. It's my um, less less better looking step brother. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a good 15 <laughs> seconds remaining. Uh, so it's looking like Mink wasn't able to to get the score in that wave, and Antoinette didn't get the advancement of that score still needing 4.6 with five seconds left but there is waves we don't know if those surfers had ridden one but that caps concludes heat one of round 16 we'll go to round two round heat number two very shortly we're going to go to an ad break be back very soon
All right, guys, welcome back to the WSL QS event here in Kuda Beach, brought to you by Padrol, BGS Coffee, and Bintang Crystal Beer. Right now, we're going to kick off the second heat of round 16 for the women's. We're going to introduce the competitors. So far in red, we have Sujin Park from Korea, as we see our competitor in blue, Sugi Kim, also from Korea. Nice little five right there, hanging it on through the next section. Beautiful way to start her first heat of the day. And in white is Daisy Valdez. And in green is Hyun Song, also from Korea. So we have three ladies from Korea and one from the Philippines. As we see our lady in green and white paddling. Looks like green goes up left. It's a little mixed up there on the cross step towards the nose. Decides to kick out of that one. So that last heat that we had, our first heat of the day, looks like our competitor from Japan, Natsumi Tayoka, took the win, followed by her fellow countrywoman, Kare Inoa. So they will move on to the next round as we see our competitor in red just get a quick short ride to kick things off here in the second heat of round 16 for the women. to some action a little bit sleepy slow morning here but nevertheless we're gonna get it going and pump up the vibes so we continue our morning here at halfway Kuda Beach nice little sleepy ride for our competitor in green hopefully we're just gonna get back out there and score some more opportunities get some more points find some better sections replay from our past waves. Surf to this heat as we see red posing a nice little quick nose ride in and out. Oh, an even smaller wave from our lady in green. Looks like this is going to be a little throwaway. Nice little soft nose ride. She'll get back out there and give us some more opportunity to see some beautiful surfing displayed by these women here today. Just missed that last one from white, but we'll get a replay shortly so you guys at home can enjoy the surfing. All right, let's see. Here's our competitor in red. Cross up the other nose. Oh, and unfortunately just slips off the tip as white continues to go down the line there. She gets a quick nose ride, setting up for another nice five. Pushing through this section. Again, trying to set up that inside. It's a little bit soft right now with that tide coming in. But they definitely some great waves out there. You just gotta find them. So we see our lady in green trying to find one, but unfortunately that one closes out for her. So just under 15 minutes left here in heat two of round 16. Bit of a slow start, but yeah, yeah. even with that, our competitor in white, Daisy Valdez, has a 6.83 wow, and a 1.00. On that long left. That long left. They rewarded that wave quite well. It was a little bit softer for me with this tide coming in, but I'm glad she got the points. She's pushing her way to advance into the next round. 14 minutes left. Let's see if these other competitors can give her some heat. As you see, Lady in Red from Korea. Up and riding. It's uh, Machinowski's fit in that board, just holding it, holding it oh. through. Oh, oh, she's okay, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we just uh, that got a little excited. Well, it's right nice there. to have commentators, I'm sure, that surf because we're riding literally the uh, every wave. That one, 
was um, a very potentially dangerous wipeout. Could have gone either way. It's uh, yeah, not fun when that rail hits you in between the legs. <laughs> so yeah, we have uh, yeah Daisy out in the lead, a Filipino surfer, and then Suji Kim, the Korean surfer, in second place in blue, and Sujin Paki in third, and fourth at the moment. Hai Hun Song, another Korean surfer, so three Koreans and a Filipino. I'm sure all these three surf together quite regularly back home. They all know each other's pros. And I saw, um, I spoke to Daisy on the beach. She's, she's got a, a board. She's It's a new one. She just picked up, and she's actually going to uh, be getting a Thomas surfboard shortly as well. And, oh, wow. um, the third place holder, Sujin, is Honest Thomas. Uh, a lot of them, the, the Filipinos and the Korean seem to be either on Thomas's, McTavish's, or international label surfboards uh, that they're either importers for or distributors for over there. So it's a very common place where you, we did see yesterday a um, uh, a Luffy from Portugal, and we saw Classic Malibu as well. So we saw a, a international labels uh, that are sold in Korea and distributed by a lot of these surfers, sponsors, and themselves. This is Sujin. And Whoa. Well, she completes it into a cockroach, <coughs> but I um, don't know if she's seen um, Corky Carroll or maybe The Endless Summer, but that would have been a pretty cool moment in the film. It's <laughs> just all how you, uh, Minus you the roll leggy. with it, hey? Minus <laughs> the leg. <laughs> Minus the leg. Yeah. But yeah, it does depend on how you roll with it. You would have enjoyed that. You'd have been like, woo! Oh, oh, oh yeah! Right. Arms up. You might as well just put a pillow behind me so I go back to sleep. But, uh... Not sleeping on this wave is our competitor in white, Daisy Valdez, up to the nose. Oh, nice nose ride to the section. Trying to get it out there and more in the critical section by the lip. As we are going to cut to an interview with Natsumi Tayoka with Maria. We're going to take it down to the beach now. Hey Natsumi, how was for your win? Um, can you tell me how's the waves out there? Yeah, um, I tried to get the left uh, because when I before the heat I checked the wave, I thought the left is very long and good. But um, when I'm in the water, it's a bit faster, so it's hard to choose uh, wave in the position, left or right. But I think I got like two good waves, so yeah. It's okay. <laughs> and um, do you have any strategies throughout the day of what do you think you're gonna do? Uh, yeah, today is a big day for me, like final day, and then four round into the until into the final. So I wanna focus every single hit and then having fun. All right. Congratulations and good luck for the next one. Thank you. Arigato. <laughs> All right, folks. So there you go. That was our lady in red from the first heat of the day, Natsumi Tayoka. She put on a beautiful display of surfing yesterday, scoring some of the top waves of the day, or the top wave, 9.50. So she'll be on her way to the next round. That she will be, and it'll be a two-person heat, so she'll be bagging at least another 500 points to go with her 1,000 points as well. And wow, Daisy getting forward and... Um, actually leaning forward pushing that board down which is what happens when you're locked into the pocket sometimes you actually like want to get back down here's Sujin knifing it like <laughs> G-Land oh a little back there oh trim through the middle of the section just got no safety Phil Edwards would be not proud of that um, I was going to say the old wing nut We've referenced wing nut to Phil Edwards in the 60s it, and the 70s it wasn't cool to grab the rail like even the pig dog barrel the backside tube that, big dog barrel that I mean, was kind of a bit frowned upon at the beginning because it was a functional way to get chewed but they thought it was um, a little too easy and not oh. so stylish being the squat position I'm definitely not frowning upon uh, John Peck's tube at Pipeline when he grabbed his rail and stuck out his arm so he's yeah he's one of the f <laughs> one of the few uh, oh, I think uh, Herbie um, coined the first pig dog barrel himself but uh, I think John Peck did it as well Jock Sutherland used to do it a little bit as well switch yeah anyway don't forget about Butch Good old Butch Van Artstyle from California, one of my fellow statesmen. <laughs> so with nine minutes left. Won't forget about Butch. Can't forget about Butch, he's the best. So these are these are classic names that are synonymous with the 
surfing heritage, but in this heat we have the modern day surf culture. Amazing. Daisy, remember these names. Sujin, Suji Kim, Daisy Valdez, and Hai Hun Song, the international contingent of Koreans and Filipinos here at event number two of the two stage QS longboard series. You have Jared Mel in the booth and Matt Chinoski. We're having a ball calling this. This is actually, it was a very wholesome day, I say. And Daisy just coming unstuck there. So sort of leaning forward, trying to get that board down. Yeah, yesterday was quite spectacular. As we see a replay from Blue, the vibes were popping off. And it's going to happen again, folks. They just cleaned up the skate park. So all the skateboarders are going to head down s soon and put a wonderful display of their talents just down the beach here. And the umbrellas are popping out down there on the sand right at the shoreline for everybody to get their front row view position to see us get that much closer to crowning the champion today so uh, oh this is in the in the break this is Hai Hung Song backside nose right nice clean footwork and I must say uh, the the three Koreans are sort of struggling to to finish their waves cleanly they're all getting caught up in the whitewash and uh, really struggling to exit the power of the wave and straighten out it's yeah. always required sometimes talking from experience just straighten out just straight out ride it in yeah unfortunately these waves are a little soft towards the end so you can see how they can lose some speed stumble back mm. but they're doing all right for what's going on out there it's a little slow like we said the tide's coming in but there's still those opportunities you just have to wait be patient hope for the best with seven seven minutes left on our heat a lot of the competitors are also learning to breathe properly, Jared, and uh, doing a little bit of meditation. And some of their, some of the cultures do incorporate uh, conscious breathing as part of their uh, rituals. But I know in surfing how important that is. Do you do any breath work, Jared? Uh, I used to a bit. Yeah, I still breathe every day. It's nice. Yeah, in and it's out. nice to breathe, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but um, as we see, white up on the nose quickly. Um, no, yeah. Breath works great. A lot of people are incorporating it, like you said, in their routine and daily lives, and uh, especially along with the meditation, you can't go wrong. Um, I did follow that Wim Hof man, mm -hmm. spectacular guy, super hilarious. Um, I did practice some of his courses and classes for a while, so yeah, it gets going. Especially, uh, unfortunately, I've got asthma, which isn't the best, so any type of breathing helps me. <laughs> yeah, whether it's with or without smoke. Oh no, that's bad. Can't do that. That uh, closes the lungs right up. Yeah. So, health advice from the one and only Bang Bang Boogie. <laughs> Tune in. Tune in. We're YouTube gonna channel. We're gonna start a retreat. Subs soon. Subscri subscriber only. Yeah. Um, only fans here for Jaramel. <laughs> We're gonna start a retreat. It's gonna be called Across the Trim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, with under just under six minutes. A breath, and it's gonna be called a breath of fresh air. A breath of fresh air. There you go. Well, that's uh, that is just a that's a joke. Everyone's laughing. <laughs> Moving back into this heat, round of sixteen, heat number two, and some serious points on the line with Sujin in red, looking for a three six one. Now she's got the priority. We see Hai Hung Sung who didn't get the score on that last wave, and with the two point nine four only required, I would say that she probably would have got that if she was able to straighten out and complete that wave cleanly but these competitors have something else in mind. Maybe there's a reform section that they're looking for that we can't see on the screen. And here is the experience, Daisy Bowders. Yeah, she unfortunately goes for a soft wave right there, but sitting on two 6.83s. She's sitting out there pretty comfortably at the moment with um, our lady in blue right there looking for a 9.33 to jump into first. But our competitor agreeing is only searching for that 2.94 like you mentioned so very capable of doing that with four minutes and 30 seconds left in the heat and even our competitor red sujin park she just needs a 3.61 so anybody could jump in and move on forward to that next round so we're gonna have to wait and find out with coming up on four minutes left in the heat so sujin currently in priority looking for that 3.61 Talked about breath in these moments. She's been sitting for a long time, waiting for what this could be the wave that she's been waiting for. And see how composed she might be if she pulls the trigger. Here she goes, opting for that priority. This is a crucial time in the heat. 
and she has to capitalize. Knifing takeoff, sitting nice and high. Nice five there, clean footwork. She can just complete this cleanly, and I think that could be the score. 3.61 and stable hands. And a uh, very clean wave. Got to complete those waves. They, The judges are watching those finishes. The finish is more important than another nose rod. We don't want to see four nose rods on a wave and not finish. It doesn't mean anything. The judges will adjudicate accordingly. So she may not get that score because the finish... I mean, it was pretty good up to that point. But the finish is everything. Well, she did jump into second. So whatever she's doing work is working for her so far as we right. see blue five ten hanging on to that nose ride there's a second nose ride oh six turn. steps back that was nice yeah oh, oh. oh and once again all the hard work undone just gets tripped up there on the soft section on the inside two minutes and 40 seconds <clears throat> left on the clock as we see some of the men coming down it's our brazilian augusto alento it's hard to, to, hard to miss hard to miss look at that mustache you can see it from the moon it's a healthy stash, if I might add. It's looking great. All these men and women down here looking great, fabulous, fashionable, happy, stoked. Two minutes and 20 Ooh. seconds left. So Suji getting a 5-5 and a 4-3-3. So Sujin Park, those finishes, the judges really picking up on the six steps of Suji's wave. So Sujin down into third place for that five. So if they both complete, their scores would be up another point. And they'd be challenging Daisy Valdez. So 4 eight, 4 now needed for Sujin. And Hyung Song with a 6.16, which is very attainable, but you have to complete your waves. Uh, the judges don't want to see you performing tricks. They want to see you completing waves and surfing with clean rail work, cross-stepping, critical nose rides. Daisy just hangs on to that one through the next section to set up for a little soft little nose ride. And she's going to kick out of that. Lost the power on the inside right there. That water is just coming in and it's pushing some of these waves over the sandbars right there. And unfortunately not breaking so hard as the lower tide. But uh, these girls are making a wonderful display of the surfing and opportunities that they have out there. That they are and the conditions improving very quickly. It was still quite low with a bit of a rip and a bit of current going through the lineup. Oh, and here's second place holder, Suji in that Whoa. catching up with her on the inside now <coughs> she went down and she got back up nice little five on the inside Ooh, nice footwork red behind and her and finishes but she finished we're oh. going to have to see this oh fortunately Susan Park just comes unglued right there just under a minute left in this heat and heat three up next one of my favorite women surfer from Japan Hiroko Yoshikawa he's going to put on a great display as always as we see a great display of our current heat leader in white, Daisy Valdez. Nose riding, 5-10. Pushing through the mush push. With 20 seconds left in the heat. Looks like she's probably going to take the win. Ooh. So we see Late green. charge there for Hyung Sung. Nice, she's got the reform section. <laughs> All the way to the beach. Oh, hangs on to that one. Wraps it around from one little... Cut down and wow. steps off on the sand. A late charge. We'll see what she did on the outside. And Sujin, last roll of the dice. A little buzzer beater here for a competitor in red. She doesn't, 484. I mean, if you complete the wave and you can get a hang 10, that's pretty much it. Pretty Let's simple see. recipe. It's looking pretty soft for her, yeah. unfortunately. I don't know if that's going to be the 4.84 she was after. She feels it. She feels it. Unfortunately, Look at the leash all tangled up there. Uh, yeah. 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 That's not fun. So she's going to have a little, her hands full getting that and not untied as she's got plenty of time. Looks like our competitors Daisy Valdez and Suji Kim will be pushing through to the next round. So we're going to take a short break and come back for a Heat 3.
welcome back we are watching straight into heat number three of round two and this is a ping agudo a filipino beautiful cross step transition there for a ping and we're just watching this one through just coming unstuck so we've got hiroko shikawa in red a ping in blue gina kim in white and we have our indonesian surfer daya Novitasari. All four surfers surfing beautifully yesterday. Uh, Hiroka with some high scores as well. And all these surfs are very experienced. Day has been surfing this out the front uh, a lot lately and ripping. We've been watching her free surf and she's got a very Casio Medor style with her hands and the surf suit as well, actually. So look forward to seeing this goofy footer. So that was uh, our surfer in white, Gina Kim. Here goes Day, our beautiful style and poise. Kind of in the pocket as well. Four steps back, anticipating a turn. And a little tap off the top. As she's surfing this one through the inside. And doesn't get a reform, but a nice opening completed wave there for our Indonesian surfer in green. 20 minute heats and the judges will be scoring the top two waves of the surfer's tally. And there are some critical points up for grabs with this is the second stage of the two stage world qualifying series with the winner on the points getting that opportunity for the world longboard tour kicking off at Huntington Beach in the end of July and then moving into Bells Beach Victoria El Salvador and moving into Malibu for the final event the fourth and final then in October little what? sleepy start and you, uh you know what it looks a little sleepy on the camera right, just down okay. there yeah it gives an update oh there's this one it looks like a, a beautiful left where these girls are surfing you just get a different perspective on the beach right there yep but um yeah it looks it looks great i think we're, gonna, we're in for a great morning today and some uh good surfing to come ahead of us as we see some good surfing right now fortunately she just goes up and over and out but uh plenty of time left in this heat but yeah the vibe's starting to pop off down there Things are clearing up. Looks like it's grooming up there too. It kind of, a, it was almost like a left point the mm. way the, that last set mm. just peeled down Run perfectly. Through. It wasn't looking straight, no closeouts. So hopefully we're in for it. And BGS supplying the goods. And this is a replay of uh, a Pink's first wave. So I love this transition, but she does get hung up towards the end here. She goes for a nose ride and falls off. So she completes that, and that was because it wasn't in the pocket. So. How's our uh, competitor in green here, Dia, local Indonesian surfer? Surfing's so nice. I saw this just down the beach. Great display. Nice nose ride. Hangs on. Cassia style. Our one and only favorite gal. But really, look, you know, it's very similar, like the way she's strong footed, uh, but poised at the same time. Yeah, she's determined to make it on to that next round here today on our WSL QS event. Had it all cl longboard classic. There's another replay of our lady in blue. Wow, uh, it's turned down to yep. complete that ride. So, currently sitting in first is our Philippine competitor, Aping Agudo, followed by our lady from Japan in red, Hiroko Yoshikawa, local Indonesian surfer, Dia Novisari, and lady from Korea, Gina Ken and white right there on the screen so uh this girl's put on a great display of surfing Whoa. yesterday to make it through as we see our girl in red Hiroka. and uh look at us thank you all right we got a couple coffee deliveries here to get us caffeinated and uh get going here on the state beach from our bgs coffee supplier so thanks guys is that Hiroka running in for a coffee no she's going <laughs> back out for a heat that's right <laughs> well she got such a good wave then i feel like she was going to do the old uh the old Jeff Fanning at Noosa, uh -oh. and we'll go into that shortly. So his day are quick steps up at the tip. Oh, so large back, clean footwork. Up again, this is a great looking wave. Two wonderful nose rides from our competitor in green. I don't think that last turn was even necessary. She just straight out. She's getting a six or a seven already. But, uh, ooh, ooh, cut to, oh, oh, oh. wow, this is oh, firing right. up. The goofy foot is really bringing the, the heat here. See that left is just uh, turning on yep. for him right there. 
There she wow. goes in blue, hanging a on ping. to that one. Wow, a ping, a good -o finishing clean on that uh, Thomas surfboards. All pretty, right. pretty nice fin in that board too. Be excited to see these scores come in and get some updates here. Yeah, we didn't see the beginning of a ping's wave, but looks like Daya and a ping and... There you go. Oh, that was a bit of levitation there too. Yeah, that's the way you want to see that nose when they're up there performing the nose ride is completely out of the mm. water. You won't see a lot of men do the cross step carve, but it's very functional for smaller frame surfers to do it, and it I can look good. I was just going to say, I've seen you use that maneuver quite well in the past out there in the water. As we see a replay from our competitor in green, that was a wonderful two nose ride wave. Like you mentioned, she probably didn't need the last turn, but it's good to just throw in there for maybe another half point. Yeah. It's kind of like the old, it was like a foam climb sort of, so it's one of those, oh, I need to do a finishing maneuver, but often it, yeah, it doesn't always work. Um, but it's, it's kind of one of those, the risk outweighs the reward almost. I see that a lot. Yeah. But back to Jeff Fanning, he was see the scores <laughs> locked in. Hiroka, 14.33, wow. And a ping, I'm sure we don't have Daya and a ping. So a ping, 11.17. And Daya a 4.17 with her second score still a lock in. So a 6.17 and a 5 for a ping. Hiroka had some tip control. She was steering from the nose on that bigger wave. Before, we just cut back to it. So it may be a replay, but it may not because three surfers at the same time are on up and riding. And that'll happen if someone's on a set wave, it will take away from the smaller wave visually. Oh, Gina, little 10, and the grab of the rail. It's a little safety grab. Judges will take note of that. As they are the finishers, all these little things. These surfers are surfing 20, 30, 40, 50 meters from shore. And when they pull off, the judges can see everything. Almost no replay needed because it's right in front of them. Unlike other events where it's so far away. And El Salvador for the World Games just recently. These surfers were 400 meters away from the judges at times. Here's Hiroka, current heat leader. There she goes. She's going to drop in straight to the tip. Oh, 510 wraps it through that mushy section, resets her line on a quick five all the way up. Two nice nose rides, stylish control, swinging her around, looking for a right, little foam climb, and a kick out. Beautiful, nice wave from our current heat leader. As we see the uh, green up and riding, straight up there, 510 mm. holding it. Beautiful nose ride from her right now. See, she's going to set up again, go through that whitewash. Fortunately, softens out there. Ooh. This inside's going to stand up. Yeah, she's going to float the boat. Great style for day. I was surprised the scores came in at four, in the fours, but perhaps just smaller waves and sort of overshadowed from the speed of a ping. She was flying and Hiroka. When you're on the beach, it's pretty evident when someone's connecting an inside section, they're carrying that momentum. But that one looking very nice for day. And I th Hopefully she'll get some higher scores there. Yeah. She's looking for a 6.40 to That'll advance. That'll go close, I think. I believe so. See things start warming up here. People are starting to crowd in towards the sand. It's going to be a lovely day. You can already smell the warongs cooking up. The local nausea breakfast. Just uh, very flavorful and spicy. You're into that. It's good stuff. But it's going to be a fun-filled day down here, folks. So if you're in the area, come on down. Let's see competitor white, Gina Kim from Korea, opting out of that one. Right behind her. Ooh, she's hungry for this, fading in. Current second place in blue, a ping. Finishing that, and uh, we're just gonna wait for a ping to finish this, and we're gonna cut down to Daisy Valdez, the heat winner from the last heat. Hey Daisy, congratulations on your win. Can you please talk me through about your two best waves before? Yeah, I was just like waiting for the best wave. I surfed this morning, I got two wave. I know where the the position is, just in front of this, and like my husband just whistling me, even out of the peak. So it was really great like surfing with the Koreans because they're all my friends. And what is your goal uh, for this event? Uh, my goal is, um, of course, to win. I think that's everyone's goals for this uh, last stop for the WSL. Yeah, because you're sitting on the top four of the ranking at the moment, right? Yeah. So are you like having your eye in the world longboard tour? 
Yeah, I think everyone is eyeing for it because it's, it's only one spot for the Asia, so everyone is eager to win and everyone wants to win. But like in the end, only one can join the the world surfing club. All right, then good luck for you in the next one, and thank you. Thank you. All right, nice to hear from Daisy, the uh, the leader and mentor to a lot of up and coming Filipino surfers, and. In this heat, we ha also have one of the leaders of the resurgence, I could say, of Japanese competitive longboarding and in the female space, Hiroko Yoshikawa, who's been around for quite a number of years, traveling to some of the duct tapes and over to Noosa and all over the world. World tour events and invitational events, great style, riding one of her father's shapes, actually, as well. Beautiful 9.3 or 9.4. Um, picked that board up yesterday great foil tail i loved it and i can see how she surfs stable and fast because it's all on the rails and that foil of the board i thought wow that's a good looking board and you know when you see someone surfing you pick up the board you're like yep i can see <laughs> like devon howard for example when you pick up his boards you're like yep like oh. that this makes sense oh completely he's, like, he's always one ahead of the game there on his lawnmower design there's that oh there's there's the, see see the, the water just flowing over the rail and over the deck of the board. Perfect display. Nice little nose rides from Hiroko right there. And we're going to take it back live with 7 minutes and 30 seconds left in Heat 3. Oh, we just lost a little view of the surfing right there from our competitor in green. We're going to have to wait for the replay. But she's never going to get away through the inside. Looking for a couple extra points and a completion of this wave. So a 5-3-3 on a day as last wave. Uh, so it did go higher than a Pink's lower score of a 5. So it's probably in there in the ballpark. It would likely be that Hiroka's wave being a little larger really overshadowed the other two surfers' best waves. And that does often happen. You kind of feel sorry a little bit for Gina as well, who isn't surfing poorly by any means, but she's in a stacked heat with the two goofy footers and experienced uh, Japanese competitor as well. If she was in previous heats, her scores may actually be higher, but we can't compare scores from heat to heat because it's comparable to each heat only because waves change. And that was a long five, holding in the whitewash, stepping back to the tail, maybe a better option to stay in the middle there. Generate more speed. You see the rocker is sticking up and she was actually in a slower part of the board. Now she was in the speed part right there. The fastest part of a traditional longboard is generally just forward of center, right, Jared? That's the way. A la Yater. Forward trim. A la Yater. As we see some trim and speed from our competitor in white. Just a little short ride. Looks like she'll capitalize on her previous scores. As we see current heat leader almost having luck, but decides to opt out with less than six minutes left in the contest. Like yesterday. Uh, it's a great place to sit down here and just mm. enjoy it all in. Melting see pot. Some beautiful fashion and styles coming down to the beach right now. It's going to be entertaining nonetheless. So, I love the um, the full length um, stinger suit yesterday. That was cool. It was you know in tropical places people wear um, you know leggings and uh, rash vests and um, yeah there was a lady yesterday with the full length one and she had the hood on it was, uh, it was yeah. cool it was fully the, covered the neon colors yeah bright neon pink hat she was definitely brightening up the beautiful beach mm. obviously keeping in line with her maybe cultural um guidelines but it was cool it was bright and it was i can't say it was you, you just smiled and looked at it, it was happy it was yellow pink it was cool and i have to get you one we can um i think there's a store right there they can measure you up make a custom one we have, it, we have it ready for finals time <laughs> that little expression oh speaking of finals time a ping looking looking like she wants to go all the way to the final and take the win for the day she's getting some beautiful rides so if she finishes Please. yep uh yep on the shore you'll give that a bit of a finish there goes current heat leader. Oh, look at that. Grab rail, drop knee, butt ride. All right. She hangs on and then kicks out. Show a little smile there too. Yeah, she's having a good time. She's a lovely gal. Always a pleasure to see in and out the water. She's a quiet one, but she secretly loves to have the best heart. She does, yeah. yeah. She's um, <laughs> unassuming. She's yeah, very humble. And the Japanese competitors, in fact, <laughs> every single competitor here, 
is really having fun. Everyone's smiling and stoked. Yeah, it's a good vibe amongst the competitors, amongst the friends, the fans, the supporters. So. Although we haven't had a chance to connect with any of the surfers who haven't progressed today with a little bit more on the line, so there may be a few, uh, few tears later on. A lot of commitment, understandably too, because it's a lot of commitment to get here. And just with some of the living conditions and wages in the countries that these surfers are from, they realize the pressure and the opportunities that both can come from a situation like this. So they're very grateful to be here. And Gina Kim, a Oops. Korean surfer in white, long five, a little bit on the, the shoulder there. And this one shutting down. She's going to look for a reform and says, nope, I'm out of there. Yeah, it's great to see the passion and dedication all these surfers around Asia are putting in to coming down here and competing and all the support that they're given. It's, uh, it's great. We're going to feel the fire to put on a great display of surfing to get that closer to gaining more points and taking that next step to be able to perform on the world stage at the WSL World Longboard Tour. So with just under three minutes left in Heat 3 of Round 16 for our women, Hiroko Yoshikawa is sitting comfortably in first with a 7.50 and a 6.83. Our girl in blue, Aping Aguro from Philippines, is looking for a 8.16 to jump into the lead. While with pri sitting in priority, Dia in green uh, looking for a 6.77, which she is very capable of. Two minutes and 30 seconds mm. left. And in fourth place, our Korean surfer, Gina Kim, searching for that 8.50 mm. to advance. You know, Jared, apart from Hiroko's biggest sets, I think the di distance between a ping and Dea's scores comes down to actually uh, initiating a proper turn. Uh, where Day is kind of looking for those consecutive nose rides where Ping's setting up the next section and carving his Hiroka heat leader. Because, of course, longboarding is not just nose riding. There's crucial elements to set up the nose ride and the bottom turn, as all good competitors, surf coaches, and experienced surfers will say, is the most important part of surfing. Just getting that fine flow and connecting all the movers together, making it look beautifully done cool column and collected as our competitors are out there currently in this heat coming down to the one minute mark now Gina will have to roll the dice and get one wave we haven't seen 8-5 but we do know it is possible especially given the quality of the waves what would an 8-5 look like today in your eyes Jaron? oh wow it's going to be a, a hard one to, to display right now but um, yeah just you know that continual speed nice clean pocket that stands up Nice, beautiful bottom turn, beautiful nose ride, cut back. Probably another nose ride, another beautiful cut back. A lot of beautiful stuff. A lot of beautiful stuff. Yep. And then uh, just finish it. And here we go, beautiful wave. So <laughs> day, I will see if she can combine the four beautiful aspects. Off to a good start, good trim. Nice flow. Ooh, unfortunately, gets stuck behind the section there. Just under a minute, we're going to see your competitor in blue currently sitting in second. Straight to the nose, nice little quick 10. Resets for inside section, but unfortunately the wave closes out. Oh, yep. Reforming all the way through though, and you can't get that on the low tide, but she might just come in on this with 20 seconds left. You could say that with 20 seconds, a ping's done, or she could. She'd have to be happy with that. I mean, Day has surfed amazing. I'm super impressed with her surfing and her style, so you can't be dismayed with that, but it is a lot of very expensive to invest in these competitions, and with Gina as well, in hot competitions. So Hiroka unofficially taking that win from a Pingagudo from the Philippines, and we have Daya, Novidasari, and Gina Kim in third and fourth. We're going to cut to a break, and we're going to be back very shortly.
Indonesia nggak kena waktu. Itu over one. Chill bareng bintang kristal. Negerin nggak over time. Waktunya kristal chill. Moving into heat four of round number two of the women's, we have uh, our Filipino surfer Ashley Minoza and Katya Vostrikova from Russia and Sakura Inui in J from Japan and Beatrice Conroy from Australia. So four different countries represented here in an international fair, and that's the story of this event so far. But the Japanese have been on a roll. All Japanese surfers in the women's side progressing so far, and the men's being very dominant as well. And uh, yesterday, our competitor from Japan and Hawaii in this heat four of round 16, Sakura, put on a great display of surfing. So, her and her brother, mm -hmm. did, Taka, did wonderfully. So, we're gonna hope for some more of that. 15 years old, turning 16 shortly. Um, wow. We have uh, Russian surfer Katya, who's Got a uh, surf camp locally, and uh, she's cool. She's um, she's open to learning, respectful. She's she's really uh, joined this event with, I guess you'd say, like open arms to try and learn and gain as much experience as possible. And it's the same for Beaches Conroy, and I'm sure uh, Ashley Minoza as well. And a, an investment for everybody, just the, the travel to get here is expensive the obviously once you're here the food is very affordable and the accommodation is uh, for a better term bang for buck as you would say in australia it's you get pretty nice facilities for a relatively cheap price but it's all relative to your uh weekly and monthly wage jared as we know that can vary <laughs> very radically in different countries it's a huge sacrifice from a lot of people here yeah to make it it's great to see them all here and the support from and all the fans and sponsors it. and their family. But um, yeah, let's talk about some boards. We see our competitor in green. What do you think she's riding today? Uh, that one is a Sean Nettleton from formerly of Victoria and now living on the north coast of New South Wales. I think yeah. that board went well for her. Yeah, yeah Aussie style uh, shape. And see your competitor in white quickly up to the nose, little five, quick ten. Nice control. Sport's got a little bit of nose rocker in that concave, you can see. It yeah. looks like it's working well for her. Interesting design. So that one is one of two boards, but I believe that could be a Piccolo Clemente, a former world champion uh, himself, so Peruvian surfer, and shapes his own boards. Very. The reason I think it's one of those, because he had pretty wide noses with a lot of nose rocker. Mm. It's very synonymous with his style, and I know that uh, Tucker rides those boards. Well, everybody's got different designs. It's, uh, we'll see, yeah, how this might be. We'll see how it rolls in surfing, and here's, uh, here's Beatrice. There she goes, swooping. Little drop in right there. Quick tap on the nose. Trying to set up that inside for a more hollow section. Push it through. Unfortunately, she gets stuck on a softer wave, and. Uh, she get back out there and hopefully get another wave that gives her more opportunity to score some great points here with 15 minutes and 30 seconds left. Catches off to a early start too. She got a one point ride for her opener and she seems like she's paddling back out after one as well. All right, looks like we have a little bit of action paddling around in this heat. A little bit slow. Got a little bit of a lull with this pushing tide, so you're gonna have to bear with us while we're getting things kicked off here. Day two, our finals day here at the Padrol Lombard Classic. It's WSL QS event for a thousand points. And also, I must say, as we see our um, Japanese surfer here, whoa, long tan, stepping back and goes for another one and stepping over to we saw that happen yesterday actually with her sister doing a little kick and falling off as well so filipino surfer and that one poor wave selection that one didn't even break but of course um katya in blue and beatrice in green are in the area and they're not scoring points so they are actually taking points off other surfers so to speak if they were say to progress through this heat uh, they would be potentially 
ruining the party for someone else or potentially helping them gain more points by knocking someone else out. But here's catch in blue. She's joining the party as she drops in. Unfortunately, not much for her there. Reason being, because their region is not the, the Asia region, so they can't earn those points. This is a regional qualifying event. Uh, they would have to compete, catch would have to compete in Europe, obviously with some uh, political situations going on there, logistically would propose some challenges, I'm not too sure about what's involved in that, but Bali's a pretty nice place to hang out, and Beatrice with the Australian qualifying leg, uh, that's where she would earn her points being an Australian, and here she goes now in green. Yeah, Beatrice with priority, dropping in. Nice fade, bottom turn, cross-stepping up to the nose. Another wonderful cut down turn to end that way for her. She's looking like she's going to try and fight the inside. Not much on hand for our competitor in green. So we're going to take it down to an interview live on the beach with Hiroko Yoshikawa from Japan with Maria. Maria, take it away. Hiroka, wow, that was amazing performance out there. Can you please talk me through about your seven week, like the second week that you got? Oh, it was so fun. The weather was very really fun, and I, the, I was so lucky. The, I found a really good wave when Kide started, and yeah, I was so excited. <laughs> and you are currently sitting in number two in Asia at the moment. Um, what is your goal for this event though? Uh, I, I want to get a win, but I am really enjoy this way. I always have feel a bit wreck when I'm in Japan, so I feel like it's really comfortable for me. Yeah. Alright, good luck on your next one. Hope you make it through. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was nice to hear from our Japanese competitor from that previous heat win and his catch on a bomb left knifing this one higher tide and this one running away from her unfortunately but you gotta roll the dice on those you never know those ones could hold up and be an excellent range score currently in second place too so uh, a few waves yet to drop in I believe from Beatrice as well <laughs> I like um, in that posty interview with the Hiroko, she was comparing some of the waves, or this wave out here to some of the waves in Japan. Mm -hmm. And it kind of does. It's, it reminds me of that Shonan area. Yep. Especially Fukisawa. the color of the water and the uh, morning haze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glassy. So she's feeling quite at home here in Bali. Shout out to all of our Japanese viewers tuning in. Um, we love Japan and thank you for your contribution to surfing and surf culture. As we see. A little competitor in white from Japan. Oh! She's bounced off her board right there with that high tide push. Look at the determination. She's not even flinched, phased by it at all. She's straight back out there trying to get more opportunities to score in advance as she currently sits in second. That last drive from Beatrice Conroy is going to put her in first with a 4.83 and a 2.83. Our competitor White from Japan that we just saw bounce off her board. She's looking for a 3.67, which she's highly capable of doing. And uh, it's great to see that determination. Mm. She bounced off that board and didn't even phase her. Strong great. competitor and with her, uh, her sister and her brother here and her mum, they've got a pretty competitive stable and I'm sure they would analyze all the heats and uh, really looked at all the scores yesterday. Um, their mum was uh, really it was common place around the, the traps to see her mom recording like free surfs and she'd be really recording notes of other surfers and really analyzing on a technical sense uh because of the translation breakdown the commentary didn't always uh make sense so wow sort of in the pocket there stretching out gets a little touched hand there for our surfer from the philippines and up again and gets another nose right another 10 so i mean it's halfway through the heat. She hasn't had a one to keep in the top two, really, just with a one and a 1.0. So that's going to be her, her best, best way for sure. But I, I felt 
maybe just trying to score maneuver, like trying to do tricks, trying to trying to really earn the points. Yeah, yeah. she was definitely making lemonade right there. Yeah, there we go. So he does a nice little setup, and then great surfing nonetheless. Like this is not easy to do, and for most people they'd be stoked just to get a little touch ten like that. But we are watching the world's best to qualify for the world's tour, and uh, see that the last nose ride sort of facing the beach a little bit. That's more of an indication that uh, that was more of a well. Here's a bigger wave for Beatrice. That's a pocket nose ride with the board in the whitewash. Current heat leader. Trying to capitalize some more points to push her through to the next round. Ooh. Way forward, forward trim. Ooh, and there we go. Bang. That's yeah. what happens when you commit to it and finishing on the shore. So, um, love that. Nice length just of ride. Kind of, not so much to grab rail, but just letting the wave dictate what needs to be done. If there's a reform flowing with it yeah on the flow see the forward trim jared that was the fastest part of the surfboard right forward trim there you go that part just above the center of the board usually it's flat for the boards that go faster that yeah. area on, the, on their bottom contours but, um with eight minutes left in the yeah. heat we're gonna see some scores drop and maybe some changes and obviously like with a fish for example it's quite a flat style surfboard it's been fish so those boards have trim in built uh, so if you go and like pump and, and pretty erratic with a fish, generally speaking, it's not as practical. And here we go. This is, our, this is Ashley up here on her backside. Going for multiple nose rides, but she's, you can't even see the white water there. So it's sort of showing it's way out in the face. And that's why she, was, she nose dives were pearled, because she was trying to get points from the yeah. nose ride and not letting the surfing suit the wave. And like you said before, yesterday we were commentating on... The nose ride, you want to get back there in the pocket. You want to have that power, that roundness to the wave, being able to lift, put the water go over your tail and lift you up so you're levitating, as we've mentioned. So here we go. And where's the tail in the whitewash? And, She's um, trimming through and hanging on. The fact that she just stuck with it won't be... I mean, that that's not scoring right there. That's actually not great at all. But then she waits for it, does a carve instead of going to that nose ride. And the wave dictated that, and in the end, she's probably gonna that'll probably go into a top top two wave. So you can see a little bit of a well, yeah, 2.83. Maybe that score hasn't dropped, or maybe the judges didn't agree or didn't see that end section. Oh, uh, I just think it has it dropped, so they're probably up there calculating. Yeah. Correctly to see what it's gonna come into, as we see another beautiful wave, nicely. I was talking about Tucker and. Um, the Anui's uh, mother and super dedicated mom laying that opportunity for a lot of the surfers of a lot of that well lot her kids and she'd record all the scores down and she'd be filming every single wave and um, even more so she actually got an Instagram page um, with surfers movies she, she was recording everyone so you can go on to I think it's Taka Mama movies on Instagram and she's got clips of nearly everybody and here's Katya our Russian surfer beautiful poise that's a critical nose ride. It steps on the tail when she should have been in forward trim, perhaps. See the tail, the rock is up, and if she's in the slowest part of the board, pretty much not going to make the section when you're on that section. So don't go all the way back to the tail is the lesson when you're on a single fin log. The fastest place. Why do we paddle with our chest in that section of the board, Jared? Well, because you don't want your nose sticking up in the air. That's it. It's also <laughs> the fastest place for us to generate speed. That's why our chest is there when we paddle. Good place to be. So why would you not stand there when you're trying to grab speed? Makes perfect sense to me. Thank you. All right, that's a sweet competitor in red, Ashley Minoza. Looking for an opportunity. Looking for a 2.34 to advance. Quick little nose ride. Little stumble of the feet. Oh, goes down on, don't think she's gonna get that one. Hopefully that leash popped her board not too close to her head with that huge fin. Always got to be aware when you're wearing those leashes, that board will pop up, come straight back at you. Sweet. Cute little nose ride from her competitor in blue. Not much else on... Love those colors, too. That's that personality flair after those models have been locked in that shows from surfers when they order. See a nice nose ride from Beatrice Conroy. Nice, stepping forward and carving it back in the pocket. Using all of the board. 
Wow. Like, knows right to finish. Oh, he just comes unglued right there. She's still out in, out in front with a 4.83 and a 4.07 with four minutes left in the heat. C. White up and riding again. Quick nose ride sets up the next se section. There, oh, there you go. There's a nice little 10 from our competitor. White and whoa, drops through that little suck out section to complete the ride on the beach. So that was a beautiful nose ride. We're going to look for, she's looking for a 4.90 to advance. Mm. Oh, maybe a little advice from her mom. Big right old there. hatchet fin in there, too. Yeah. So she's gone back into third. She's needing a 3.64 on that wave because Ashley had dropped a 5 on, on that uh, wave we critiqued earlier where it was good surfing but a little soft and bang, this section here. Little bit of levitation there. It gets the tan, clean footwork and completes. This is great and ride from our competitor. Nice, nice committed paddle there from Beatrice and this is a high nose ride and it's relatively in the pocket just for a moment. Whitewash over the back of the board, carving it through. And what's what happens after a good turn? The nose ride. And there it is. Generally, oh. what happens? Well, that's half of the toes right there to finish a ride. All right, let's see some scores dropping. Beatrice has a 6.00 and a 4.83, mm -hmm. still sitting in first place. And White, from that last ride, she looks like she got a 6.10. So yeah. A beautiful little 10 really helped push her scores up and move her back into the advancing position. And uh, a Filipino surfer in third needing a 5.08. She was just needing a marginal score in the two range with her 5.03. So she knows she's capable of it. She's a very solid surfer. She is usually completing in the free surfs, watching her surf uh, all the way to shore. Here she goes, she's got priority. She's looking, two minutes to go. She's gonna be, well, she can go left and right. And she's, the coach is telling her what to do. She's paddling. I don't know if she's gonna go for that. It looks no. like lip's gonna. She's got someone on the beach. She just, they just told her to go somewhere. And It's great to see the support that she has to help. There she's her. tapping the legs. She's activated. <laughs> that full moon last night, just activating everybody's energy perform as best as they can down here today with a minute and 30 seconds Ashley is searching for a wave she's looking for a 5.08 to advance she can do it and catch her just a 693 but taking off those sets she had the right idea kind of sending it a little bit it was just the um, the reform section wasn't unable to connect stepping all the way back to the safety area of that tail which is actually the slowest part on a traditional longboard You'll see most of the masters spending very limited time on the tail only when they're turning. And the rest of the time is in the middle or up and down that length of the board and that front seven feet. Sometimes even steering on the nose as well. In trim. Now, 55 seconds left. We have our third place holder currently with priority, so they have choice over the next set wave. And here she goes, kicking those legs. And second is our Russian surfer, Katya, as well. So we may see a flurry of waves towards the end here and here she goes needing a 5.08 and she's striking into this one quick turn she's bang gets the 10 pumping down the line unfortunately Incomplete. yeah that's the ironic thing is if she didn't pump she might have made it maybe or, or she set up that nose ride a little bit lower true on that first section to carry Bottom that turn. speed she it goes looks like again. she got excited and just wanted to get up on that nose and score some points. So she's going straight back up there. Better nose right on this one. But yeah, she's just... Uh, she's taking the ocean gods right there yeah. for having a nice time That's out nice. in the water. One second left, so... Respect to the Catcher didn't get one towards the end. It was a late flurry, but I don't think that'll be enough to get her into second spot. I think she knows it too, so we'll say goodbye to our Filipino and our Russian competitor in that heat. And we're going to go to an ad break. We're going to be back into the men's round next. Day one of the Padro Longboard Classics. We are here at the Kuta Beach. There's a lot of surfers, uh, longboarders from all over the world. Enjoy the action.
one in Asia. And what is your current rank in the world right now? <laughs> Fourth. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> round that was an amazing highlights reel from yesterday day one some smiling faces and some great longboard performances that were put on but those smiles are still there and the crowd is flocking in to halfway beach at Cooter. we are into round 16 of the men's heat number one so we have kim dong Kun from korea in blue start off with the one and we have roger jr escobar from the philippines and there he is, the, ooh, on a second wave, starting very activated. There he is, look at him. The man yesterday, one of the highlights. And then Kai Hamasi from Japan. And Denny Pyridos in green. That's our boy, Denny Black Boy from Batu Cross. Such a lovely guy to see out in the water. He's always put on a show. Quite a few of our boys in this heat, actually. Yeah. Uh, Mark, Mark Server. He was a highlight from yesterday. Denny and Kai Hamasi, the technician, and here he goes. Kai Hamasi. Big fan of this man's technical aspect. Six steps up. Oh, 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 oh. He's trying to overdo it, perhaps, just a little right there. So he's going to get back out there and wait for another opportunity, but I'm loving the enthusiasm. Mm. He's pumped to put on a great show for the folks oh. on the beach and here at Hope as we see our man in green with a nice, beautiful, long nose ride. Up and Adam unfortunately comes unglued. And there's that last wave from our competitor, White. So the surfer is getting a little, uh, a little excited out there right now. All of them taking little falls. So um, you know when you take off on a wave, it's a little. Oh, Kai's actually had two waves. He's got two waves total. Eight one seven. Here's uh, this is Kim. Nice footwork. Bit of water over the nose there, and all of them just digging a rail. Oh, it's looking Here a little he tricky goes. for our surfers out there, but he the wants it. Blue is back up. Oh, he's doing the wiggle on the nose. See that nose rub is facing the beach. You'll see if the judges take note of that. Oh, no, sorry, six, six, six. Whoa, Kai behind over. him. Wow, these guys are really putting on a show right now. These two nice waves. Kai Masi is setting it up again. Nose rides to that last section. Oh. Went for the kick out right there, just kind of slipped off. Uh, should be a completed ride. As we see the sun popping up for Denny's ride, it's going to brighten up the beaches, the faces. And Denny's trying to find that section. Nice little quick tap of the heels, but unfortunately goes down as well. So it's going to see these surfers throwing it out there, trying to get as many points as they can. This is a replay of that steering on the nose, but Judge will be looking for the more critical nose rides. That wave hasn't really broken yet, where the board is uh, back in the whitewash. But it was a smaller wave and making the most of it, and Kai behind him. A bit more of a directional nose ride, still not really in the pocket, but the wave being a little soft and that one a little tighter. Four steps back to the tip and just slipping off on the end, though. Pretty hot heat for very competitive surfers, and here's one who. He's also making a huge commitment to be here. This is Denny. 
on a uh, locally made Daya surfboard. Uh, is that a? Uh, uh, I think so. I think Nusa that's one made of the, surfboard. I believe that's a Nusa one that they brought over for with their last trip to Batu Karas. Mm -hmm. They love to spend time up there amongst the right points. As we see our competitor mm. in red going left. Nice nose ride and cut back from our man in red, JR. So one of the uh, leaders in the points. Number one. And number one. Coming into those, some of those scenarios, so uh, we have the top three on the ratings in the heat at the moment. So we have JR, who was taking that, uh, that ratings lead after winning in the Philippines. We have Denny in third place and Kai Hamasi in second place. And here he goes, Denny, he's up and riding. So huge, huge ramifications for qualification. And Denny making his presence felt. Great nose ride there, but not much after that nose nose ride. We'll see how that one goes. So the local support, Jared, we, you know, JR took the win in La Union and here we are in Indonesia. You think Denny's feeling that, that local support? Of course. Yep. He's got support all over, no matter mm. where he goes. That's like most of the men surfers in this heat. Like, but Instagram as well. Fan support, yeah. And one great thing about Instagram is um, you can connect directly to your mm. fans out there. And if you want to connect to us, ask us any questions, uh, send us some love, hate mail, question, like anything really. <laughs> uh, and here he goes, Danny. Let's get pushing back to the action. Off the bottom turn, and I love that little projection. A lot of spice. Great turn in a nice nose ride. Finishes his wave nice and clean. As he currently sits in second with a total heat score of 10.93. He's looking for a 9.00 to advance. And right behind him is the man in red, JR, looking for a 6.26. Last but not least is in blue. He's looking for a 7.36. We had a quick up and out from better red you didn't like the way that one looked we go back and search for another one 11 minutes and 30 seconds plenty of time finally that sun's breaking out like we mentioned it's gonna brighten up everything and get the vibes rolling down here at halfway kuda beach just like to say another thank you to all of our sponsors here for the proud roll longboard classic Presented by Padrol, of so, course. Uh, and ahead. obviously their Mamaka Hotel as Mama well. Mamaka Hotel and Bintang Crystal, uh, PSI and ASC. And now we're going to go to a post-heat interview with our wim women's winner in the last heat, Beatrice Conroy with Maria. Hi, veterans. Congratulations on your win. Um, can you please tell me uh, what do you think about the wave this morning and how was your heat? Uh, it was so much fun. I feel like it got better throughout the day, so I loved watching it. I uh, really improved, and it felt like I could read the waves a bit better than yesterday on the low, so I was just happy that we had some waves I could show that I could do it. <laughs> Do you come to Bali much and surfing here earlier? No, this is my first time in Bali and surfing in Asia area. Um, I'm a student at home, so I don't get to travel much, so it was a great opportunity so far. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so, were you here for the event or you just like, uh, apparently you're here and then you're joining the event? I'm uh, going on a mentalized trip next week, so um, a few of us were stopping in Bali on the way, so I was just in the area, so it was really good. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> have fun in your trip in Mentawai. Yeah. And can you, do you want, have anything that you want to say to your family or friends back home? I want to say thank you to my parents and my beautiful friends for supporting me and being so happy for me. Alright, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so that was a lovely interview there from my fellow, fellow countrywoman. Beatrice Conroy taking the win. She'll be feeling good about that on her way to the Mentaway Islands on a surf trip and this coincided but catching up with some action. Beautiful cut down there from Denny. Currently fourth place. I'll have a correction from my earlier statement. And He's this way a five point six A he um, might might get it. I didn't I think see the so. start of the wave, but the rest of it's been surfed as well as it could be from our band in green. 
was a really, really epic turn. So to, here we have JR, he also got one in the break. JR's hands are uh, very free, very high above the... Uh, oh, and he's loving that. And I was just saying the hands are very free. And uh, one thing with this location in particular, it's so close to shore, their hand movement and the lack thereof is kind of what the judges are looking for. A functional flare as opposed to activated hands. Activated hands means hands that are above the... There we go. There's the activated hands. But before that, the soul arch. And here the hands sort of go high. A bit more on the face though. You see the pockets back here a little more, Jared, on the left of the screen. I think he's looking for that inside section as it looks like it runs away from just there. See how he's using his hand to paddle. Yep, little, little paddle. So a lot of maneuvers on that wave. Um, and often is the case with this criteria is less is more and here's Kai Hamasi smooth also on the nice little drop knee redirect aiming the board higher on the wave and that one on the shore he just coming undone so currently was in the lead we haven't had that score to drop for Denny or uh, JR and with Mark Surfer one of our highlights of yesterday in fourth place and he knows what he needs he's he's a well accomplished surfer he's, have, he has many uh, titles in Korea and in Asia but back to the ratings, so uh, JR is the ratings leader. Tucker Inui is in second spot. Benito Narita was in third spot. And Denny in this heat, equal third, was 650. Uh, Adip and Dean Permana. Have, um, have a tie there on fifth. And uh, with Teddy as well, who's coming up in a, in a, in a future heat. And Kai Hamasi in ninth place. So Kai would need to win this heat and hope that JR in red doesn't progress for wow. his better chance to qualify. And here he goes. This is Mark Surfer. Kim Dong Kun. Drop knee redirect. Gets the 10. Bolt upright. Here he goes. Up on the five. Holding that five. A lot of spray coming from the nose, but lots of maneuvers and another touch. Here we go. And he's not quite... He's happy with that one, but he knows it's a tough heat. And he knows it's still 6 minutes 30, so he might save the save the celebrations till closer when he knows that he... If he gets that score and he unloads at another, I think we'll see that passion come unstuck that he did, you know, come unpacked. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's currently pretty much calm about it. He's looking for a 14-8-3 to advance, so... Because Kai... Dropping an 817 to go with a 727. And JR on that long left, an 833. So we caught Denny's wave towards the end with that big calf. Perhaps it hasn't dropped yet. But um, yeah, a awarding Denny a 55. Five. Well, he's searching for a 9.33 with just under six minutes left to go in this heat. Anything's possible, especially from that guy. But that is going to be a top wave he's searching. He's going to definitely have to be wise in his wave selection. But he definitely knows what he's doing out here. So, with 5 minutes and 30 seconds left in the heat, currently sitting in first is our man in white from Japan, Kai Hamasi. So, we see some action out the back. The waves are starting to roll in. Looks like green is sitting with priority. we wait for a special one. And our current heat leader is going to go and take this way from right underneath the guys. He kind of stumbles on that bottom turn, loses his speed, and fades out the back on the nose. Right behind him, our man with priority in green, looking for that 933. Tough nose ride right there. Has to grab the rail to kick out of that one. So he's going to look for a better wave out the back with 4 minutes and 45 seconds left in his heat. As we see, second place, JR. Nice nose ride and a little up the bottom roller coaster to finish that. A little hand clap. Looks like he's feeling good about mm -hmm. his performance in this heat, as he should, sitting with an 8.33 and a 6.50. Mm. Well, I can tell you that with Denny down to third spot, obviously it's a contest you want to win the event that you're in, but I would tell you, I would dare say that JR knows the. Someone would have done those, that mass for them and told them, hey, if Denny doesn't make it through, we still got Tucker in the draw, but this is an even closer chance for you to take that win and, and push that lead further out with the points for the overall uh, 
rankings because they need to win to get that qualifying position to go into the world tour. Wow. It's like he's sitting pretty comfortably. He'll be joining Richie Cravey from California. He'll be joining Max Weston from Australia. And then we'll have... Could be anyone in that, that top 10, but... JR progressing is going to be a big blow for a lot of those other surfers who are behind him in the rankings because three minutes 30 left. Denny Nia, 933. His surfing is there. It's it's almost like you, you, you wish they could hear you because you want to say, hey, guys, you know, you, your surfing is really nice. It's really there, but it might just be that they fall off or catch a rail and not building their heat total. And moments of their... Um, like you could argue that Denny's turn would go to five by itself. Um, but... You need to combine it on a set wave and show some critical surfing as well. And here he is, current ratings leader, second position, looking for a 7-1-1 to go into the lead. He gets a heels. Oh, he, Besides, he was under priority as well, so no love lost on that one. Yeah, he was under priority, and he unfortunately just tried to push that heels a little too high. He didn't have that speed that you normally want when you're trying to perform a heels and push through the section. Got a couple notes dropping in for us, folks. A little update. It's the women's round that we're going to have come up soon. We're going to push all the way through today to the finals to crown our champion of this WSL QS 1000 point event. Brought to you by Padroll for the Longboard Classic. Also sponsored by Bintang Crystal. Can't forget to thank the Halfway Kuda Board Riders, local contingency crowd here, and all the support from our fans down at the beach. As I mentioned before, the sun is popping. Things are livening up here down at Halfway Kuda. The waves are starting to roll in quite better with the tide push. But also WSL and ASC. Yeah. Tippy as well, and the sound guys, and Everyone all the here. guys putting out the filmers, the, um, yeah, the audio, the visual. The judges, the judging has been phenomenal so far. With a minute 30 left, Denny, he's looking at this third in priority. He needs to roll the die, so. He's looking, he's gonna do, I'm gonna go, think he's gonna go for a long 10 here, Jared. And, oh. well, <laughs> sure he had in mind, but minute 20. He is JR, on. you can see him at the top of the screen looking back. Yeah, on up. okay, I feel good now. Yeah, everybody, you know, when Denny gets away, he's, Great surfer, so it's going to keep those guys on their toes. Unfortunately, he didn't get the opportunity he was after. So with a minute left, searching for a 9-3-3 to advance, it's going to be quite difficult to accomplish that one. As you see, JR paddling towards wherever Denny might be to try and stop him, possibly, for catching that final wave of the heat for a man in green. But uh, here he goes, actually underneath everybody. Wow. Nice swooping bottom turns, straight up to the nose. Nice long five, trying to push through this section. Yeah, it's a beautiful ride. Great, great solid ride from Romana Green. Uh, I don't think he's gonna get that 933 to advance with 30 seconds left in the heat. Looks like he's coming in. As we see our next competitors in heat two paddling out. Looks like our man from Brazil and Wyatt, Augusto Linto, is gonna put on some a great performance in the next heat. As we wrap this one up. Mark Surfer in blue from Korea. Looking for a 14.83. So that'd be the best ride ever. <laughs> um, looks like he's just going to his way into this one. That was, that was a nice way to finish the heat with uh, Mark Surfer and concluding that one out. So we say goodbye to Mark. We say goodbye to, to Denny. And we're going to be rolling into an ad break. And we'll be back for heat number two.
Welcome back to heat number two of men's round two, round three, sorry. We're getting to the pointy end of the competition, so we are watching the Padrol Longboard Classic QS1000. And out in the water, we have Cristianto Villanueva from the Philippines, Dani Widianto from Indonesia, Augusto Alinto from Brazil, the man on the screen, knee paddling out after he opened up his account, and Dean Permana from Indo as well, so two Indonesian competitors in blue and green. That's uh, Danny out there right now on that red and white Pedrol board, team rider for Pedrol, the naming right sponsor. Sporting the local Indonesian flag colors on that board, the red and white. And he's got the local support on the beach from the main sponsor, Pedrol, for this longboard classic down here at Halfway Kuda. And his fellow countryman in green, Dean Pranama from Monte Cross. So, competitors from all over, like we mentioned here, it's great to see. We've got a Filipino, two Indonesian surfers, and one very talented surfer all the way from Brazil. It looks like his opening eye was a 6.33. Mm. So. Keeping in mind in this heat, there's a little bit up for grabs because uh, our surfer in, in blue, who's sitting down in the ninth spot, and Dean Permana. So up in green, sitting in f equal fifth spot with Denny in that previous seat who got uh, 650 points, who was in third spot. So we say goodbye to Denny, and yeah, these surfers will be having a chance to move forward. And We're going to say hello to Cristiano right now in red. He had a great surfing for us yesterday. Let's see what he's got for us today. Five on the back, five the blue. Uh, nice five little quick back. ride from our man in red as we see a competitor in blue. Quick couple of nose rides. Oh, fortunately, nose dives on that last little ender. Just uh, opting out of that one as we see green. Dean comes unglued, but he hangs on to his board with his feet. He's not wearing the leash. Very talented surfer can do that as he falls. He's going to make his way back out the back. These waves are starting to come in nicely. It's glassing off. The sun's out. It's all coming together here, folks, down at Halfway Kuda Beach in Indonesia. With 16 minutes left in this heat two of round 16, we are going to push through all the way to the finals and crown our champion. He's going to make their way just... A little bit closer to hopefully becoming a WSL competitor on the World Longboard Tour stage. And that stage is looking like a pretty dynamic tour and the best tour we've seen in our lifetime, Jared. And I'll update those spots shortly. And here's Cristiano, our surf in red. Nice. High nose ride in the pocket. Staying high again. Nice carve into a drop knee off the bottom setting it up again for another nose ride so a clinical wave there for Cristiano Villanueva in red as he makes his way back out and Augusto Olinto another technician and must be something in white because Whoa. we had um, was that drop wallet under the lip right there Augusto Olinto just uh, doing maneuvers and surfing unexpectedly but always surprising. Yeah. Great surfer. We'll see how the judges, what the judges do on that wave. Um, just a, a cut down layback for Augusto and setting it up. Ooh, just a little bubble at the bottom there, but a nice redirect there for a surfer in green and another carve off the whitewash and coming undone. I'll tell you what, if he finishes that and rolls out in the sand, that'll be the first roundhouse we've seen all event. I think the judges might have enjoyed that. Yeah, they definitely would have. He's expressing all of his skills and talents with that maneuverability. We just saw the contrast of a surfer beginning in the background as well, standing up, just bus driving down the wave. So these are the best longboarders in the Asia region and up riding. Man in blue, nice, beautiful five. See if he can get around the section. He's chasing it, chasing that open face to set up for his next maneuver. So he go back up to the nose, pushing that five to the softer section. And he's going to call that one a day. So, 
great little quick ride mm, from our man mm. in blue. He was that looking, was nice. Yeah, he's looking for a point five one event, so I think we'll jump up in a second with that wave. And out the back, we've got our man in white city to, with priority. The total heat score of 6.33. We're waiting for that second wave to drop. And Cristiano in red jumps into first with a total heat score of 9.0 with a 5.00 and a 4.00. So Augusto Olinto, Olinto is searching for a 2.67 in blue. Searching for a 5.00, and we're going to take it live down to the beach for a post-heat interview with Kai Hamasi, our first winner for the men's round today from Japan with Maria. Take it away, please. Hi, Kai. Congratulations on your win. Can you please tell me about your team best wave out there before? Yeah, thank you. I called first one, so I'm so lucky. Yeah. Um, like the waves out there? Yeah, uh, my from break is like this, so I'm my favorite wave. Yeah. So, where are you from in Japan? Okay, the last my home break one is Shona. Six point three three. Six point three three. And uh, what is your goal for this event? Uh, I want to win this contest. Yeah. Do you have anything to say to your friends and family back home? There we have, there was a lovely interview there with <coughs> Kai Hamasi, a Japanese technician. Well, during that interview, the second wave from Augusto Alento dropped with a 6.10, so he's going to jump back up into the lead with a total heat score of 12. 4-3, followed in second place by a man in red, Cristianto, with a 4 and a 5, bringing his total heat score to 9.00. He needs a 7.43 to jump into first. Followed by a man in blue from Indonesia, Danny Wurianto, he's got a total heat score of 8.87. He's looking for a 3.63 to advance. And in fourth place in green, Dean Permana. He needs an 8.00. Still waiting for his last wave score to drop. Well, forgive me, folks. Looks like that update on the phone is a little behind. We're going to bring you the proper scores just after this replay. A lot of scores to log in, too. A lot of long waves that have been surfed in this heat. So, yeah, 633 and a 610 for Augusto. We have Dean Permano, the 6.43, which would have been that longer wave that he caught, and the 3.53, so a lack of completion, keeping those scores down a little bit. And 5 and a 4 for Cristiano. And just, just a short right-hander, a nose ride, and a tap off the top for Dean. So uh, 6 to go in the first, and a 4.97 Cristiano, which he can do. He put on a great performance yesterday smooth technical style and yeah Danny Widianto 537 to 3.5 inning of 46 so all well attainable 10 minutes left these surfers are all relatively experienced in the competitive front here we have our surfer in green staying high on the nose long five just waiting for that next section carving it back in the pocket that's that little bubble at the beginning and then back up on the nose again Holds the 10, and here, wraps around. You see the surf in the background, learning to surf. Here, he's paddling now. You see the distance. <laughs> he gets pushed on, stands up, and I'm like, good on him. Somebody in the in Bali right now, Jared, is having the best wave of their life. It usually happens here. But in, in maybe even Akuda, Kuda, that person there, was like... Possibly, yeah, Maybe even the first wave of their life, but... They're going to catch the surfing bug. They'll and be competing out here in the heat in no time. That's what longboarding is about, the... The spirit's easy to do, and it's hard to master. So you can feel the feel the glide. You can tap into it, and a surfer and only surfer knows that feeling. And those feelings become more and more advanced with the longboard as you want to experience deeper, better, more critical nose rides and surf longboards and more challenging waves. But the the trim, the glide, it's something that uh, captivated us all, Jared. 
and we're still doing it to these this day and uh, many days past. Like, look at this community, this vibe. That is a very similar setup to what you'd see if it was an event right now. It's anywhere, San Onofre, Malibu, Noosa. <laughs> you know, that, that friendly community longboard vibe. Definitely, definitely. There's old, old surfers, there's new surfers, everyone, kids running around. We're bringing the vibe all day, folks. Look at this crowd. Nice crowd, having fun, enjoying. They've got their juices, their teas, their coffees, their water, their coconuts. Yep. Wax, sunscreen, earplugs. You can see an Aussie in the crowd, Adrian Wade. You can see the Filipinos, Koreans. It's a whole melting pot down yep. here. Some s learn to surfers down, l learn to surf schools down the end there. Way down there, Seminyak. You can see uh, Legion and then Seminyak. You can see all the uh, little uh, Warungs in the background. All these surfers. Is this the future of longboarding and the future out in front of us? Is our local Indonesian surfer, Long Five. Carving it back to the, almost to the pocket, not quite. He's still in the face, but he sees something that we can't on the screen, and he finishes on his feet. So that could be one of his best waves. Looking for a fourth, four, four point six. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's just about there. I'm so that'll move him up in a second. One. Great surfing from our man in blue. There you go. There's another beautiful sight. Fisherman's. These guys are incredible. They drive those boats at night. So we get a replay from our surfer in blue. Nice trim speed. Carried him through the section as he redirects and wipes off that speed to set up for that inside section up on the nose. And then the wave just runs out. But he holds on for a completed <laughs> ride. Oh, there goes the Brazilian storm in white, Augusto Alinto. Feeling the roll of that bottom of the board, mm. working it around, wrapping it back, setting up for the inside. Let's see what he's got. It's going to suck out. He's going to float the boat. And he completes. And he completes. Steps off onto the sand. Love that. And For me, that was one of the most entertaining waves of the heat because he was using the elements of the surfboard, effectively using the rolled bottom. So as he's carrying the board from behind the middle of the board, as we can see there, he's right there. He was feeling the stokey as oh, he, he runs was. up. But there's a oh, great nose ride. Why wouldn't you feel the stoke after that? And this here, bang, yeah. using the roll. Wonderful bottom turn to set up for that next little nose ride. Wraps it around again with a great drop knee and then All right. floats the boat right there to complete now the that, ride. Now that little check turn, that little roll bottom, hands by the side, gives a few examples of what that reminds you of. And we'll get back to that in a moment. Whoa. Danny here, he's back out again. He's, he's third in priority before, but he's finding these lefts. He's he's hungry. He's paddling all around the lineup. I did say I saw him free surfing away from all the other competitors the other day for this exact uh, situation, I'm sure, to under priority to try and pick some waves that the other competitors can't see or locate. Because there is actually peaks up and down this whole beach. It's just that you see a clump of crowd and you assume that that's the dominant bank but when you do look carefully you can pick peaks up and down the whole beach yeah it's, it stretches all the way from here at halfway kuda all the way down to chungu yep you can find random peaks up and down here and have a little wave to yourself so being a local surfer a surfer in blue definitely knows what he's doing but that check definitely. turn that we saw augusto do earlier who comes to mind forehand or fun side well, I don't know I see a lot of people do those check turns well for me I'm thinking Johnny Fane or in a more modern day sense oh. is Chad Marshall at Malibu <laughs> you know he does it sort of cut down and hands by the side and chest out yeah a la the the night snake as we call him and this is the here. the patrol fragrance and hardware is good and software is too so patrols are Japanese the major sponsor they're the Japanese uh apparel company that's really diversified in Indonesian longboarding. They're a huge support doing their own domestic tour, sponsoring quite a number of the athletes that are here today competing. And we thank Key very much for his uh, collaboration with ASC and the WSL. It's really nice foresight and to have that money to put aside to sponsor these athletes and create some really cool products, some awesome prints down there. And, oh, and oh. just tipping off is Dean Permano. And here he is, Danny, again, not one not able to capitalize, but Augusto a 733 on that wave we talked about the check turns. So the judges agreeing with us. 
with the diversity of surfing on that wave. But the man, a 6.04 required. Cristiano in red. Nice long five. So you notice the hands, a lot of body language and sort of flair. Couple toe taps there on the inside. See if he gets that 6.04. He's searching for an advance into the next round. Currently, we're in the round of 16. And this is the second heat. Three minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock. Augusto Olinto in white sitting with priority. A total heat score of 13.66. <coughs> right behind him in blue, local Indonesian surfer. Denny Wurianto, total heat score of 11.04. Searching for a 7.99 to jump in the first. Right behind him on the screen there in green is Dean Termana. The total heat score of a 9.96. Looking for a 4.61 to advance. Two minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. And last but not least, at all in any way is our man in red. Chris Yanto from the Philippines searching for that 6.04. We're still waiting for his last wave to drop. As we see, last wave replay from Green, our sponsored paddle surfer, unfortunately going down on that. And here's another replay of our man in red who's searching for that 6.04. Quick 5, 10, another lengthy 5 right there out of the shoulder and wraps it around to set up that inside bank. Quick toe tap, five right there. Mm. One more just before it kicks out close to the beach. Replay of our surfer in blue. Not feeling that one. So we talked about bottom turns and little redirects, Jared, those little moments that Augusto was able to acquire that uh, seven point ride. Uh, what's your view on, on hand placement and hand movement? Mm. Especially in traditional longboarding. Well, it seems that the judges favor the hands down or controlled, yeah. side by side, not flailing around. But yeah, it seems to work for these surfers out here. Mm. And I think it looks better with, obviously, you have your arms controlled, not too high, not waving up and down. And yeah, obviously, uh, functional flair, like when you're doing a maneuver or de-weighting and certain style aspects can come into it. Like you're quite soft with your movements. They're not like flailing necessarily. You turn, and myself too, we can sort of turn a mistake into a, like a, a it's just if your body's flowing, uh, but it's the hands constantly above the head, which is synonymous with more performance style surfing, uh, where the surfers are trying to de-weight and trying to really compress off the board and de-weight at certain maneuvers to, to carve. Uh, and that's showing, you're trying to perform maneuvers for scoring where the traditional style longboarding, just imagine you start with a perfect wave and it's up to you to maintain that equivalent to say a uh, really nice um, ballet dance or a, or, a, or a song that you're dancing to, you're flowing with it, not trying to score points or do maneuvers. And here we have a tight little nose on the inside, just those controlled hands as you mentioned, and Makes that perfect timing there, and he likes it, and so he should, because that was a tricky section. He's just looking for a 4.61, so that definitely could have been it. Oh! oh Augusto Alento with a reverse paddle dolphin dive. So we're approaching the high tide shortly. And you can see that backwash starting yeah. to play a factor into these waves for these competitors. Our red and green, Dean Pamana, he rode that backwash. He just rode it up on top of the lip and bounced down, and such a skillful surfer he landed with control and completed that ride he threw a little shake of the hand yep and that was a tricky wave and uh sometimes in surfing well all the time in surfing uh you can be as measured and controlled do all your preparation understand about the swell even at your local spot but something like backwash it's just a roll of the dice and he took the roll and we're gonna see roll out of this he head. completed it into the next heat so, wow, it's counting down already. Unbelievable. So, action right to the end. So, no wonder he claimed it. So, we're going to go to an ad break. We're going to catch back up with the next heat very shortly.
Alright folks, welcome back to Heat 3 of the round of 16 for our men's division here at the WSL QS event put on by Padrel and our other sponsors Bintang Crystal Mamaka Mamaka Are you staying there actually? No No? I thought you guys were staying there It looks like a beautiful place No man, it looks fantastic Yeah well, Thanks to all of our sponsors again and we're going to take it away and right. next to me is Jared Mel, Bang Bang Boogie. And next to me is Matt Janowski, the Waxhead. So our surfers in Heat 3, take it away, Matt. Introduce these amazing shredders. We're going to put on a great display of surfing. So waves coming, but in red, Tucker Nui, uh, Roland Lefouvre from France, Jean-Marie Ebueza from the Philippines, and Shohei Akimoto. So an international heat, as has been the story of this event. And these guys... We're all ready to throw down. And the heats are just getting stacked and stacked as we roll on throughout the day. We're going to crown a champion. Don't forget, Taka Inui is second on the rankings as well. So, Kaihamasi progressing, Taka progressing, JR progressing. Surfers are coming that much closer yep. to winning their spot on the WSL Longboard Tour. One spot only, and here he is. Current second place holder on the rankings, Taka Inui. Will he follow the female side of the draw, the Japanese surfer, with Hiroka and um, Natsumi? And long five and ten, but lots of water looking towards the judges. The whole wave, water and spray oh, coming that. off the nose of the board. He loves that nose ride. He's pretty amped. Let's see how they're going to reward that one, the longest nose ride of the event. So a lot of turbulence off the nose there from Tucker. Not necessarily back in the pocket. So I think the judges will will reward the skill in holding the nose ride that long. Uh, but it was pretty one-dimensional and white up and riding. Little five and ten combo. Sort of back in the pocket for a moment. This is Jean-Marie. And he's opting out of this one. And here he is. This is the replay. So Tucker, he is quite deep here. He's holding it. Stretches out. And it's way, he's sort of a couple of feet out the pocket, just holding it in the middle of the board here, stretching out a little bit, a lot of water. And there's a little moment where it's clear just there. And then it goes back to that turbulence. A lot of showmanship there from Tucker. And he completes. So he will get score for the completing and the set and the footwork. Uh, but we'll see. I'm interested to see where this one comes in. And I think they're going to take the time to have a talk about it. And beautiful fade in here from... Our surfer from the Philippines, Jean-Marie Abueza. He gets their hands by his side and unfortunately digs in as he tries to roll around that section. You can see the nose rocker and the tail rocker in that board too, that late nose flip. Definitely helps the nose running, but you got to be back in the pocket. As you see Green, Shohei, Akimoto, cross-stepping up to the nose, going through that backwash, trying to navigate through this soft section set up on the inside see if that wave will stand up more for him quick little five and a toe tap a little roller coaster to end he's gonna get back out there quick ride from a man in green from japan 60 minutes left in this heat so currently we're waiting for some scores to drop to see how these servers are gonna play the rest of their heat So yeah, length of ride and a set wave there for Tucker. As I said, just limited parts of the criteria. I think it'll come in at about mid-range when I think back to it. Just there's a lot of skill. It's, it's tricky to do that nonetheless, but it just wasn't overly critical. But then again, we've seen the same thing over and over again with non-completion. So if you complete and have quiet hands, well, you're going to do get a pretty good score. So this is our Frenchman here. Well, I mean, there's a moment there in the pocket. Look at his board way back in the pocket. So that was like... Like pretty sick on the inside. He's looking pretty happy with that one as you see out the back red. He's going for another one. Five, ten, kick, still holding on the nose. Oh, gets around that backwash, tries to whack it off the whitewash. Five, oh, sticks his foot out again, goes to heels. He's trying to do everything, maybe mm. a little too much. Loses, loses it. He's right getting there excited. The end. 
definitely getting excited. He's trying to get to that world mm. stage, but he's making his way there greatly. One of the best things about this contest venue, if anyone knows Cooter or Halfway Beach, it can be challenging on lower tides or bigger swell to get out. It does break out kind of far, and it's really if you choose a poor wave, it can it's sort of a bit of a nightmare. You get washed in, and so on. oh, high nose right there for White. Great body language. If you can stay composed and link this with some, I was going to say a turn, not another nose ride, but he goes back up to the nose again. He's still going five to ten through the backwash and drops mm. in the suck out section right on the beach. Tries to push his nose up so the fin doesn't break out of the box there on the sand. It's going to be interesting. Though. Some there's, there's our there. ISA judges, the next gen of. Asian region judges there. They've sat down and done the ISA judging course. And there's our man from West Oz. He's currently resides, or he spends a lot of time at Lakey Peak. Mm. Another beautiful wave in Indonesia. If you have a chance to go there, you got so many waves. It's just a, it's an all-day surfing affair. Speaking of an all-day surfing affair, we're taking it live back to the action is to see our man in red. He is hungry as can be. Catching plenty of waves in the sea. Five, ten, oh. grabs the nose through the backwash, turns switch, and kicks out of that. Having an absolute ball out there, Tucker. So we'll break down those scores very shortly. Some, um, uh, I guess you could say, contrasting styles out there with goofy foot and regular footers, but everyone surfing unreal. I specifically like the moment of Roland's wave in blue on the inside section where it looks like the judges have as well. We'll get that breakdown because it is not about the amount of maneuvers. It's the, in, in modern day professional surfing, it's not about the amount of maneuvers, it's the quality and where you do them on the wave. In longboarding, it's based around the art of trim. So we have speed and composure on a longboard built in. The board's already got it. So it's up to the surfer just to surf that board and position it effectively. On a shorter board, you don't have speed, so you need to generate speed. That's why you see them go up and down and all around. The way we maintain and wash off and speed up on a long board, wash off speed and speed up, is through the footwork. Turning gets us back in the pocket. If you can combine those two with nose rides in the pocket, rail calves, finish cleanly, and show in some creativity and some some flair and some personal uh, artistic expression, well, you're going to go excellent. Think back to Malibu last year with Harrison Roach, who's not an overly expressive surfer in particular, but his expression is a whole wave. He's an articulate uh, surfer, you could say. His surf IQ is very high, and he, his whole performance is based on the wave, and it's like poetry, right, Jared? Yeah, he's a wonderful surfer, and he did as best as he could, obviously, because he's the world champ. But he had to. But the best thing about that, he had to meet, beat some incredible surfers and overcome like Taylor Jensen, who was surfing out of his skin. Uh, shout out to Taylor, absolutely. Uh, a speaks a stalwart in the sport of longboarding. He was actually just over here last month with his family. Unreal. Catch up with them, which is always a wonderful time. Cool. Oh, Tucker's in school. So a six eight three for Tucker and a five point six, and then uh, Joel. Uh, Joe Marie Abueza with a 627, a 283, but a surfer in blue with that 727 for his opening over. So the judges making a clear distinction to positioning over a quantity of nose rods. Yeah, exactly. Less is more and quality. Here, Here you go. Here's a replay of that so 727. Mid sized wave, but he's in the pocket partially and then he sets it up, steering on the nose, and now it rifles on the inside and he gets a little touch 10 and finishes so medium-sized wave but surfed it well and he a lot of surfers have been um for a better term overcooking those sections jared overcooking indeed well 10 minutes and 30 seconds left as he our japanese surfer in red is sitting out in front we're gonna take it a replay to one of his prior waves straight up to the nose five foot kick Hanging onto the nose, about five. Ooh, working around that backwash. Maneuvering back up to another five at a kick, but then, yeah, that was that overcooking. Overcooking. You were speaking about. I actually think back to um, our, our buddy Denny. Here he is again, the Frenchman. Frenchman. 
I think back, back up that score. One of Denny's first waves was a right-hander, and he started really nice with a nose ride, and um, he actually tried a little heels on the shorey and fell off, and at the end of the heat, he was requiring a pretty major score, but I felt like, you know, if he didn't fall off on some of those lines and just try those little heels on the inside, that could have been the end, two sixes or a seven, but when you fall off, the judges will make you pay, and here it is, this is backup wave. He's looking for a 1.83 on this wave, so definitely got that, but soul arch right there. Looking like a uh, magic feet of Kevin Connolly. There we go. And, uh, and the leash too. Kevin was partial to a leash at times as well. Definitely. But our man in blue is getting a nice ride right there. And he's definitely got the score he was searching for. See how that comes in with the judges. The competitor White from the Philippines. Joe Marie. Straight up to the nose. Sick. Controlled five with the arms down. Yep. Arms go up. He drops down of the way. Oh! oh unfortunately, it comes unglued there. <laughs> Lands on his board. The lip detonates on him. And he's going to lose it to the sand. That high tide. Fortunately, it's not too far. He's a great swimmer. He's got eight minutes left in the heat. Right behind him in red. Straight up there. Five ten. Grab rail on the nose through the lip. Back out to the open face, back up to 10. Looks like he's in a nose ride competition. He's just gonna take it all the way to the beach. There he goes, little redirect for that inside section in the high tide. And oh, there he goes, off the top. Oh, he's so happy. Runs up the beach, he's feeling it. Oh, he's pulling that board like a dog that doesn't want to go home. Wow, well, there's a crowd, mixed nationalities there, lining the sand, and teddy bear as well. Look at this, everyone's so stoked. It's gonna be a great day here. Got it halfway could it be. That's it. That sun is brightening up the vibes down here as the people are starting to pile in. Let's get that front row Ooh. seat here for the finals day of our WSL QS event by Pad Roll. Longboard Classic. So seven minutes thirty and our Japanese competitor in green, Shohei has only got one wave of 5.5, needing a 6.93. So playing the quiet game, and understanding that he's got a tough heat. So he's going to try and find one of those set waves. And he's very clinical himself, very rarely falls. And he's had quite a lot of luck with that green rash shirt and that olive green tinted surfboard. I've seen this collabed with him quite a bit. So I think in that previous heat, let's have a look at what color he was in because I quite like the color coordination. Um, he's searching for a 7.83. <laughs> and he was in advanced. green before, now 7.83. So green with envy, you could say, Shohei from not getting those sets. And he was in green in that previous heat. And we have a look at the BGS boys making up their espresso. So not your traditional barley coffee here. They've got some, um, some espresso coffee that uh, our Frenchman Roland might be more uh, acquainted to. Here's some acquaintance Here with is. the green master, Shohei. Oh, nice. Right. nice. See, see that forward trim? There he is. He's grabbing the rail. But unfortunately, the forward trim doesn't make it through the section. That <laughs> Don't whitewash, do that. Don't listen to us. That whitewash just shoves him a little bit down the line. So it's six minutes left of this heat. Still sitting out in front. In first is Roland, as we see our competitor, White. Back on the nose. Setting up the next section. Cool, calm and collected nose ride. Working through the high tide warble. Unfortunately, there's nothing left for him on the inside. He's chasing a 7.06 to advance. With just under six minutes left. I think he's gonna get back out there and search for another opportunity. All right, All right some more scores coming in. 6.97 for Roland's uh, long left with the soul arches and yeah, Tucker locking in a 6.5 for that one with the claim at the end but a long nose ride and it can't um, I know Tucker's doing everything he can but he can't go excellent if you're not using the length of that board uh, it's not a nose ride competition as you alluded to uh, Jean-Marie locking in a 4 until he fell so the judge is awarding that nose ride a 4 and same with, with Shohei a 317 just for those opening nose rods. So the competitors may, I would say Shohei and Jo Marie might get some, you know, 
inspiration or at least some comfort knowing with just under five minutes remaining that they're on the right track. It's just if they can link that with a longer wave and showcase a little more diversity and finish cleanly, they will get the score. Yeah, you gotta feel that flow to connect all those maneuvers to score those high points that are gonna push you through and, and then the next round. Length of ride isn't necessarily, it's well, it's not a scoring factor, especially in longboard surfing, but it does help when you get a really nice wave that goes for a long time because it allows more opportunity to not score points, Jared, but actually showcase the judging criteria. And here we have oh. one of our sponsors, Bintang Crystals, getting unloaded. That's the uh, regular Bint Bintang Pilsner. The Bintang Crystals are clear, but these guys are unloading everything from juices to teas to ice cold beers that will... Well, I believe that was our commentary booth that <laughs> <laughs> they were walking past with them. So, um, yeah, they're putting them on ice and uh, getting ready for later. So, big shout out to Bintang. Mamaka Hotel down the road. We have BGS Coffee and of course Pedrol. It's a naming rights sponsor for the LQS and this is the Asia region qualifying event, number two of two. And up there is number two in the rankings, Takio Nui. And of course the winning surfer at the moment is our Frenchman who will not acquire any points from this, but he will acquire some uh, some prize money if he was to progress into the semi finals. And he's sitting with priority. Looks like White's going to have a look, and he's going to let him take that one. White's back up on the nose, hanging five, arms down, and kicks out. Not much there on hand for our competitor, White, as we approach the three-minute mark left in this heat. With that, up next is going to be heat four. We've got three Indonesian surfers and one from Japan coming up. So stay tuned as we bring you more live action down here at Halfway Kuda Beach in Bali, Indonesia. It's turning out to be another wonderful day this weekend. Can't thank everybody from our sponsors to the fans and you supporters at home for tuning in and supporting this great long morning lifestyle and culture as we see shoreline and coast of our south coastline here in Bali. There's the airplanes in the back the airport. A couple waves down there that we like to surf. There's a variety of waves on this island and that's what it's famous for. And a or couple a little things. bit a little bit further north too. A little bit further out. <laughs> so what is the direction here? So what would it where is the the bucket in terms of uh Direction. So right. where where It'd were we? It'd be to the east of us, but yep. we're on the south side of the island. Correct. Yep. I'm just gonna look at that. And as we look back out to the water, the competitors are looking at these lines, deciding if they're gonna go. As our man in blue out in front, still sitting with priority, just under a minute and forty left in the heat. As we're gonna see. Nobody going. Oh, we're going to cut to the van. How's it going, Unreal. Guys? Here we are. Good morning. Jared Mel, Matt, Matt Chinoski. Just hanging out, having a good old time in our air-conditioned van, seeing the vibe, watching everybody drive by, enjoying the action. And we're not in uh, a rash shirt ourselves. Usually we're competing together in log events, old male events, invitationals. And whatever, the, whatever have you. Dance events. Dance events. <laughs> that's it. So with a minute left in this heat, let's take it back out to the action of the water. Competitors are looking for that last opportunity. The competitor red is searching for a 7.41 to advance, or up to first, I mean. Sorry about that. And then our uh, competitor white is searching for a 7.06 to advance. And Shohei and Green, Akimoto, is looking for that 7.83 to jump into the second place Look position to go on to the next round. 30 seconds remaining. See that backwash, that high tide approaching right about now. Full moon last night, which usually means anywhere around the world when you have a full moon, you're going to have a really low low and a really high, high tide. So that's what we're experiencing at the moment. And with 20 seconds remaining, if any of the coaches out there or any support crew have their uh, fingers on the pulse, they would have alerted their surfer to say, hey, it's going to go quiet in our heat. That's what's happened. Here we have last roll of the dice, third place. Joe Marie taps up the top, gets caught in the backwash, and with two seconds left, that's going to be all that he wrote. So 
Rounding that one out, it looks like unofficially that we have our Frenchman taking the lead from Taku Nui who progresses through. We're going to go to a break and we're going to catch up for the next heat very shortly. And straight up and riding into this heat, we have our Indonesian surfer in red and that blue and white patrol board. It looks like carving it back into the pocket. Oh, and a little uh, little cross step switch toe tap there. So a little technical aspect there. That's a that's a drifter sponsored surfer there, and it looks like a patrol longboard. And of course, that's. Uh, Adip Nuri Dayat, which is the technical, or the, I should say the correct pronunciation, well not pronunciation, the correct spelling of his extended name, so otherwise we can uh, expect to see Leo Sinaga from Indonesia and Masaya Sukimoto from Japan and Teddy Kuniadi, otherwise known as Teddy Hardware, and Menchos in, uh, in red. A lot of these surfers have nicknames and refer to it on Instagram. Oh! So, uh, <laughs> a pretty uh, tumultuous wave there for our surfer in white to start off. I'm sure he um, will want to get back out and start it again. So that thing just kept carrying him to the beach. He slipped, fell face forward, <laughs> and it didn't want to let him off. So anyone out there watching who's developing their surfing skills, I think they can relate to that. So this is Ventro's first wave middle of that board and watch here goes to the nose not a cutback but he goes for a cutback there and sets it back up in the pocket and here switch bang so that's an interesting uh, little technicality there on the nose so that'll score too but more of just a, a toe tap was uh, tricky maneuver but uh, nothing overly critical same with this over now he slips about here on the way back bang and he continues, so that's got to make the highlight round. It stays, and he gets yeah, wiped in the shore break. So um, we've all been there. And um, yeah, that's a wave for White to forget. I'm sure his best friends will remember that. But let's hope that for his sake, that Messiah will um, back that up and, and hopefully improve his, uh, his heat total. So back in the booth, we have Jared Mel. And um, a little bit of action to start this. We have Mentos with a... Uh, a technical little switch. He loves to switch. Switch. It, it was a switch. Toe tap nose ride. So nothing overly critical. I don't think the judges will go crazy with it. But um, it was cool. We completed the wave. And Messiah from Japan actually slipped on one foot and hit his head and stayed on the board. And it wouldn't let him off until the shore break. And he tipped over on the shore break and had a horrific little wipeout. But it can happen. It was, um, yeah. Perhaps he uh, was a, I don't know, maybe didn't do his stretches or just as simple as a little bit of slippery wax. Because we do know if you do surf without a leash along these Bali beaches and if you lose your board on the shore break, a lot of the, um, the shore breaks have a little bit of that fluid and that, um, I guess you'd say, uh, uh, I guess, yeah, pollution on the, on the shore break. And that oily substance gets all over the wax and you, you're pretty much done. As soon as that happens, your session is over. So let's hope that's not the, that's not the case for White. Beautiful drop knee set up there for, oh, Teddy, Teddy of course. But I love oh. the hands by the side. That is sick, and he didn't complete. Unfortunately, he knows it too. 
So, That's a great bottom turns right there. To yeah, the that was unreal. Just talking about that fine flow to connecting the dots and those maneuvers. That was a great example of it. Let's just see Teddy Ryan the backwash back out to the lineup to get there as quickly as possible. Let's have a replay of Teddy's wave right now from the surfer in green. Nice bottom turn again right there. Just the hands down, that relaxed drop knee style. Fortunately, you can't get through that inside backwash bounce. And out the back, we got competitor White up on the nose. Not much else on offer for our surfer in white. Retribution for his first wave though. That was, um, yeah, his friends won't let him forget that one anytime soon. <laughs> if we have a replay of that first one too, just, I know there's a lot of surfers in the, um, out there watching and beginners and um, it happens to all of us at some stage, but it's just as simple as that one foot balance. And if you fall backwards, and just do the coffin with cockroach. Um, I think Jared's favorite and my favorite is when we fall, we make it. And here's all the supporters. That's a Filipino crew there. We have Warren Lopez there. Um, and that's uh, JR and yeah, Team Philippines right there. That's Daisy there as well. They're all coming down from all over Asia to support their local surfers. Let's see Green almost having a look, but besides the 4.5, they locked in for that um for for teddy so that was pretty cool it's pretty good it's that that, that flow that he had of those turns connecting mm. those dots just mm. had that a mm. little bit more speed to carry him through that inside section we would have seen a higher wave score total for our man in green but plenty of opportunity with 14 minutes left in heat four of this round of 16 for our men's division here at the padre lombard classic wsl kios event so jumping in the first is Mr. Sugimoto in white with a total of a 5.73 and our man in red Metros total heat score of 5.67 right now on the screen we're going to see white currently sitting in fourth priority taking this wave oh decides not to take the wave under everybody well, we're going to get a replay soon after these waves are ridden. I'm going to, we're going to recap on white. So there he goes. This is the last heat of. Uh, that's the very final wave. So it's white at the beginning of this next of this heat, uh, which will load up shortly. And um, oh, Menchos. Menchos, here we go. That's a sick looking wave. Critical five. Just a touch up on the nose. He's opting for the nose ride, not the cutback, because he can see the section looming ahead. The judges are more pref oh there it is. There's what he did last time. The judges are more preferring uh, less nose riding, but turns to set up the nose ride, Jared. Yeah, you um, want to find that flow and connect a variety of maneuvers to get the highest score possible. Right. Chose riding off the beach. It's That's that showmanship life. too. You know, these guys want to put on a show and a performance, and um, they uh, they love the poses on the nose, the critical sections, the kicks, the twists, the. the really technical aspects to nose ride surfing but sometimes the actual positioning means a lot more than what you do on the nose if you can combine the two well you're pretty stoked definitely stoked and we see competitors having a little paddle battle as they're men in blue the priority takes this one from the other two this is uh, Leo up riding and opting for the leash today Local Indonesian surfer. I opted for that way, but it looked a little soft. Yeah. A little too much backwash. Didn't really stand up for him. Uh, see if this way stands up for our man in green, Teddy Hardware. Sick. Oh, boy. Gets the backwash rumble. He manages to hit cling on. Not much left on the inside for him. So we see that tide starting to affect the waves here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully some sets rolling in for a man out the back as we're going to break it down live to the beach with our last winner, the man from France in blue. Take it away, Maria. Hi, Roland. Congratulations on your win. Can you tell me about your um, feet out there this morning? Yeah, the wave are really good today. It's uh, glassy and a uh, really nice wave. And it's really nice to compete uh, in board shot for me. It's, uh, 
<laughs> it's the, the first time I see in long morning. That's nice. Very nice. How do you like the waves out here? The waves are pretty cool. <laughs> uh, in Bali, I come here in uh, holidays uh, normally, and I saw the competition. So I was like, okay, can I, I can do that. So I just rent the board on the surf shop here. So it's, it's, it's not my board, it's just a rental board and I never served it before. And normally I serve three fins and it's the first time I serve uh, one fins too. So I practice like uh, one week before, I practice uh, here on Bali. And then I, st I was thinking, okay, I can do the competition maybe. So I just re register on and it's a good training uh, for the European uh, competition too. Everything was the last minute, yeah? Yeah, I, I just registered like one hour before the, the, okay. <laughs> the, late, uh, the late entry. That was so nice, friend. Oh, wow. Is there anything that you want to say to your friends or your family back home? Yeah, <laughs> they're uh, bah ouais, cool, Bali. Je suis hyper content. La compète, ça se passe bien. C'est cool. Et puis on va aller, on va essayer d'aller jusqu'au bout à la choune. Thank you, Roland. Good luck on your next one. Thank you, thank you. It's nice to hear from Roland there. And back into action here surfers all sitting together the blue one green leo teddy and our japanese competitor in white so there's a no no stranger to crowd as well a lot of them being surf school teachers or their um you know ambassadors in their local clubs or culture and a lot of them just surf with the crowd all the time and here we have teddy fourth priority moving down the beach um, sort of out towards, uh, down towards the, the Chungu way to the right of the screen. And then he's found something down here, he knows. So he's out of priority here. So 5 and 10, holds a 10, completes in a switch. And he's out of there and, and finishes cleanly. And here we have back into live action. Our Japanese surfer in fourth, looking for a 371. Nice drop knee there clean technical footsteps there so watching his fellow countryman Kai Hamasi's technicalities getting those high scores beautiful surfing there from white more of the conventional approach and not needed don't need to do foam climbs end section rios breaking the flow and unfortunately that's going to be a six or a 6.5 down into a five you've got to complete Alright, well, he's going to be chasing that 6.35 to want to jump in the first. That could have been it. Could've it may, may still be. We don't have a direct line to the to the judges, we'll but... Um, we're going to leave that one up to them. So as they tally up those scores, we're going to turn our attention to the heat standings currently with just under 8 minutes. Some lines approaching. Got uh, green looking for a 5.74 to advance into the next round. And blue's searching for a 6.24 so with 7 minutes and 40 seconds plenty of time plenty of waves plenty of sunshine now it's cleared up that morning haze is gone so he got the score something. Jared uh, this is all because of this boom timing not in the pocket but clean footwork and here clean rail transition but unnecessary. So if, he, if they went 6 three, 3 on this, I would have to say that it, that would go even higher into a 7 well, if he completed. So he got a 6 three, 3 Wow. That's one of the first proper turns, though, we've seen. Not many turns well, all day. Look, here the boys go. They're paddling as Blue has priority. He's up, he's down. He's trying to see what's possibly behind this lip. Look, these guys are Maybe some, I can see some nerves out there, Jared. Um, yeah. Let's see what happens here. Nice. Blue taking his priority, dropping in. Too deep. A little deep. He paddled a little deep. He's going to come around and find that open face just for a moment. Mm. Oh, and unfortunately, he doesn't get much out of that wave. So I'm going to say with the leash on today at his, you know, at a, at a spot that he's familiar with, with priority, he let the other three surfers paddle him out off the position deep when he could just drop in on them and take off where he wanted to. Yeah. So he's doing a paddle battle spins so you can i don't know we'll have to speak to leo after maybe he hasn't surfed in a longboard event with too much priority before which is definitely the case with a lot of these surfers not realizing that hey he can actually drop in on them see you got green paddling to the other way red straight at the front and white deep so it's actually green he's comfortable with priority look 
and he's, he's where he wants to be. He's trying to find that open face down the beach. The corner, oh. that one not opening up, so he may lose priority on that one. And we'll see what the judges reply with that. As we see blue finding a little open face, oh. unfortunately nose dives right there. So the dares are coming into play here with 5 minutes and 40 seconds. Left uh, on the uncharacteristic clock. for Leo too, he's been surfing very confident and very free in his Instagram, he's posting clips and when it comes down to it and putting into a 20 minute heat, it's a lot harder and as we, we saw uh, at White's first wave, it's really tricky sometimes. It can be humbling surfing in a heat, and he's uh, in second spot with a 6-3-3 and a 3-2-3. And Green's going to use his priority right here. And he interestingly didn't lose it after oh, he paddled last time. Nice nose ride from Green. Surfer Teddy Hardware. It's another quick nose ride. Oh, oh unfortunately. Oh, yeah. He lays back and he holds on. Let's see if he can make it around this last section. Yep. If there's anything on the inside for him. Good setup again, but it sucks out and he goes down. So he's searching a 5.74 to advance it. It's going to be close, mm. close, close. Hopefully he gets the cigar, but you never know here. Would have loved to see the waves stand up more on those nose rides. But let's take another look. Great nose ride off the first. An even better one off the second, but he kind of stumbles right there uses those muscles to bring him back up on the board and push through the next section. Quick little redirect, set up turn for that inside, but then it just sucks out and it goes down. So it's going to be a close one for a man, and it doesn't look like he gets a score because now he needs a 4.97. So he lessened what he was after, but didn't quite capture the full, mm. full go. So with four minutes left in the heat, gonna have plenty of opportunity. Do you think that downtime behind the whitewash had something to do with that? Possibly, yeah. When he stumbled and got stuck back there, definitely. So you see blue up and riding, trying to make the most of this one. Mm. If, we, um, if we have a chance to replay just this that wave of blues, have a look at his eyesight, Jared. Um, often when you're nervous or unsure at a new break or riding a new board, you look down at your feet. Uh, especially when you're testing stuff, but when you're nervous, and I notice Blue's eyesight actually looking down, and we do know when you look down, it's inevitably where you end up. Um, that was a little technical aspect picked up there, and, and maybe just playing into the unusual scoreline from Leo, because I've been holding him pretty high esteem, just watching him surf in the last few days and warming up, and yeah, seeing him this morning, he was looking pretty cruisy and relaxed, but yeah, they're the boys in the Warungs. Up. Big shout out to our halfway board riders as well. There a lot we of the go. crew in there. Uriatra, one of the most famous surfers in Indonesia with his family. Enjoying a beautiful local style breakfast. <laughs> Got the pop me, the noodles, and all the smiles for days. Big shout out to our local surfers here in Indonesia for their support and good times for showing us the proper way to do things here in their local breaks. So you see green. Nice. Getting that one under white. Up on the nose, it's not mm. going to be the 4.97 he was after. So he's going to scramble back out there, to try and get another opportunity to advance so into the next round. Despite Green still being in third spot, the confidence that Green had to paddle out of priority White, who was below him, you contrast that to Leo on that set wave 10 minutes earlier, who got sort of spooked out of position. Um, it showed me Teddy knows he needs a 4.97, and he can get it. He sort of backs himself, and he, he's got that contest history you know experience yep he's um been surfing around for a while and he's a great surfer and uh he's got a iconic photo photo from neos of him perched up on the nose long morning there so he's definitely qualified to get the score that he's searching for with just under two minutes left in this heat let's see if he can pull it out of the bag uh, it seems like a little bit of a lull but you never know that buzzer beater some magic could swirl up and they can get another opportunity to strike. As we see Metros on the left of the screen sitting comfortably in first. Just um, Blue's last wave. Huh? Blue. And last wave. White just behind him with a total heat score of 9.56. He's searching for a 6.35 to jump into the lead. So Blue with second priority. He's searching for a 6.24 to advance. 
has third priority after that 6.35 like mentioned just before and Teddy and Green's hunting that 4.97 with just under a minute there's some lines on the horizon I love it when it comes down to this moment in the mm. game it's action packed so just to interrupt Jared Leo on his bike second priority and now moving way up the bank and this is the replay of the last one you look he's uh, up in the nose he's looking down looking down and he goes down there so he's is. he's got the retribution now he's he's kind of made a few mistakes and 30 seconds remaining and he's he knows that he can get it but a 624 he's let he's left it down to 19 minutes and and 40 seconds to make a choice and we'll see because it just tells the nerves maybe getting the most of him here and here's teddy fourth in priority lets it go knowing he needs to, here he goes here's leo 624 needed and he gets the nose right and this time still looking down okay five seconds left and not a lot of scoring opportunity on this wave but we'll see if that was the 624 i don't know if teddy it doesn't look like teddy got a um a wave before that uh countdown so we're going to wrap up the round of 16 and take a quick ad break and we're going to bring the women's up next Right, that was concluded men's heat number four. So we're straight into the women's. This is Natsumi Tayoka and Suji Kim from Korea. And we say goodbye to quite a few uh, high-rated surfers and say goodbye to Teddy, who was probably one of my favorites going into this event, showing a lack of nerves and super confident, bit of a showman, but also well-accomplished surfer. And yeah, not progressing through that heat. But we have undeniably the in-form surfer of the event that's Sumi Taoka across the men's and women's the Japanese surfers are really breaking away uh, with the current ratings leader that's Sumi out in the water but Suji Kim the Korean she's gonna have a lot of supporters back home a lot of the people on the beach that are here there's a Korean surf school here they're all here supporting and here she goes here's Natsumi this is that quarterfinal heat number one Competitor versus competitor. Only oh. two surfers, unfortunately, our surfer in red from Japan takes a little rail dig, leaving the opportunity wide open for our surfer in blue from Korea, Sugi Kim, to jump out into the front. But not much of a lead there with that one. No, both surfers are uh, starting this one slow. And you see the, um, I guess, the relaxed body language of Sugi, like obviously someone who really favors. Uh, we saw her footwork get rewarded pretty heavily in her last heat based on completion. And she obviously favors the more um, the elegant and graceful style of surfing. When Sumi is much the same, but dude, she charges. She goes hard. And anyone in that world longboard tour can think back to the 2019 Taiwan finale, the world championship, where it was six foot plus and that Sumi was sending it on for her double overhead plus sets. And going down on a few, and you got to risk it for the biscuit, and she does. She often goes excellent when she pushes it. So we'll see how she goes in these smaller waves, and here she goes up and riding. Quick feet, just a set up nose ride. Up on the nose again, gets tight little 10, nice quick nimble feet. And finishes right on the sand, so no, I wouldn't really call that a, an incomplete wave, it was just. She ran out of sand, so I wouldn't, wouldn't say she fell off. She ran, out, she ran out of wave. Ran out of wave, there we go. <laughs> Straight onto the sand there for a competitor, Red. But a nice opening exchange. 
for her to start her campaign to getting that much closer. As we see a replay from that last wave, like Matt mentioned, a quick tap of the nose sets up for a better nose ride right there. She's in the critical position of the wave there. Mm. Just finishes it right on the beach. Has to jump off so she her fin doesn't pop out. Yep. And um, <coughs> just touching base again on the eyesight. If we get another replay of, of reds one more time, um, just have a look when she goes to 10, the eyesight is forward down the line. That's an indication that the surf is heading down the line. And often when you're hanging 10, it actually steers the board up. And we'll see if she, here we go, is that replay. So here she goes, she's paddling. Her first nose eyes, she's looking down and it's more of a face nose. Have a look at her eyesight there. Looking down, over the nose, looking down again. Now she goes 10, eyes forward. And then the body lifts the nose a little bit. And here she goes, looks up, bang, looks down. You go where your eyes go. And that Sumi, that was a nice little wave to start off her campaign. And I think she's got another one in the break. So we just missed one of Suji and Natsumi. But that's okay. We're now showing the viewers what the judges are looking for, Jared. Those, as we're in the quarters, we've got two-person heats. We can analyze this clearly. And here's what happened in that replay. Critical eyes down the line. High-speed nose ride right there and holds on to that end section to kick out. Look at these lines coming in. These girls are getting stuck on the inside. A couple missed opportunities, but plenty of time left in this heat. So they're going to make their way back out there. And it's just great to see the swell coming in with that tide push. Looks like a competitor in red might have just snuck out. As we get an update. Men. We are getting closer. We're going to come up to the quarterfinals after we're done with the women's here. We're rolling all the way through. To Crowning a champion today. Yep, that's right. We're going to crown a champion. They're going to make themselves that much closer to becoming on the World Longboard Tour stage. And um, so there's quite a few points up for grabs in this so natsumi is going to minimally minimum grab 500 points if she was to come second to suji okay. and right. there's a Bintang crystal team one of the sponsors of the event they're set up those beers on display they're not cold but right behind them there's some beers on ice for the celebration later today as we crown a champion here at Halfway Kuda Beach for the Padro Lombard Classic WSLQS event. Thanks to all of our fans, sponsors, and supporters. And after this women's quarterfinal round, we're going to jump back into the men's quarterfinal. This, these heats are stacked. Heat, quarterfinal heat number one, we got Kai Asami from Japan, Dean Permana from Indonesia. For the second heat, mm. we got JR from the Philippines. Yeah, that's He's interesting. the current point leader. And he's going to go up against Brazilian Dream, Augusto Alinto. That's going to be one fine match, folks, yep. so stay tuned. And right now, we're going to bring it down to a post-heat with Menchos, our last heat winner with Maria. Maria, take it away. Hey, Menchos, congratulations. How do you feel about going to the quarterfinals? Uh, I'm so happy. Yes. Uh, definitely yeah. like the way uh, I have more, uh, more practice for the lab, but I just try. It's a good wave today. So we're back live out here at Kuda for the quarterfinals 
first heat for the women's round. 11 minutes left and 20 seconds. We find our surfer in red out in front with a total heat score of 9.933. Her first wave was a 5.50. Second wave a 4.43. That puts our competitor in blue on screen right now, Sugi Kim from Korea in second place. And she's looking for a 8.43 to jump into the lead. A total heat score currently with, of a 2.50. So a couple throwaway waves for our competitor in blue. As we see a lull in the action right now. Got some stacked heats coming our way for the rest of this quarterfinals round. Up next in the women's division from Japan is Kade Inua and from the Philippines is Daisy Valdez. After that we're going to find ourselves in quarterfinal heat number three with Hiroka Yoshikawa from Japan. And speaking about Japan, here comes our current heat leader in red. Just gonna drop in straight up to the nose, hanging, beautifully navigating her way through the section, steps up for a 10, redirect, wrap the board around, nice little switch stance cut back to take herself back up to the nose. And that inside section walks down, completes the ride. She's happy about that one, folks. Beautiful smile from our competitor in red, Natsumi Tayoka from Japan. And right behind her, lady in blue, Sugi Kim. Well done, cross-stepping effortlessly up to the nose. Back up again, trying to see if that wave will stand up more for a critical section as she goes to 10. Cross steps back and kind of gets exploded on the inside. She manages to grab her board and make her way back out for the rest of this quarterfinal heat number one. So here's the replay of our competitor in red. Nicely done. Just effortlessly cool, calm, and collected. Five, ten. Expressing her skill set, the repertoire of different maneuvers, connecting them effortlessly with a fine flow. Let's see what the judges have to say about that one. And our replay from competitor in blue, Sugi Kim. Just chilling out there on the nose, enjoying the sunshine here in Bali, Indonesia. Working away to the inside, there's that 10, a quick second manages to hang on that cross step shuffle back to the tail to complete her ride We're coming to that eight minute marker here in the quarterfinal heat number one as we make our way that much closer today to crowning a champion and setting them on their path to joining the world longboard tour this is the Asia region qualifier Another shout out to our sponsors, Padrol. This is the Padrol Lombard Classic. We've got Bintang Crystal, Lamaka Hotel. Also like to thank Kuda Board Riders for helping us put this on. ASC, PSI, and all the fans and supporters tuning in. It's another lovely day here down at the beach. Things are coming together nicely. Just gonna enjoy the day and catch the breeze. Like I mentioned before, after this quarterfinal round for the women's, we're gonna jump into the men's. And got that matchup between JR, the current points leader from the Philippines. He's gonna go against Augusto Alito from Brazil. And Quarterfinal heat number three for the men's. We have the Frenchman from France, Ron Lefleu, against Masaya Sukamoto from Japan. And rounding up the fourth and final heat for the quarterfinal men round, we have Taka Inoue from Japan and Menchas from Indonesia. So stacked heats coming up for the men's 
quarterfinal round as we get back to the women's currently in the water. Six minutes and 20 seconds left. So ladies are waiting patiently. Some more opportunities. Just a nice chill time. Just you and one other fellow competitor enjoying the warm waters with the warm sunshine here at Kuda. Couple lines approaching out the back as our, we see our surfers trying to position themselves as bestly as they can. There goes Red turning around. Let's see if she's going to get off to go right. Looks like she's going left. There she is. Bottom turn straight up to the nose. Quick 5 10. Whoa. Pushes the water but manages to hang on. Navigate her way through the next section and that backwash. Little turn down. Ops not to go for the inside reform. Let's kick out to head back out there. So a surfer in red from Japan, Natsumi Tayoka. Currently with a total heat score of 14. It's a replay of her last wave. So folks, they're gonna look for that critical nose ride. Nice and lengthy, a little bit out on the shoulder. She manages to keep her two best waves right now at an 8.50 and a 5.50. And sitting with Priority at the back, Lady in Blue, Sugi Kim. She needs a 9.23 to advance. And there's the Pad Roll main sponsor of the Longboard Classic. A little pop up down there on the beach. Soft goods, hard goods, smiles, and shakas. Thanks to Padrol for putting on such a lovely event. Oh, it's a nice board for today's conditions. A little twin fin, nice deck patch there, and a nice blue color tint. Taking it back out to the water with four minutes left in the sea. Still sitting with priority is Sugi Kim in blue, chasing that 9.23. As we see some more opportunities approaching our two women competitors. Here goes Sugi Kim from Korea in blue. Nice little swoopy turn up to the nose. Quick five and ten. Almost stumbles. Oh, and there she goes. It got her in the end. Slipped out just from under her feet as right behind her in red. Current heat leader. Nice, beautiful five. Wow. Oh, but unfortunately it goes down on that one. Can't hang on to the backwash bump. So both those scores aren't going to mean much to these lady competitors, and they're going to get back out there and see if Sugi Kim can find another opportunity to advance, hopefully. With three minutes left on the clock, the women will make their way back out position themselves, but looks like red gets priority. So Natsumi Tayoka. Going to take the lead for this heat. And up next, we have another Japanese competitor against a Filipino competitor, Daisy Valdez. So another stacked heat coming our way. And there's the ASC boys up there enjoying the breeze and the view. Top that two story scaffolding right there on the beach. They've got that front row view of all the action down here for the WSL QS event Padrol Longboard Classic just hitting the two minute marker this quarterfinal heat number one the ladies are looking very relaxed and calm Another thing we like to see in style and poise in this women's longboard division. Fortunately, that high tide is rolling in, so not much on action. 
on the last we're gonna see if we can get these ladies an opportunity with a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock and that tide is dropping now so it's coming down from an 8.4 foot high tide falling down to a 0.5 low at 420 this afternoon so we're gonna try and run these heats to wrap up the event before that dead low tide when it closes out the waves. Right now, here goes under priority competitor in blue looking for that 9.23 to take the win with 49 seconds left on the clock. Drops in, redirects for the next section on the inside, cross steps up to the nose for a hang five. Walks back in control. Nicely done from our competitor in blue. It's gonna be hard to get a 9.23, but great effort from our surfer from Korea. 26 seconds left on the clock. She's going to try and get one more opportunity. So you see our women competitors in the next quarterfinal heat. Number two, paddle out. Let me count this down as we watch the replay from our surfer in blue. Nicely done. Searching for that 9.23. We'll leave that one up to the judges as we wrap this first heat. And we're going to go to a quick ad break. And we'll see you soon for heat number two of this quarterfinal round. Alright folks, we're back getting our heat number two of this quarterfinal women's division underway. Looks like Blue Daisy Valdez got a scoring opportunity. So we're going to have to wait for the replay to see that one. So we have her in blue against our competitor in red. Oh, here goes Daisy's waves. It's bottom turn. Oh, searching for his section. Unfortunately, that high tide which is out that way for her. So she's gonna get back out there. Oh, then we go to replay for Brad. Oh, nice hand drive there. Throwing that Lady Flare. Nice completion. Oh. Dive off into the shore bank. You gotta be careful there, folks. It hits the sand quite abruptly. She's smiling though, having a great time, enjoying the event with all of her friends, family, and supporters down here at Halfway Kuda Beach today. We'll take a different angle for this replay. There she goes up to the nose. Redirecting, setting up for that inside section. Alright, we're back live here down on the beach. Had some technical difficulties. Seven minutes, 30 seconds left on the clock. Priority to our competitor in blue, Daisy Valdez. Total heat score of 9.34. And a competitor red on screen right there, searching for a 4.34 to advance and take the lead back. The waves are rumbling the shore. The swell is filling in. The people are crowding down here to get a glimpse of what could be your next world longboard champion as they're trying to qualify for the tour down here at the Padre Longboard Classic. Seven minutes left in this heat number two quarterfinal round for the women's division. We see Daisy Valdez in blue from the Philippines. 
smooth plod flying across the section setting up for that backwash bump and ops kicked out so we're gonna break it down to the boys in the chairs Mega Samadhi Guriatra with Tippy, a couple local legends keeping it real making sure everything goes smoothly they are some of Indonesia's favorite favorite and finest surfers. Love to see those guys down here at the beach supporting the longboard culture. As we take it back out to the water, competitor in red is sitting with priority with six minutes left on the clock. As Daisy Valdez is looking for a 6.06 .06 to advance. It's going to be a bit tricky, but nonetheless, she's qualified to pull this one off. Those Pedro Reds looking for this. Ops not to go. There's lines stacked to the horizon, so plenty of waves coming through for our surfers out here in heat number two of this qualifying round. As we get the five minute mark in 20 seconds, we're gonna break it down for a post heat interview with Natsumi Tayoka with Maria. Maria? Natsumi, congratulations. How do you feel out there? Um, the wave is much better than the past heat of the today. So I feel like really good. It was very good. Um, I got 8.5. It was really a big set and then green. It's a bit backwash, but um, yeah, I just got the good wave, so I'm so happy about it. And how do you feel about going to the semi finals here in Um, It's a bit nervous, but I want to try to be uh, calm down and then do, um, do my best. And I heard you were trying, like, you have your eye on going back to the World Longboard Tour. Can you please tell me about it? Um, yeah, I used to be competing in WLT. And yeah, I learned a lot from every competition. So I really want to back to the tour. So I want to focus on the semifinals. All right, congratulations and good luck on your next one. Thank you. <laughs> Back to live action. We have Daisy hunting on this one. Not quite a fade bottom turn, but she's up high on the nose. Waiting for this section to wall up. She gets tiny little four steps to the nose and looking for a 6.06 .06 and nothing technical on that wave. So I don't think that one will go, but it was complete. So that's what you've got to do to, to log in a score around the mid range. You have to be completing and it doesn't matter how good your nose ride is. I was just on the beach, caught up with uh, a couple of the uh, the local Indonesian surfers who surf great, but just weren't completing their waves, and they know it. They were just typical showman fashion, happy to do the nose rides. And there's some of them there. Local supporters, fans from all over. It's a great crowd down on the beach. How is it, the vibe in, in the sand? You get your toes in there? Mate, it's electric. It's uh, just spoke to Natsumi, the heat winner of the previous one, and... Look, the boys are all hanging out. Some of them are seeking shade, just hanging out in the back of the Wurongs, um, keeping it a little bit low key. And uh, it's very hot out there, I can tell you that much. It's really starting to heat up. So if you are around Bali at the moment, the traffic's pretty mellow. Being a Sunday at the moment, you can get the Kuda, but probably advised to get some transport, get dropped off here and check it out. Because we're in the quarterfinals. I'm going to roll in next to the men's after. Uh, got heat number three and then heat number four as well so it's really coming down to the pointy end of the competition it was interesting just watching Natsumi on the beach of course very interested in what Daisy's progression would be here which will replay of her last wave still searching that 6.06 .06. a little quick tap on the nose goes through that soft section right there looking for that open face and she's quite not finding it as she taps the nose again and ends that one with a double up whitewash wash through. So yeah, just struggling to get over the five mark there for Daisy and it, it's gonna come down to those technical transitions and that comes from years as our local lifeguard as well. Cracking some jokes, he's a comedian as well as a uh, local lifeguard. These Big guys. strong man. 
<laughs> These guys definitely hey. keep the vibe live as we see a couple more local boys making sure everybody's got their right jersey. It's part of the halfway Kuda Jeez. Board Riders Club you, right there. Tell you what, you wouldn't want to take the wrong jersey. The look at those boys. Oh, definitely not. They will put you in the sand in any old fashion they desire, but in a gentle way. Because they're gentle guys. They keep in the stoke alive down here at the Padro Lawnmower Classic. Because so we're going to wrap up this heat with a minute and ten seconds left. Hmm. Interesting, a little uh, little watch malfunction there from um, Kaidi. Uh oh. Jeez, look at that. Watch in the mouth. She's got priority and she's paddling for this wave, looking to the beach. And oh. I think we'll see a change in priority here. Uh, that would, you would think. Kaidi, so. that wave didn't even break. So, mm. yep, a rookie error there from Kaidi, looking back at the priority board. And Daisy, she's hunting for this. And everyone at home and on the beach is uh, barracking for her. And here it. she goes. This is the last roll of the dice for Daisy, you'd think. No bottom turn. And that is crucial in longboarding. Oh. And the tempo of that wave was set up because of a lack of bottom turn. Wasn't able to actually adjust her line of the lip. And inevitably, oh, look at this. wow, that's sister all... changeover. Wow, that's the tightness and of the family yes. unit. Look at them go. Look at the contrast between Daisy. She's just lost the heat. And then you see Kaidi paddling back out with 12 seconds to go without a watch. You need, and, and here she goes. Swap. She doesn't, she's not leaving anything to risk. Down to the last seconds of the wire. Three seconds left. She's up. Changes boards with her sister. Wow. On the nose. Look at that. Stretch five. Probably the longest nose ride for yeah. her of the heat. Actually, probably her best way. Did she change boards? She changes boards with her sister. Wow. And you know what? That's actually going to be her, her best score. Wow. That Anything can happen. She just solidified her win right there with wow. a couple seconds left of the heat. True talent there. That was a tight and Inui. Switch. And then we'll have up next her sister competing in heat number three. We're going to come back to the action very shortly, but here's a message from our sponsors. Gak bisa lepas dari HP, itu over screen time. Chill, bareng bintang kristal. Smooth. Gak over time. Waktunya kristal chill. It's uh, back with you guys, and that's a beautiful airport in the distance in the Bukit Peninsula in the far east. We're here at Halfway Beach in Kuda, so if you're in Bali, come on down. We are watching the Padrol QS1000 longboard qualifying event. Things are really starting to heat up here as we're getting closer to crowning that champion for Heat 3 of the quarterfinal women's division. And red from Japan, Hiroko Yoshikawa. And Sakura Inui. Yeah. Sister. Kuro Nui. That was a great exchange of the family unit right mm. there in that last heat. They knew what they were doing. Paddled up side by side. Leashes off. Jared, swap. can I ask you something? Can Somebody. you go down and interview Heidi from that last heat and ask about the watch? I sure can, unless they're going to do it for us. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. To take a walk and uh, they will bring Luke. Yeah, yeah Luke's going to jump in. Luke, you going to jump in? All right, here yeah, we go. Yeah, go we're down. Gonna take a little swap and I'll go see if I can find... Girls yeah, on let's the tune beach. in. And if they've pre-recorded that interview, tell them to redo it. Redo it. Jump let's go in. Dive. All right, ready? So we're going to invite a Filipino correspondent, Luke, back into the booth. He did a great job with us yesterday. 
welcome and um, tell you what, the waves are really good down there, right? Yeah, it's so fun. Really good. A li little bit bigger than yesterday. Yeah. And more opportunities for everyone. Mm. It's going to be a very exciting finals day. So um, we just had uh, one of your one of your uh, country women in the previous heat. We'll go through that in a second as we see the first wave looking at this. So yeah, Daisy was unable to capitalize at the end. She had the wave, but just a lack of a bottom turn to set up the section. And um, I've seen a, a pattern with the Filipino surfers performing lots of maneuvers without positioning them effectively. And it's really come into show here with these uh, pockety waves at Kuda. And the Japanese, on the other hand, have had really strong showings, including Sakura here as well, uh, because they're back in the pocket. You know, they're kind of uh, surfing really critical. And it just comes down to, I suppose, realizing that it's not about quantity. It's about the quality of maneuvers. Is that uh, something you guys are talking about as a Filipino group? Yeah, that's true. I totally agree with you. Um, I think it has to do with the the surf spot with surfing sure uh, Mona Lisa um, it's where all of most of the La Union um, longboarders are training except for the inside when yep. you're at the outside you have to be a little bit more in front of the wave sure. instead of like what you're saying in the pocket and more proper position because Is that because uh, it's down the line a little bit yeah, more it's yeah down, it's like breaking like slant like this sure. so you have to be in front in front of the the whitewash yeah or you get stuck behind yep. yeah yeah but yeah, I totally agree with you. We have to be um, working on our techniques more on quality, less on um, quantity. Mm. But of course, uh, the World Games recently was uh, quite quite big and the waves pretty far out. And the Filipinos really shone with great footwork and transitions. And that was, uh, you know, definitely a really good showing for you guys. But here at Cuda, it's it's been mixed results so far, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The the World Games is more similar to our local spot yep. in, in, in La Union. That's one of the reasons why JR did did did, um, did really well. Did really well, yeah. And just seeing Hiroka then, um, we saw one of our previous competitors talk about it might have been Hiroko, this reminds her of Japan. Uh, the waves. And Jared and I have surfed Japan quite a lot and and this does feel like a Japanese beach break out there. You could tell now they really surf a lot of beach breaks. These yeah. um, Japanese surfers, they really yeah. shine in this condition. Too. And their footwork is uh, not that the um, the Filipinos have got um, poor footwork by any means. In fact, it's actually very precise and pre you know very technical. But I must say that um, yeah, I must say that it's I don't know. It's something to do with the positioning of the footwork. And well, I do know actually because we're watching Hiroka dropping some really good scores and Natsumi and it's just coming down to their positioning and being comfortable in uncomfortable positions you know when the sections looming uh, they're not stepping back they're going for it uh, and they're comfortable driving through the section uh, where some of the other surfers and I spoke to Natsumi after that heat earlier about her I mean she was very interested in Daisy's uh, progression obviously just given the ratings and whatnot um, but we're on screen now, so I'm going to introduce Luke, and my name is Matt Chinoski. We're your hosts for the next few heats, and um, a pleasure to tune in, or having all you guys tune in all around the world, and we thank you for supporting longboarding, because this is the future right in front of us. For sure. It's always good to be back in sunny Bali, good food, good people, locals share their waves, and watching all these great surfers right in front of us. It's yeah. such a pleasure to be back here. Waves have been really good too, as we see in the corner of the screen there, Hiroka paddling for this. We talked a lot yesterday about corners and trying to locate uh, lefts and rights on the edge of the peak, and Hiroka driving off the the bottom of the wave there and nose riding up high. And you see she's all, she's really utilizing the top third of the wave and then dropping down for speed. Yeah, that's true. We might need to get you um, to the Philippines, teach us some more techniques, Matt. <laughs> well, if anyone wants to tune in, uh, The Art of Trim on Instagram, is an initiative I've been working on for a long time. I have decades of knowledge that I've been tuning in over the years and uh, just waiting for the right time to slowly release a lot of it. And um, I'm very busy with my own ventures as well, my own surfing, making clips. And this year I've set aside competition for supporting longboarding in all these regional areas, including Australia. And I'll be commentating on the World Longboard Tour, trying to carry that 
that voice through the different events and um, really try and be or support the network that Devon Howard worked so hard to create. Now Kira Innes on the uh, Kira Seal, sorry, as our um, uh, longboard commissioner. And here we have Sakura just on the tail there and opting for the leg rope. And that was actually something we spoke about just then on the beach. I had a chat with the Korean surfers and uh, some of the Thai surfers sitting side by side. It's really nice to see the different contingents on the beach. You guys have got your little crew. And now we're going to actually go down to the beach right now. We've got to go to the interview. Heidi from that last heat. Thank you very much. Well, in the first uh, race, uh, I had a difficult day to catch a good break and uh, ride on well. But uh, in the last uh, minute, uh, I changed the board and uh, uh, that was a triple win. Uh, I ride on it very well. I'm very happy. Uh, so I noticed you have another sibling in the competition. So how many siblings do you have in this competition? え、兄弟で I'm a little bit nervous and I don't want to be beaten by my sister of course but uh, it is uh, uh, at the same time uh, my pleasure to compete with my sister in the same heat. Uh, anyway, I, I want uh, we two uh, will do a very good helping together and uh, get a good result together. And I saw you that you're switching board with your sister in the water on the very last heat. Can you please tell me about that? え、聞いてのタイゴに妹と一緒にあ、ボードを交換していましたけれども、それについてのご意見をお聞かせください。え、妹も私が先ほど乗ってた引き糸で乗っていたボードがすごく気に入っているので、そのボードに乗りたいという
and she swapped the watch with her sister. You could see that. So if the if our um, cameraman tuned back into that last minute exchange with a loss of priority of that last heat on Kaidi's uh, just before Kaidi's last wave and. Um, in that last minute of the heat, we had a watch changeover and a board changeover. But Kaidi actually scored one of the best waves of the heat in the last 10 seconds because she borrowed a board and just she hadn't ridden and just would drop straight onto it, if that makes sense. like, So they swap boards and uh, watches. Crazy, huh? Yeah, natural yeah. talent. Natural talent, I mean. talent, yeah. But it'll get you so far until practice and then see that back knee yep. on Hiroka's nose, right? And less is more. And unfortunately, that one running away. So Possibly, as I said, less is more. Not going to the nose, helping in that situation. Uh, it's high risk, but unfortunately the reward wasn't there. Um, you have to weigh it up. Would that extra nose ride in this situation, she's got a 7, 8, 3 and a 5, 6, 7. Perhaps she felt, being an experienced competitor, that first nose ride wasn't a 6. Mm -hmm. So she goes, oh, I need to push this. Or, that's I think that's as a competitor as well, good surfers and experienced surfers generally know when they get a score especially with the consistency of the judging we have these days. What would you say would be the best um, cross-training for if you're a competing longboard? Uh, surfing. Or just in well, surfing so, so in general? Not surfing regularly, but also understanding about the function of your surfboard and what it can do. So this board's got a lot of rocker. As you see, the nose is, yep. is bent up the front. So that's allowing Sakura to do these long nose rides with the wider leg stance. Will holding the board lower your score? Yes. Yeah, it will. Um, it's showing it's showing a uh, lack of control. control. Um, so that rocket board's got to allow you to nose ride in the face. It's actually pushing water. It's slowing you down. Where the wide point on this board's forward around her chest, where a lot of the other competitors, um, say a lot of the Australians in the world, see this board here, perfect. Um, see that around the Thomas logo? Mm -hmm. That is the wide point of that board. So that's behind centre, okay? Right there. That's a great camera and good timing. And you'll see a big old fin down the back. That's uh, that's a 10, 10.5 fin. That's a ping coming up next. Yep, that's you a see ping a fin. from Shargao, Shargao Island, Philippines. She's into the quarter finals heat four. You see that flex fin? Yep. So that's a belly in the board where a leg rope is. So what that that's slowing the board down already without the nose rocker. Mm. So the way to get speed on that board is the cross step, which of course is inbuilt in the criteria. So your bottom turn, roll off your speed as per uh, Kai Hamasi or uh, Augusto Olinto, and you step forward and the board accelerates. Yeah, By the time you're true. on the nose, you're flying, um, but you're in the pocket though, so you're scoring points. That's the true. midpoint, so Hiroka's surfboard, the wide point's more in the midpoint, so it's quite a safe, reliable, predictable surfboard, and that's how Hiroka generally surfs, but she's got delicate footwork and a nice understanding of her equipment, which allows her that consistency on a regular basis. Wow, there's so much knowledge. Where the, where the rocker allows comfort. It yeah. allows, um, like you'll see a lot of mini mal boards or learn the surfboards with all this nose rocker to prevent nose diving, yeah. curling, right? Um, but on the other end of the spectrum, in a performance board, that rocker allows more curve, more turning, and you can cut through on shallower, or more uh, hollow section waves. You can turn critically. So you see that rocker there pushing up? Yep. And that's why she's holding it. That's not a pot critical nose ride, but a long one. And she's turning. But keep in mind, she's 15 years old, surfing at a professional event, and all you need to do is complete waves. And if you can get a set wave, surf all the way to shore and complete, you're going to get four points, three or four, before you've even done a maneuver. That's so true. So let's say uh, Sakura's needing a 774. She had an opportunity to probably turn that wave into a five or a six if she completed. But without the completion, it's a critical part of the the judging criteria, that the completion, the control, right? Especially here now, it's a one-on-one, a -on -one, so the judges really see all the little details. And it's once again, so close to shore as well, right? Yeah, that's true. And so. props to their mom too. Their mom's been traveling with them everywhere, taking notes, taking videos. So you see there, just um, this here, it gets low, stable. Grabs that rail, pretty impressive to be able to hold that through this section. Shuffles back to the middle. There's the cross step, and that was the first. That was her one of the one of her first waves. And but she did get the completion. Nice. So this is halfway Kuta in Bali, thanks to the Halfway Board Riders Club for 
hosting this event and to the ASC too and of course WSL thanks to our major sponsors Padrol, BGS Coffee and Mamaka so of course um, the ASC worked in collaboration with you guys in the Philippines yep yep most so. of our events are collaboration with um, ASC yep as the Indo guys are we look to them as our big brothers in the in the surfing and in the events organization so They've been doing it um, longer than us. Mm. And that's um, the WSL longboard qualifier is quite an unusual situation. There's an actual pathway now for your longboarders. Yeah, this is a very critical um, event for our male longboarder because JR is currently first in the rankings. And number two is Taka Inoue. Both of them are still in in this competition and both of them have a tough heat coming um, in the next round. So it's going to be a very, very exciting. Mm. The next four hours is going to be so exciting. Absolutely. We will be crowning an event champion and we'll also be announcing who qualified for the World Longboard Tour, the four-stop World Longboard Tour, and it's one of the best wow. tour location stops we've ever seen. Uh, well, sure. in my lifetime at least. And he goes, Hiroka, current heat leader, looking to drop that 617. Love her nose ride style. Oh! And the disadvantage of a flatter rocker is when you do send it up to the lip, the flatter rocker is less likely to be comfortable on your come down. There's no, no safety and there's you, the curve of the board. That's true. You're unable to drive up you can drive up actually on a on a flat board but it's coming down and negotiating that steep drop uh, but keeping the momentum on a wave and flow and maintaining speed through transitions they're critical elements of the criteria too so we're looking for critical nose rides which is tight in the pocket we've established that we're looking for rail turns and, and transitions that link with footsteps so cross steps right would be interesting to see too when it's slow tide here mm-hmm because it seems like a total different wave when the tide drops. We were uh, surfing there yesterday afternoon and it was, it was around 400 meters away. Mm -hmm. Where um, the surfers right now, it's just about 50 to 80 meters in front of the judging tower. Sure. So, ah, secure it, just getting the kick. And that rounds up the heat. Looking for a 774, and that one is unfortunately not going to get at that heat. But well surfed for a 15 year old. Well done, Sakura. Great, and you can see her just tying up that leash there. A great, uh, you can see the rock on the board. Mm. It was a great heat for her. Good experience of the quarterfinals. But we're going to move into the next heat very shortly. We're going to go to a break, and we'll see you guys very soon. Is that a? I see them right. back this is um, the heat four of the women's um, division we have Ating Agudo from from Shergao our lone Filipino surfer left here in this competition and, and, and B Conroy from Australia and B Conroy yeah it looks like the ping started pretty quickly and a ping uh, sitting in fifth spot 500 points on the rankings so a lot of things that have to go her way to qualify for that World Longboard Tour, but I'm sure she would love just to in, in cruise with um, Sakura being being now knocked out and Daisy. And both one and two still in the And pump. Sujin as well. So, a Ping's gonna make a huge jump yeah. forward on the rankings. 
um, if, especially if she can get through this heat. But we'll see because she's got a tough Australian competitor. B Conroy has opened up the 3.5. We'll just go back and see these starting points. So here's a ping. Talk us through it, Luke. Yeah, a ping always has um, good style ever since she been competing. And it really shines. See those after the nose ride and it just goes down to the wave and just does that very nice turn. Oh, nice. And is, which part of Australia is she from? She's from Bells Beach, Victoria. Oh, nice. There's going to be a world tour event mm. there. Yep, there sure will be. So, um, yeah, only a 3.5 and a 3.17 for both of these. So maybe the judge is deeming a lack of completion for B. I was thinking that turn was pretty solid uh, with the transition walking out of it. But smaller waves we've seen that was actually two of the smaller waves we've seen in the last 20 minutes and so you each heat for those of you watching and there's been a lot of controversy in the last couple of weeks with scoring on the wsl and the isa too but each heat is relevant to each other and when you're judging something like a wave pool there's no differentiation between waves depends on the conditions mm -hmm. every heat's different conditions so the judges have to adjust to that that's, too. that's correct and um the scale yeah so in this heat it's Back a different scale right. to that previous heat so they're starting at low maybe they know these surfaces are capable of more so here's a ping four steps up the tip gets a clear 10 nice. six steps back Clean. and redirecting and she's out of there building a heat total quickly. how many how, how many steps is should be the the normal from from where you're standing up well it just depends on the length of board and i guess the size of the surfer the lesser the better is it the no, lesser step no no definitely not De no most definitely not actually uh, mm. but if you do more steps it's harder for you it's harder for the surfer uh, it yes takes a bit more time to get yeah there. yeah it's more intricate and precise so it's all about positioning too so if you're doing a big two-step leap to the nose which we see larger taller yeah, yeah. competitors do you have a lack of momentum in those steps basically you're bottom turning and you're not using the trim, the natural trim of the board to cross step up. You're actually just trying to like make use of the pocket straight away. Where if you actually are doing four steps, which is the, I guess the standard in traditional longboarding. So one, two to the middle, three, four to the nose. Because longboards have usually got a triplane rocker. You've got a bit of nose rocker, flat relatively in the middle, and then tail rocker. So stepping into the flat spot, which is where we paddle, and that's our speed spot on a traditional longboard. That's where we generate that speed. And, but the six steps come in, we saw some of the Japanese competitors do it in particular, Ping does it at times too, where you know you wanna to go to the nose, you don't have time or positioning to do a cutback. So you'll do that extra little step inside to slow yourself down while you get dragged back into the pocket and sort of wait for the section, the pocket to uh, appear. So you mean better surfers that are taller, yep. they can control if they want to do four steps or six steps? To, to Most tall surfers can't fit with, with and feet size too. So uh, let's say a ping <coughs> is maybe five foot tall mm -hmm. and she's on a, maybe a nine three. So four to six steps is going to be equivalent to somebody who's like six foot yeah. surfing a 10 foot board. Mm -hmm. Okay, she can do four steps and she probably will most of the time, but so I'm with a six foot guy on a 10 foot board. Um, it's you don't get points for six steps or four steps and it's it's more just about the positioning and the timing of those and often in fat waves slow waves almond shaped waves somewhere like Malibu at times where you know it's a two three hundred meter long wave and you're not ready to go to the nose yet but you know there's a big long section coming you'll do that little baby step and just sort of like slow down the board just enough so you can get to the tip and then you'll ride the tip until the pocket appears and good one to watch for this is um, we mentioned him before but maybe in a more modern day terms one of my Japanese friends Yuta Suzutsu okay. he's yeah and then Alex Nose used to do four to six steps when he was younger a lot Joel Tudor and here we go here's a ping priority let's go Luke oh, nice nice looking wave nice switch by a ping just looking at that the nose and running back before it closes out I That's think the bigger waves with this um, tide is breaking faster. Yeah. And yeah, most of the time it's shutting down at the end. Was, it, was that nose ride needed there? I 
think the wave's breaking too fast, yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I, I definitely think that um, she was on her way to a, an amazing score there because it was a bigger wave and quite critical. But we'll see the replay. The turn was amazing. And what happens if you do a really good turn is you set yourself up in the pocket. Yeah. But it's about the positioning of where on the wave you do the nose rub, which is what we're talking about, the steps. Um, we'll see. I think she was facing down on the nose. So more, it doesn't always get you more, more tricks doesn't get you more points. So here we go. This is critical, but going down the wave. Nice turn, bang, footwork. And here, see she's going down and then shuffles all the way back and digs a rail. Uh, so less is more, my friend. It's true. Maybe a bit of a float on the whitewash on the inside there. Definitely no. not. <laughs> Definitely not. That's actually been the down the downfall of a lot of the surfers who didn't progress funnily enough they were actually trying to do floaters mm. trying to just get something more out of it so in that case a good old down curve would have been score higher now. yeah but what we can't see in the screen is there is a, like this is like a left hand point almost at the moment the left is going for like another 50 meters after some of the surfers and here's one of the locals just hanging out in the sand he had too much bintang last night <laughs> <laughs> sun baking look at him oh what a cutie <laughs> They're used to the uh, the heat down here, and that's the Warung in front, just behind the the um, competitors uh, and the, the check-in area and the judging tower. So a ping with a four eight three, even with the wipeout, and you can't help but feel that was a five or a six in that score if she was to complete. But here goes B with priority, our Victorian, on her way to the Mentawai Islands, steeper wave. And she completes this nose zone. She straightens out. Yep. Needing a 5 on 6. So that's probably not going to be the 5 on 6. But it might help her cause to get rid of that 3.5. With 11 minutes left. Two surfers out. Lots of waves. We are seeing the tide drop. And here goes a ping. There's that style. Just composure on this wave. Not pushing it. Although she hasn't hit the nose, that's okay, because she might get it on the inside, and there she goes. So it'll be interesting to see the judges go with this, and I will not be surprised if this is in the six range. Even though there was a lack of nose rods, it was her choice of maneuvers. She... Is, is there a rule with board change, giving the board out here? Uh, talk about it. No, but the bullshell is calling me now. Oh, okay, we have a... One moment, technical difficulties. So, officially, some uh, controversy there. In that last heat, we did have the, the board change. Uh, during the heat, so I'm not sure how that took place, but there is rules in place for caddies and there's rules in place for, for equipment changes and the process. So we did know that uh, there was an equipment change at the beginning because the board that Sakura was riding was actually what the board that uh, her sister came in on and got that really excellent, uh, well not excellent, but uh, mid-range score to finish her heat. So we'll, uh, we'll tune you in with what happened in that end of that heat so a lot of fireworks there so but a ping five two seven and a four eight three so the judge is enjoying the transitions there and be a 2.6 so sort of like a lack of control at the top of the wave uh and sort of like a little slow transition to finish that so not carrying the speed on the set wave so b will probably break this down into two different scores looking to probably get a four or five although she's a very competent uh professional longboarder coming out of the Victorian region, studying full-time. And she has um, yeah, the world at her feet and lots of events ahead of her, so she'll use this. And she's using this event as a, an event as a time to um, gain experience while she's on a holiday and vacation from her studies. And by the end of this trip, she said she's looking forward to hanging tan, getting barreled and experiencing different cultures. And what better way to do that than competing here at the... Pedrol Longboard Classic. 
in collabor collaboration with WSL for the QS1000. And B won't be making any points here. She's here purely for the experience. And here she goes, fading in on this wave. We'll see what this one's got. It might be a right. No. Coming off the bottom. Critical section. Just holding it in the middle. Nice poise. Let's see if she can milk this inside. So she probably should have stepped forward there instead of going back. But it's difficult to tell if that wave was going to reform. Uh, a lot of these surfers, you see the flat you see the flat section of the board there. That's actually where we need to step to get our speed. So she thinks the board's behind in front of her, but it's behind her. She needs to look behind her. So we're going to uh, just wait on the camera before we go to the interview. Let's just see, because she doesn't realize her board's behind her. Um, and now someone on the beach has told her <laughs> the joys of not having a leash. But look, no waves coming in. She should probably kick her legs here, but I'm not a swimming coach. And we're going to go to Hiroko Yoshikawa, who's down the beach with Maria. Welcoming yeah, back uh, Jared Mel as yeah, Luke's gone down there to dissect the uh, the rule book. We had a little bit of controversy in the last few heats, Jared, and um, well, break it down for me, fill me in. I was, I was down there, but I was enjoying. Luke was trying to be off 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 live, but we did see the watch transition from the heat before yeah. with the sisters, but. What we didn't know was actually a board transition yeah. as well, but... Uh, this board was chased by, by my dad. Can you please tell us about it? Yeah, uh, the Lemme do, do Chef, and I use 9-4 single pin. Thank you. And have you always been using this board uh, for all the competitions? Uh, this board is new one. This is uh, good for small waves, so I use this one. Okay, congratulations again. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely to hear from Hiroka as always. A lot of interviews with the Japanese contingent at this event, but... Well, they're definitely putting on the show today. But welcoming back in Jared Mel. Um, hey guys. We're going to fill us in with some info because Luke had to step out of the booth to dissect the rule book because there, were, there could have been an interference with some caddies or something that we're not privy to here in the in the booth because in that heat we did see a watch transition between the two sisters yeah, uh, Sakura and Kaidi but what happened with the boards did you see that uh, yeah I remember you remember it was the last wave uh, who was it was it Sakura yep and her sister Kaidi yep. Kaidi so Kaidi was in the heat and Sakura came out and they were doing that's why she had that watch in her mouth mm. when we were both here in the booth and uh, uh, Sakura came paddling up to her and they swapped boards out there in the lineup and watches. And then Kade went back and paddled out in her heat and with just three seconds left, caught her best wave mm. in that heat on the board swap. Yep. And then her sister, well, she was in the next heat after, so she surfed that heat. But I guess we're going to wait for Luke to see what happens with yeah. that exchange because I forgot about that caddy rule. You can't, you can't help the competitors if they lose their board mm. on the beach. Like mm. I saw uh, Hiroka. Yep. She lost her board. I wanted to go... You know, obviously be a gentleman and toss yeah. her her board, but uh, it's not allowed here at WSL. But what is allowed is Beatrice going on this left oh. straight up to the nose. She's going to cling on and, whoa, come undone there. This white wash explodes her off her board. 4 minutes 30, 6.6. .6. She's got to complete those at this level. Being professional surfers, the best in the world. It's not a difficult task on two-foot wave to jump on the nose. And we're going to get an insight into Luke who's going to chuck on the, the speaker so fill us in on what's going on at the judging tower it doesn't have to be official um, yeah, so there was a we did see a transition with the boards and obviously we're not the officiators we're just here to speculate <laughs> so that's our job to analyze so they're trying to figure out if the heat between Daisy and Inoue yep since Inoue got a board change yeah and the board was given to her in the lineup, mm. which could give you an interference. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out which which Jared just alluded to wanting to uh, being such a pleasant lineup get someone else's board, but of course he can't. Yeah, that's the rules is the rules, and they're trying to figure out if <laughs> they're trying to figure out if the last wave of Inoue, the six point five. She used the borrowed uh, the, the swap board. Correct. Well, here we have some more action here with a ping. 527 nice. to 483. So 
with B making a few crucial areas errors with priority a ping is out to an early lead and it looks like those completions that we talked about and what was that that slogan less is more less is more what we talked about and a ping implementing it but some fireworks on the land but also in the surf because here's B Conroy the Victorian putting in She's never had a massage. She had a massage for the first time the other day. She said she's feeling very relaxed. And here she goes. Bang. Straight up on the tip. Managing that backwash. This one could run. Oh. Nice. And if she can control this and step forward and show the judges control, kind of, and then step back into a turn, that's a section for Cuddy. Sort of redirecting. So the judges will enjoy that variety. And with a 6.8... Not sure first impression it will get it, but here's a ping. She may have betted her total too. Nice. Both, both surfers riding um, different shaper boards. That's I right. Ping's riding a Thomas board and Conroy is riding a Nettleton, I believe. Correct. Both, both have pretty big impacts surfers. in Thomas, yeah. I mean, uh, in the Philippines. Yep, here's B's wave. So she opted to no nose right here, which probably would have been a good section for it. And then bang! Goes for the rail car, for the tail turn more so. So I want to say tail turn. Majority of the board was out of the water. The whole rail wasn't engaged, but she makes up for it sort of in here. I think some nerves, actually. Nice. Would be interesting to see what the judges score that. So she needs a 5-5-7. Five, five, seven so 4-7-3 like they gave it for that. And I would say a lot of that would have come from that turn in particular, but they would have noted the lack of control after that turn. It was a bit of a, a stutter. Mm -hmm. And... The only way around that is to practice surfing these types of waves regularly. And we talked about this before, understanding the theory behind why we do things. Because natural talent will take you so far. When you're up in a com competition heat, you're obviously there's heat IQ, which we talk about on the uh, championship tour a lot. Mm -hmm. But heat IQ and someone with no nerves, with just intuition, can also beat like a wild card, can also come and shake someone up who knows the process so well. So it's the art of competitive surfing and also the art of trim coordinated with longboarding and it's getting the balance right and a ping is doing that so far but still two mid-range scores you can't rule out at this level any of them are capable here goes b under priority 45 seconds left she's got nothing to lose a ping's in a good position mm. she's first and she has priority and she'll be probably nervous of the rankings but to be honest after speaking to both of these surfers around the contest site, they're pretty happy just to be here. Yeah, true. Here's B, 557. Five, Only needs a 557. Five, Ooh, she, she might have a reform here. She has a hang five already. That's not going to be it. That's where the six steps comes in, Luke. That's where the six steps comes in. You've got to practice these waves regularly, and it's that petite footwork and that positioning that gets you that. And you know you learn that? Phil Edwards. Oh, interesting. Three, two, one. We say goodbye to Beatrice Conroy and we say hello to a Pingagudo who moves up in the rankings and onto the semi finals. We're going to go to a break and we're going to be back very shortly with the men's quarters. We're back and seeing a pumping set out the back with some uh, increasing swell predicted today, Jared. We have a dropping tide, so a lot of lefts further up the coast that will be starting to pump. But out in the quarterfinals right now, we're, we're on. And um, a lot of fireworks in the women's division. And 
It does look like our Japanese competitors and a Pingagudo making it through, so. Here we go. This is uh, or Dean Permana. Live, straight into the men's action here. Heat one of the quarterfinal. Now we got to take a break. I got to take a break. Everybody's rejuiced, carbonated, and hydrated for the oh. rest of this event as we watch our competitor in blue. Hang on to that one. In the future, long water on the shore there. And she's just getting a little inspiration firsthand. Maybe that's a surf coach. Po just possibly. I know he does love to coach a lot of people. And why wouldn't you not want to be coached by that legend as he put a beautiful Ooh. display surfing as you see our Japanese competitor in red. Also a surf coach. Also a surf coach. Now he's oh. doing the toe tap right Sorry, there. Sorry, Dane, Dane Perley. And then he goes CJ. switch. He's been watching CS's and all. No, he's been watching uh, <laughs> no, um, Klopp's film down there at um, Mexico. Um, what, Time Warp? No, nope, it's similar. Uh, Cloth, Chris Cloth. Yeah. Old Cloth. And this is Dean. Oh, As we watch Dean. Ten. Good old Chris Cloth. This is his second a... wave. No, no, this is his first one. He gets sort of like manhandles that wave a little bit and he goes high on the board. Well, he's using it to the best he can. Why not? So, so film, which one? It was the one where they CJ, Dane, and Vince Felix and Jai Lee are down in Saladita. I remember that one. Um, from Cloth? Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, no, it, it might have been Cleveland. Cloth. Was it Cleveland? No, probably, it was Cloth. Probably, probably Cleveland. Okay. Steve, and shout out to legendary filmmaker and server Steve Cleveland from California. And Cloth. And Chris Cloth. Definitely no, no, not shooting into this. Yeah, Chris is definitely not tuning in. Steve might. So shout out to Steve, Steve if he yeah. is. I can just hear Cloth complaining somewhere. Oh, he's running away from bears and <laughs> he's um, growing his big plants out in the forest there, in Northern California. Yep, huge plants and uh, Kai, he's finishing cleanly on the inside. So I know someone who is watching right now. Who's that? Um, I'm actually going to uh, check the live updates because we've got a lot of live feed here. But uh, a big shout out to. Yuta Suzutsu from Japan, uh, our bro, the clinical style master. yuta -san. And we've got his countryman, Kai Hamasi, out there now. And we would love to see Yuta at this level at some stage. So as we're watching Kai. Beautiful ride right there from a surfer in red. Nice nose ride. Readjust. Nice five out there on the shoulder. Drops it back to the white wash. It banks it around. Sets up for that inside section. Last chance to score some points. Just makes his way to the nose on that soft face. Still going down the beach. Nice ride from our man in red. It's all the Japanese people down here supporting and tuning in. Like big, Jono mentioned. Big shout out to our uh, Australian contingents. And um, they're all like, oh. Good day. Bintangs are out there early. And um, I don't know. I was like, no way. How do you guys, how can you presume that? But we are in Bali. Oh, and they're Australian, and most Australians in Bali love a bintang no matter what time it is. Absolutely. And why wouldn't they? They're on vacation when they come here. Bintang so being one of the the sponsors of the event, along with Mamaka Hotel and Pedrol, the presenting sponsor, and of course, BGS Coffee. That's where enjoying the ice cold brew of BGS right now. And, and the ASC. Shout out ASC and Tippy. Thanks for having us. And, and the sound guys that visual guys killing it the judges what a fantastic job the judges rename rena remain nameless of course under the strict um, confidentiality agreement locked away but the next generation of isa world judges from several different different asian asian countries are shadow judging down there today as well and there's our contingent of russians big shout out to our russians polish there's even some ukrainians there as well Oh, watch out. Cal Thorpe might be down here anytime if you hear. Here's that one. <laughs> and then staying high on the wave is Dean backing it up. So Kai's out to an early lead. 14 point total. That's a healthy total with three quarters of heat left. Ooh, technical nose rides, but. He manages to hang on to that one. I like that first nose ride. He went through the mushy, mushy part of the wave and then yeah. dropped it back down to the more critical part and swung it back around. To There's continue. Board, so look at all the boards on display there. Look at that looks spins. like Christensen with a, a uh, fin. Andy Warhurst uh, alkali fin, the Wu Tang model. Oh wow! Um, and I wonder what Wu Tang thinks about that. They'd love it. <laughs> um, 
like a blade the blade logo and that's our pings thomas on the left hand side there she took the heat on and we're going to go to i think we're going we're cutting to a ping a gudo Tuning back in, we're just discussing with our Frenchman buddy Nathan, Nathan Sadun. So he's here to support his his uh, fellow Frenchman Roland coming up very shortly. And we talked about there was a heat that Roland had with a critical nose ride, and his hands were by his side and it was in the pocket. And I think everyone agreed, including judging panel seven two seven on a mid sized wave, purely on positioning. And it was really nice to see the judges actually award that because. For many years, you saw results for attributes of surfing that are not considered longboard surfing. So it was really good to see critical nose riding. Right, Nathan? Right? Yeah. Right on. Right on. Well, we're going to get you here. Share yeah, I, I wasn't on the beach yet, but uh, I, I watched uh, his wave on the, on the live on YouTube. And mm. it was nice. It was really in the pocket. And I think that really made the, the difference. We saw yeah. the, the lift and uh this like all apart under his nose yeah. that yeah that was a, a nice highlight and that's the type of surfing that you've cut your teeth on inspired by like Clo clovis and joel yeah. and it's nice to see that consistency right yeah, yeah exactly it's i mean i'm always more excited about a nice maybe short hang ten but sure. right in the pocket yeah critical than a long more like soft section yeah uh, nose riding so yeah i was pretty impressed like the beginning of his wave didn't mm. look amazing was pretty soft mm. and then when he got the last little section on the inside that i was like whoa impressive yeah. that was a uh, in my eye like one of the best wave I, i've Correct. seen in the morning and it was and good to see it awarded right and that's why i, I drove down i was like Let's well support him for and the rest hey of the we're day. here at halfway beach cuda we're only into the quarters we've got roland and the frenchman coming up soon but we've got b conroy from australia we're going to chuck on quickly so b B, hey, just had how are you going? Yeah, good. We just had an unfortunate... Uh, we just watched you um, not progress through that previous heat. How was it out there? And, um, yeah, we saw you throw down a few calves. <laughs> it was good. I just didn't... Uh, I don't think I gave myself the opportunity. Um, I was... Obviously, I was trying my best, but I'm really happy for the Filipino to progress. It gives her a chance. It may be making tour, mm. so I'm really happy for her. Um, and next time, I'll try to give myself more opportunity. Yeah, well, great surfing, B, and you put that Nettleton to the test, and we know a lot of the Filipino community are watching. A lot of them ride McTavish's, Thomas's, and Nettleton's as well, so you've, you've definitely represented uh, Victoria and Sean Nettleton very well, and your sponsor, Rip Curl. Yep, thank you. All right, well, there you go, folks. International affair here in the bus with Californian uh, Jared Mel and Australian Matt Chinoski. <laughs> it is an international affair amongst the high vibes. Down here at Halfway Kuda. People from all over are tuning in, dropping in. We'll have, we'll have ASC President Tippy in at some stage as well. Yeah, we're getting closer. Approaching to crowning the champion of the event later today with nine minutes and ten seconds left in this heat. We see our competitor in red from Japan sitting out in the front with a total heat score of 14 0 0. So that's going to leave our man in blue, Dean Permana. Looking for a 6.84.
to advance into the next round, which would be the semifinals. So paddling for this one, Kai Hamasi. Four steps up to the tip. On to that 10, controlling, driving. And completing this wave cleanly. So one of my favorites to watch. And I just love the technical aspect of Kai's surfing. He's got a lot of respect for the wave. And watching the weather report yesterday and reading the forecast for the next few days, there's a lot of swell coming. Now these waves that are here, those little swell lines that are coming in, here we watch this, this thing has traveled like 10,000 kilometers to arrive here at Kuta Beach. And that's not even a joke with Kai. That is no joke either. Controlling it back up to 10 with a relax relaxing the hips there. So super critical nose ride, medium sized wave. So probably won't go excellent, but I won't be surprised if, uh, oh, I don't know if that was six, five, there we go. Seven, six, seven. So it was close to excellent. And, well, I think that was pretty well awarded. Yeah, definitely. He was right there, flying along in the pocket the way a nose ride should be done. It's not too high, not too low. Perfect spot, perfect mm. place. No water off the front. And continuing that speed throughout the section with barely any body movement. How's that call of Nathan? Drove all the way down from the from Chenggu to, to watch his countrymen after seeing the judging and seeing the waves. He thought, hey, I'm going to go down there and support, which yeah, was really yeah. nice of him to come down was nice of him and it's great to see that support camaraderie, camaraderie between fellow countrymen out here in Bali, Indonesia and uh, yeah I think he just had that much fun yesterday he wanted some more action because it's a blast down here it's finally starting to pop off people are filling in the waves are cooking the sun is shining the conditions are prime under seven minutes left in this heat. We see Dean looking for an eight, searching to get through. Let's see him drop into this one. All right, Dean's up on the nose, styling. Oh. No effort needed, but it's a short ride, so he's probably not going to get that eight, especially compared to Kaya Masi's last wave. Only getting that 7.67, .67 and he definitely got more. A longer ride for the man in red, who's sitting currently out in first with priority as well. So six minutes left, and Dean has looked in a 717, one of those early nose rides backside as well. So the judge is really paying attention to the placement of the nose rides. The only thing let Dean down on that opening wave was probably just their midsection where it went a bit sleepy. So here he goes again. Five, ten, relaxed body language and steps back to the middle, but just shutting down and as we see that tide starting to drop. Oh, look at Red. Oop. He's in action. No, nope. oh. he's smart. He knows. he knows. Dean needs an eight. And he's going to need something himself quite dynamic. And he's going to, knowing him as a competitor and being a competitor myself, I think at this point, five minutes to go, you're going to need a special wave to use that energy special up. Special wave and sit on that priority to try and stop the man in blue, local Indonesian surfer, Dean Hermana. Or hey, a board swap. Oh, no. oh, there's our bro from the Warung. Oh, we had that this morning. He sells the best Cokes, the waters, the special... Bali copy. Bali copy, there he is, frothing. They love to put that gula in there. That's sugar in the local Bahasa language. Oh, bloody cold beer down here at Halfway Kuda. People are enjoying the lifestyle as they sit in the shade and watch... Some of the world's best longboarders go for the qualifying series to get that one spot chance in either division so they can perform on the world tour with the other surfers from around the world chasing that title. So back to the action in the water. As you see, our competitor in red, is he going to hold on to that priority? Looks like he's thinking about trying to capitalize on this opportunity. He gets it. Straight up, back 5, 10, holding on the nose ride, walks back, trying to gain speed, goes up through the lip and back down. I don't know if he's going to further his total heat score and run for the win of this heat one in the men's quarterfinal. But it's definitely going to keep the legs and the body moving and the juices flowing. So we're hitting the four minute marker, waiting for judges to drop that score. 
And priority goes over to our man in blue, Dean Pranama. Let's see what he's got for us up his sleeve. 8.0. And I can tell you now that's very possible if we get along. We almost put a line through excellent range scores yesterday and it got towards the end of the day on that lower tide. And we saw our Japanese competitor who I think just it was late in the day. It wasn't show high, it was I think it was Masaya Sukimoto, it was, yep. Masaya, who got that, I think it was the last heat of the day, yeah, it was, and he got that super long wave, and then they gave it a high eight, or a low nine, and he surprised himself, three nose rides, couple turns, all the way down to the shore, out of nowhere, so they are out there, and the next quarterfinal is going to be, oh, heat, li hey, well, hey, ratings man, leader, huge one. ratings leader against Augusto Alinto, so two goofy footers, respectfully, Two of the informed surfers from their countries as well, with Augusto and RJ both on a tear. But this is going to be very entertaining. Very ent entertaining indeed, my friend. As as most of the action down here on the beach is always very entertaining at Halfway Kuda. From surfers to beach spectators and enthusiasts, you can find a wide range variety of people watching friends, surfing, kite flying. Kite flying, that's a popular <laughs> one for sure. It is kite season here in Bali. Once that rainy season is gone, the kites come out and it's officially a change in the seasons. It's the beautiful wa weather consistently every day. Conditions are prime. Those trade winds keep a going and it looks like We're gonna be joined the big by man or himself is going to come in to the booth. Tippy Jabrick. Oh. He's just going to tune in hey. for the next heat. He's going to come in for a minute. And I'm going to do a, little, a little live. Out. I'm going to do a live interview with Kai Hamasi after this and talk about the ratings because there's a lot of situations that will come into place as we go and update you on that. So RJ in that next heat. So what's going to happen is Kai's going to be watching RJ. Tuck will be coming up because. Down in ninth place on 350 is Kai. Teddy is knocked out above him. Roger is knocked out above him. Uh, we have Menchos. Menchos is still in. And Dean, who's in fifth spot, who needs an eight with a few minutes to go. Oof. Denny is knocked out in third, and Benito is not here. So we are looking at RJ, who could potentially take the win if Tucker does not progress and yeah, there's going to be a few situations going on here and I noticed earlier when I was interviewing Natsumi that she was keeping an eye on our Filipino competitor behind her Daisy because Daisy is not far behind in the rankings and I thought oh there's some nice camaraderie she doesn't want to miss Daisy's wave and I thought there's a double edged sword there I'm w waiting to see what happened with that board, board exchange I that will up heat. update you so you need to find out about that as we see Dean Paddling down the beach in search of that eight. Good idea. With 20 seconds left. And on the screen now is our current heat leader in red. Kai Hamasi. Wonderful nose ride right there. Stylish and controlled. 10 seconds left. A flashback to Dean. Looks like he didn't get that wave with that body language that he was looking for. Oh, decides not to give up just yet. And now he's done. Well, thanks, Dean. Hermana for your great run and display of showmanship, a true gentleman, and one of the local paddle sponsored athletes. And there is the gentlemanship, sportsmanship from the two competitors, and that quarter final heat number one. So we're going to take a short break and bring you the second heat of the quarter final men's division.
All right, folks, we're back for the Padrell Lombard Classic qualifying series for the WSL men's quarterfinal heat number two. Welcoming to the booth, Tippy Drabrik. Drabrik, sorry. Uh, how you going, Tippy? Really good, yeah, Jared. This yeah. is final day, and uh, I think uh, condition is a bit better than yesterday, I have to say. Yeah. A little bit. I would, I'll have to definitely agree with you. Look at this. It's prime conditions out here. Beautiful day in Bali, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Wind is offshore. The tide is dropping. The swell's pushing in. The sun's shining. The people are out there. Planes are about to take off. See you guys later. Thanks for coming in, though. Yeah. Hopefully that planes come back with more tourists. <laughs> <laughs> more longboarders. Uh, because uh, Kuta Beach right now is it's popping. perfect for it. It's going absolutely crazy out here. Spectators and surfers from all over the world coming down for the event here today as we are going to roll into the second heat of our quarterfinal in the men's division. And we're underway. In red from the Philippines, the current points leader, JR. And in blue, the Brazilian Storm, wonderful surfer and all around good guy, Augusto Alinto going to be an action-packed heat yeah this is going to be one of the most important heats uh, of this event actually you know because yeah. if if jr can move on and uh i think that one of the, the one of the japanese is the only person can take uh, uh jr down yeah. out of that i think jr is in a good good position right now here that's we go right. and here he goes oh well, that's interesting jr is opting for the knee leash mm, Interesting choice from the current point leader as we're going to break it down to Augusto's first wave right behind him quick five nice ten hanging on back up there through the section relax in full control just petting the lip with his left hand wow nice drop knee bottom turn Augusto Alinto yeah Augusto is uh, riding I've uh, been riding uh, a lot of uh, Ross uh, concept and yeah. here we go. This is another replay of uh, JR. Wow. JR has got a nice nose ride there himself. The yeah. Heads are back. Still going. Back up there again through a softer mm -hmm. section, but still going. Nice length of nose ride. And yeah, you know what, Jared? Like oh, a little claim there. The bank falls off the bank. A yeah, a little lip. claim there. T just to make sure the judge notice everything that he do, yeah. Yeah. You know, what, uh, during this heat, I, I think it's really interesting to see these two surfers are two goofy footers, surf similar. And uh, they're opting this left-handers, actually, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I was just mentioning before we came back, I was down there on the beach, just checking in with the vibe on the sand and the shoreline, and took a little swim, and... Uh, different perspective obviously when you're sitting in the van but down there it looks like a little left-hand point almost yeah today uh, I think halfway is uh, most most of the wave is a uh, is a left-hand point like you said but the water is gonna drain soon yeah when the water's drain is a totally different <laughs> different beach again yeah that's it the waves are gonna become a lot quicker and surfers are gonna have to choose their wave selection Precisely to yeah. move on to the finals, which we're gonna announce the champion later today down here at the beach. Yeah. So it's gonna be a fun-filled day here at Kuda. If you're in the area, pop on down, sink your so toes in the sand, and uh, enjoy a coconut in the view. Yeah. Hey, Jared, tell me a little bit about uh, you know your your longboarding. Uh, you know, uh, what do you do? Like uh, you shape your <laughs> your own equipment. You also you yeah. know, surfing a lot around Changu. Yeah, a lot around Chengdu, and if we happen to have a swell, which happens quite oftenly here in Bali, love to get away from the Chengdu crowd and uh, find some beautiful waves. As we see, a nice wave here from JR. Nice control on the tip, five, ten foot kick. Back. Wow! There he goes. It's <laughs> it's a high scoring wave here, uh, Jared. You know, like uh, JR opened with uh, an eight point, and also Augusto with an eight point five. Wow, this is going to be a, a hit that you don't want to miss. No, and not any seconds of it as we see JR's second wave, a 6.7. So Augusta's looking for a 5.67, but let's watch this replay of JR in red right here, dropping in, walking casually up to the nose. Nice little arch up there with the foot kick just to show that he's in control. 
Yeah. And taking it through the section right there. He's up out of the water where you want to see a nose ride. Yeah, there's a lot of technique details there on JR's right, uh, right there, J uh, Jared. Yeah, because there's some moment that his uh, both legs are so close to each other when he's doing hang five. And a lot of people like doing like a bit of a spread. So if, you know, as a judge, you have to see all those details. It's pretty crazy, no? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people think their longboarding is pretty simple, but it's very technical and intricate with these, these footworks, their foot placement, their body language. It's a lot of things coming into play for these judges to pay attention to. Oh, for sure. Especially you know? when it comes down to what's on the line here. Yeah. Halfway Kuda. Looks like Augusto Alinto is going to take his priority over JR. Let's see what he has for us could be a smart move right there because this wave is uh is it offering what he's looking for it's a little fast for him unfortunately it's not going to do it yeah so he's going to kick out it's a back. bit of a downtime there a lot of downtime there for augusto and uh <laughs> he, he knew that uh jr is quite the weapon out there so he didn't want to give him any opportunity yeah. unfortunately it didn't work out in his favor but at the moment we're going to go down to the post heat interview with Kai Hamasi and with Matt Chanowski down on the beach. Matt, take it away. Rolling with Kai Hamasi, the winner of that quarterfinal number one. Kai, how did you feel? Any nerves? Yeah, I'm so happy to win this heat, so I'm so excited. Yeah. And what's it like inside? Are you thinking of the rankings or are you, are you watching this heat in the water now or what's going on inside the body? Yeah, I'm so I want to be in the next heat. Yeah. In the next round. Yeah. Yeah. So your aim to be on the World Longboard Tour, fantastic uh, four stops coming. Uh, Huntington Beach, Bells Beach, El Salvador, Malibu, is this your dream to be world champion? Yes, my dream is, yeah. And uh, you've said a lot of interviews already, but anyone else who's watching at home or anything you want to say to your family, friends, sponsors? Uh, Japanese, okay? Yeah. And who do you think is going to win this heat? Augusto or RJ? You hoping Augusto? Yeah, they are so good so far. So JR is Philippine champion and Augusto Green is so good so far. So I want both. So. Okay. But JR is same age, so JR want to win. Okay, well that's a very neutral answer. I'm sure we'll see you again, maybe after your semi-final. Good luck, and we're all a big fan of you. Thank you. Thank you. Live in action right now, Jared. We have JR. Currently, he must probably still sitting in the first place. We're still waiting for uh, Augusto's last wave. That's a long yeah. wave there from JR. I'm mixing it up with a couple of the uh, beginners there. <laughs> Some of the fans as well. Um, safe to say for sure after that way that he's gonna put himself out in the lead with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left yeah so currently he's sitting on an eight point ride and a 6.17 but that last ride we just witnessed is gonna boost <coughs> at least that 6.17 possibly the eight yeah um, that was one of the bigger waves of the heat that has been surfed and he surfed it well in the pocket right where you wanted to be projecting that speed throughout the whole face yeah so um tell me a little bit uh jared like uh oh here we go this is a, a replay from uh, jr look at that straight up on the nose five quick ten back to five quick ten stepping back pulling the nose back up so you can gain the speed to make it through that section cross steps back to gain even more speed and gets back up to the nose nice little cut back to redirect and set up for the inside section Back up there, hanging 10, arms down, navigating through this little bump from the inside through that white water. And he's going to take it all the way to the fans down there at the end. He looks happy. And there's that solidified hand fist pump. Yep. And this is Augusto Alinto in blue, that cross step, bottom turn, nice nose ride, showing the foot kick similar to JR's previous wave, just to show that he's in control of that nose ride and then kicks out so shorter ride nice nose ride as well but jr's last wave definitely is gonna move him yeah and add some more points if you're talking about these two surfers like you know they have the skills and the, their level is so high 
at the end of the day it probably just goes down into like wave selection it is yeah 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 it, that's a always a big thing in competition surfing as you would know um yeah when you get those waves if you get a better one that's your opportunity and so be it yeah Sometimes there's not that second wave to give you the same opportunity wow look at that one a there nine point nine points nine point jr putting his statement you know like this year is uh i have to say it's jr's uh year he he went to el salvador for the uh the longboard uh event and uh for the isa yeah. he finished fourth fourth out of like hundreds of longboarders wow <laughs> that's amazing that is amazing good yeah. job to our man in red jr yeah trying to solidify the win here in the heat number two quarterfinal round in the men's division and make his way that much closer to yeah. a possible chance to compete on the world stage for the WSL longboard tour. Yeah. So JR is also a really great uh, long, uh, shortboarder. He also doing like, you know, like all the tricks like airs and stuff, you know, yeah. like, I don't know, like to be good on both equipment, it's not easy. No, it's not easy, yeah. but it's a great thing to see. Um, there's quite a bit of younger gentlemen, kids, surfers, and men and female um performing at all levels like that riding a whole bunch of different equipment from short boards to long boards to mid lengths to twin fins to quad yeah. fins to no fins <laughs> talking about no fins nobody can beat cody in it at Pareto and none oh, at the uh, cody turnbull <laughs> No, man, nobody can up. take him down he you just can't. stick with one equipment finless uh, foamy can't beat him on the finless foamy, and it's hard to beat him on the mat over at Bali MMA. <laughs> he loves to give you a cuddle, so drop in and give him a squeeze. As we get back to the, replay, the previous yeah. replay of that 9.0 ride from our man in red, JR. See, he's just in control, and he just has that length of ride, and it's it was bigger than Augusto's. It's cleaner. And variety the is also there. Yeah, the variety, and he's also in that perfect spot. Yeah. He's in the Take pocket, the going with the speed of the wave, not forcing anything. Yeah. But just surfing it the way it should be and yeah. getting that opportunity. What the judges are also looking is control. Yeah. On that wave, JR is uh, he's in, in full, full control. control. Yeah. yeah. So, talking about JR, you know, I, I, I heard a story from Manchos. So Menchos used to dominating the longboard scene uh, here in, in um, you know in Southeast Asia. He go to La Union and just win every Everything. event there. And uh, Jr. was like a young up and coming surfer. Yeah. And he see all those uh, movement, but Menchos get all those uh, influence from you know like Devin Howard when he came for the Deus Comp. You know like everybody learning from you know from from somebody. Yeah, that's the way it should be. And now we are looking at Jr. just dominating because. But we're blind, and in true Indonesian style, it's a, it's a sh power outage, which is okay. Let me get the TV back on. It wouldn't be uh, broadcast in Indonesia if the power didn't go out at some point. But it's so getting, normal. We're getting sorted. Nothing's going to stop us here from bringing you the top surfing and live action down at halfway. Kuda, Bali, Indonesia, with four minutes left in this Heat 2 quarterfinal round. Let's see JR paddling. I think he's maybe playing some mind games with Augusto Olinto. 
as Augusto is currently searching for an 851, just completely capable of our surfer in blue, as his first wave was an 8.50. So, looks like JR just trying to stay busy, keep the juices flowing and the muscles going, as he currently sits in first. But the competitor that he is, he's going to stick it to Augusto Alinto to the very end. So with 3 minutes and 20 seconds left in this heat, anything can happen. And we're coming down to the most exciting part, the heat clincher. See if we get another set for our competitors out there in the water right now. And up next is going to be heat number 3, the quarterfinal round. We're going to have our man from France. He's too strong in his heat. He's definitely displaying some strong, solid surfing today and yesterday, and he will continue to do so as he wants to be on that world tour to earn the spot to compete against the world's best. Yeah, that's a, a view of JR just winning that heat and yeah. Augusto also. So uh, we're, right. st we're straight into the next. Uh, it is heat three of quarterfinal. So we have uh, a surfer from France and also. Masaya Sukamoto, the Japanese contingent in blue, and our man in France, Roland Lefleur, in yep. red. Uh, we have his fellow countryman down on the beach, Nathan Sadun. Would have liked to get him in the booth, but uh, maybe I can call him up on the old telephone. <laughs> uh, so Masaya Sukamoto, uh, I'm pretty sure he's from Chiba, Japan. He come to Bali a lot. He used to uh, he used to come here for a lot of comp. Okay, so earlier in the contest, there was um, a little interference update in the women's heat. There was a board swap. So Matt's down on the beach right now with a little information update on that situation. Matt Chinoski, take it away, buddy. has to be on the beach the right and the side. surfer has to return to the beach, return to the shore, pick up the board and enter the ocean. And in that case, there was two board swaps, one before and one during the heat, okay, which was actually bad. meaning, meaning that uh, Kaidi got a priority interference and blue. Daisy ended up making it through and progressing. So if you look back, four unfortunately, there's been a uh, priority interference and Daisy has progressed into the semi-finals. So we do have a ratings update and the Japanese are progressing through, but so are the Filipinos with a ping and a Daisy moving forward. Back to you guys in the booth. Wow, folks. Surprising news there from the judges. As we see our man in red, the flying Frenchman. Roland Lafleur making a statement here on the beach today. As he is surfing quite well, but back to the interference update. Surprisingly, wow, those are the rules, I guess. So they changed the result. They changed the result. Daisy Valdez from mm. the Philippines is moved into moves semifinals. Forward. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what yeah. a great uh, result there from the uh, from the Filipino. But I'm sure heartbreaking for heartbreaking. the young Japanese surfers. Yeah, she was dominating. She was dominating actually. Yeah. And, and it's the family unit, you yeah. know, trying to help each other out, and unfortunately, they took each other out. Yeah, I think the the mistake was, uh, you know, it's it was uh, explained there by Matt. I think the judges and the you know the event director, like you know, they they put they open up the the rule books and then they find there's a mistake that uh, caused the 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 penalize of the that situation to the young Japanese girl. Yeah, it's a shame those girls were surfing really extremely well. And always a great sight to see them competing, especially here at this contest. Unfortunately, yeah. we're gonna have to wait for another time to see them surf on. Oh, look at that so guy! He's <laughs> having fun in the competition area. <laughs> He's grooving. He wants to win. He wants I to know. perform on the world tour. Yeah. yeah. So Daisy Valdez, congratulations! We'll see you in the semifinal of the women's division as we head back to the men's division heat number three of the quarterfinal round. With 16 minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock, we're waiting for a drop, the scores to drop. 
as we see on screen our man in red with priority beautiful day down here folks so tell me a little bit about Roland. Uh, what do you know about Roland? Because uh, not much. Yeah, we haven't seen him uh, a lot here in Bali. No. We we know Masaya. He he's he's Masaya. He is quite the guy. Nice he, gentleman. Great surfer. He always give you a high five every every day that you see him. You always have a big smile. So great representation of a Japanese uh, contingent here from Masaya. Yeah, we love seeing that. You know, you bring that positive energy, the good vibes. Surfing's about at the end of the day is having fun with your friends and uh, teaching people yep. the correct way to surf and have a good time. So thanks for keeping it alive and uh, nice surfing from our competitor for competitor in blue. He's he go Roland. Uh, if yeah. I'm not wrong, he's uh, you know coming from Biarritz or, or one of those beach there. I think he, yeah, he's we from know, Biarritz. Yeah, we know the Del Perro brother also from that area, the world champion multiple world champion between those two guys <laughs> crazy huh the, yeah. the Perro brothers uh shout out to those guys i uh, love hassling them and giving them a good time anytime we're in the vicinity of each other great surfers and uh fun time with those boys wherever yeah. you are but um yeah it looks like a score drop for a competitor in blue total heat score of 5.00 0. so he's waiting for the other scores but currently sitting in first so we're talking about Japanese here. We have three Japanese in the quarterfinal, and two of them, sorry, one of them is already moving to the semifinal. Kai Hamase moving to the first semifinal. He will serve against JR. So, uh, all right. So we're gonna bring actually some local countrymen, Frenchmen, Nathan Sadun, to come into the van and give us some information about his countrymen in red, Roland Lafleur, as Tippy is gonna take a little break to help organize the beach. Thanks Tippy for stopping in and we're breaking out to the action of our man in blue. Getting a quick inside ride as we see scores drop for Roland Lafleur. Um, Nathan, welcome to the to the van. It's nice and aircon. How are you doing? It's amazing. Nice to be back in the van in the AC. Perfect my friend and uh, can you give us a little background information about your fellow countryman Roland Lafleur? So uh, Roland, I think he's from Biarritz. Yeah. Uh, I've known him for a couple years. We've been doing the French Championships every year since like maybe five or, or six years. He beat me in the semi-final last year. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, hit me up when he arrived in, in Bali last week. I think he's just on a little holiday break bef before he goes back to the full season. He's a, he's a surf teacher in, uh, in Biarritz, in Côte de Basque. Okay. Uh, he's an amazing shortboarder as well. Awesome. And yeah, I think I think he was definitely shortboarding more in the past. And then we saw him coming to the starting to come to the longboard contest to the French Championships and uh, the other little contest we have uh, in France. Looks like uh, he's been loving it, and it's been working well for him. Indeed, it has. As he's found himself sitting in second place, only needing a one point ride to jump back in the first of the Heat 3 quarterfinal men's round here at the WSL QS qualifying series event. Padro Longboard Classic, sponsor, also sponsored by Ben 10 Crystal, the CUDA Board Riders Club, PGS Coffee, the PSI and the ASC. So with 12 minutes and 20 seconds left, going to be a beautiful heat. Stick around and enjoy the action, folks. So Roland has the priority, so he's sitting very uh, close by his, uh, his opponent. He wants to get the next good set to uh, get his score. He only needs the one, you said? So far, they haven't updated the scores oh in the yeah. app, but on the screen it was like that. But we're going to go down to a post-heat interview with Matt Chanowski down on the beach with RJ, our winner from the last heat. So, Jono, take it away, buddy. All right, we have our heat winner and one of the highest men's heat totals of the day. How are you feeling going in this next event? You're obviously the lead ratings leader at this stage mm -hmm. and moving into this next round. We don't know the mass just yet, but it's looking really good. You're, gonna, you're looking to take the event yeah. as well as the WSL qualification spot. Yeah, I'm so uh, happy right now, um, especially when I went against um, Augusto because he's really nice guy, he's really good, his surfing was I think the best <laughs> here 
And yeah, I'm so stoked that I got advanced to the next round. And yeah, the waves um, looks nice. Getting low tide, but still long and clean. Yeah, and looking forward for the next next rounds and will do my best to qualify on the world tour. So the qualification and the money both are very entertaining prospects. Yeah. What is your coach telling you? What are you going to work on with the semi-final, or is it secret? <laughs> yeah, um, it's a secret for us. <laughs> but I have a coach here. Coach Luke is here telling some advice to me, and he's trying to um, push me harder in every hit. And yeah, I'm so thankful for him and to everyone, my teammates. Yeah. Well, uh, all the Philippines are behind you, all the Philippine and surfing communities all around the whole world, they're really behind you, mate, so we wish you all the best. Anything else you want to say to everyone around the world? Uh, yeah. um, thank you so much for all the people who supported us, especially the Filipinos in the Philippines watching now. Thank you so much. And also to our sponsors and to my sponsors, um, to Filipina Surfing, Upsa, um, Philippine Sports Commission, para sa next gen. Um, Tingog and House of Representatives and to my private sponsors thank you so much for um, pushing me every event to Surf Town La Union, Alima and yeah to everyone thank you so much. Back to you guys in the booth we look forward to more in the semi-finals. Thanks Matt, thanks LG, uh, amazing hit from LG from the Philippines. He got such a nice left, very long ride. Uh, during this interview, we saw a really nice wave from Roland, actually. Another beautiful left. He got a pretty long hang ten. Uh, it was quite a smaller wave, but a, but a long one. And the drop, the score drop, we got right. a 7.83. I think we're waiting for the update because on screen and on the app, it's a little behind. So our man in red, the Frenchman, is currently sitting in first with a total heat score of 14. You can't see the two wave total, but one of his waves was a 7.83. The second one is going to be a 6.17, I would say. Well, I mean, that's the correct math, so hopefully that's right. Um, but on screen is our man in blue from Japan, Saya Sukamoto, and he's currently sitting on a total heat score of 8.83 with a five point ride and a 3.83. So plenty of time and plenty of action to come here in our heat three. And look, look who can do some good old math on another French man in the van, Nathan Sadan, guessing the score correctly as a 6.17. So hold on, he's back with the priority as well. He's back with the priority, he's out in the lead. And our man in blue is looking for an 8.33 to advance and take the lead from the Frenchman in red, Roland Lafleur. Masaya can definitely get the score if he gets away from Roland or if enough sets come by. He's a very solid surfer. He's also, I think, a great. He, he does a lot of um, uh, fight sports like jujitsu or judo. Oh so yeah. he's like pretty solid uh, legs, <laughs> good stability on his board. You definitely have to have some solid legs for that to be squeezing and choking people out with your legs. <laughs> It's a great sport for all those who do jiu-jitsu out there. And uh, yeah, there's more surfers these days getting into it. It's, um, it's good to see everybody, you know, just being active, learning new things, keeping healthy, enjoying mm -hmm. the good lifestyle. So seven minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. We're in a bit of a lull, but it'll be a flurry shortly as it has done all day. Especially now that the tide is dropping. So we go all the way down to a, a point three, I believe. Let's bring that up real quick. It looks like uh, Ronald is having a hard time with his leash. Tangled in his... Uh ...from Indonesia, Menchos. Who is also a fan of surfing both stances, natural and regular, and goofy. I think I've seen his, uh, his wave when I just got on the beach this morning and I saw someone backside, then he turned frontside, I was like, that guy, what and, he, and yeah, no matter which way he's facing, he's always in control. So it's going to be another exciting heat here in the quarterfinals, which will be coming up in 3 minutes and 10 seconds. 
But with that remainder, we're going to see if our man in blue from Japan, Masaya Sukamoto, can take the lead. He's after that 8.33, folks. It's definitely capable. Look, he's warming up the legs. Maybe a couple little jujitsu warm ups out there in the water. Making sure the calves are nice and ready to help him progress and hopefully move forward. He's going to have a hard time finding that 8.33 with a lull out in the water right now, but at least he's just enjoying the view and enjoying the breeze here in Bali, Indonesia. That light offshore breeze that we're going to have pretty much every day, all day until October, November, the end of dry season. Yeah, look at the, the trades are blowing, which is a good thing for this part of the island, especially up on the Bukit Peninsula. It must be on fire today. It, it, yeah, it should be, especially the tide going down, the swell increasing. The less of the Bucket Peninsula that have helped make this island popular with surfers throughout the history. Surfers have come on over and joined those waves as we see Blue trying to go for it, but he can't quite make it into that one. And he's going to lose priority with only two minutes remaining on the clock. It's a fortunate mishap. Uh, we're going to cut live to Matt Chanowski for some reason. He's got something going on and up his sleeve as always. Shono. Where are you, buddy? What'd you do? You found a toupee? We're down here on the beach, checking out some of the team riders and some of the free surfers equipment. And we've stumbled across some classic equipment here from McTavish in Australia. One of the originators of this style of longboarding. And in the back there, we have a Ross concept. That's Catcher's board and a B Conroy's board up there. So the thing with these boards and what we're looking for, critical nose riding and the judging. So that's obviously the nose area, but the key part of critical nose riding is actually all in the tail. So when I pick this board up, we're gonna go into the details. This is an 11 inch fin. This is the involvement fin. It's equivalent to, I guess, the most performance fin in the 60s, but it's set pretty far back. We have a little bit of roll in the belly about where the writing is. That roll slows down the board and the wide point on this board is a little bit far from center, a little bit further back. Combined with this 11 inch fin, and this wide tail. And what that will do is create stability, but also hold the board back in the pocket. When you need to do a turn, which is what you'll see, uh, Augusto Alinto is a good example of a little check turn and rolls it off the bottom. That's what the belly does in the board. And this is equivalent to what um, Soli Erico won the world title on last year and Harrison Roach. Just variations with nose and tail width and a little bit of rocker. 50-50 rails with no hard edge from nose to tail and that'll aid technical nose riding. And of course, a nice Volane glass job always helps. And this one's got a big Obichi wood stringer. So beautiful boards here on the beach. If you're down at Kuda, anywhere near halfway, come on down and check them out, lining the sand next to the Warungs. Back to you guys. All right, Chono. Thanks for that lovely insight into the shapes and designs from the shapers around the world that are providing our competitors here today some great longboards as we see our competitor in red looks like that heat wrapped up as we're talking boards with Chona down there on the beach so we're gonna have to wait for some information to drop to see who took that but I think it's gonna be safe to say that our man in red went with the win yeah, interesting uh, interesting choice of uh, equipment from Roland actually I think he got this board from a uh, a rental shop on the beach this morning. What a guy. Just show up and blow up. Doesn't matter. As all these other shapers have custom boards. And right, we're going to cut to uh, an advertisement. We'll be back, folks. Lucky has a leash on.
<clears throat> Alright folks, we're back. The last heat of the quarterfinal round for the men's division. It's gonna be an absolute banger as we see our man in J from Japan in red, Taka Anoi, who's gonna try and push through for his family as the unfortunate event of his sister is getting disqualified for interference in their heats that were following one another. They paddled out and did a board swap, and unfortunately, that goes against the rules mm. out here for the WSL. Times so, two. Times two. What a sad mishap for those lovely rippers who are shredding. They're just swapping boards, trying to help each other out. Sisterly love, and unfortunately, it uh, doesn't fly for the WSL here. So those two. Or anywhere, actually. Oh, I mean, if you saw that in the duct tape, it would sure would fly. Yeah. Because those are called gentlemen's rules. We're looking after each other. We're not trying to put each other down. And going down right now is Minchos on the nose. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I do, I definitely see that point, Jared. And here it's pretty mellow and relaxing with not a lot of risk. But uh, there's things like insurance, which is no real risk here. But in terms of getting in the way of other competitors, you can imagine a, a caddy innocently getting in the way of someone and it being, oh, they're just a caddy, but they do have to draw a line somewhere along the line there. Yeah, and I, I totally understand what you're saying, but they're both competitors, they're sisters, they're the next heat. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for them, that's the way it goes, and It's the same rules for everyone, too. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, but it just happened to them, so that sucks. Yeah. It's a shame, but... But we'll see if it has any okay, impact on Taka, because they're in tears, and uh, Taka was down there with them trying to make sense of the situation, but... Some breaking news is if Menchos makes this heat and Tucker unfortunately does not progress, we actually have a Filipino um, leader and our ratings leader will actually take the win and progress for the uh, World Tour. So a little bit on the line here. So Tucker, to keep his hopes alive, needs to progress through to the semifinals. But if he does not progress... It will go to, well, the JR will take the win, basically. And it's on a 1,000 points from his first win at uh, La Union in the Philippines, which is the first qualifying event on two. Tucker got second. And JR took the win, which was meaning, basically, Mancho's wants to do really well because he's in the mix as well. But I think now that they've moved into the semis Mancho's will be just going for a second or third or perhaps an event win take home the win of the money and the pride of winning a, a WSL event in Bali that'd be pretty nice it's always nice to be a crown champion win some extra money and win some points and also the seeding too because if there was ever a uh, a tie with the rankings if you have previous year rankings that will always help and how's the he's way down the beach or maybe the learn to surf school uh, way up the beach, we'll see. Yeah, we need so, some uh, water patrol there. Speaking about interference, uh, Menchos does not mind. He's got that showmanship, Beach Boy style, quick nose ride, but he's used to that. Let's yeah. talk about some um, insurance right there. Yep. There's an interference right there. They could have paddled in his way, and who knows? He could have broken an ankle. It's all drama down here at the WSL. <laughs> oh, fantastic. As we see our man in red. Saka and Oi is going to strike with just under 15 minutes left in his heat. There he goes. He doesn't seem phased at all by that decision. Banking that one off the top and we'll see if he's got any claims to give the judges too because he's a passionate surfer and uh, he'll be fired up after hearing that his sister uh, Kaidi was given an interference. And here we go, interference central. These guys have got no idea what's going on. They think he's the surf school coach. Beautiful 10, back to switch, and his hands by his side. He rides this one through. And if he can finish cleanly with control and pop up over the wave, mm, don't, he doesn't care. But uh, the judges may just a little bit wanting to see clean completions, but he rode out of that. Now, Tucker holding that out. This is going to be fireworks. That leash attach and opting not to surf to the beach so just straight out of there and regaining priority you see him thrashing kicking hard so he wants to grab that priority so we'll see a little p next to tucker's name shortly and what that will mean is that tucker has the choice over the set wave and as we progress through to the lower tide that's going to have an impact onto 
who can choose the best wave of the heat. Um, these in-between heats between the tides, so it's mid-tide getting lower, Jared. Pretty crucial to who, who can get a reform and who doesn't, hey? All right, well, we're going to take a quick break and go down with our interview of the last winner, the Frenchman Roland, with Luke down on the beach. Luke, take it away. technical glitch there but we'll be cutting to Luke any second now so when you guys are ready tune in to our post heat interview well we're going to keep going until they get the interview flowing but um, 12 minutes and 20 seconds we got our man in red with priority waiting for scores to drop We talked about surfboards before. No. And okay, yeah, well, we're not going to have surfboards. We're going to go to the interview. All right, let's 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 go down to Luke. I think we're ready. I'm here now with Roland from France. Yeah. The <laughs> last winner of um, the heat. So tell us something. Where are you from? Where did you grow up surfing? What's your local spot? Yeah, my local spot is uh, La Côte des Basques, uh, Diaritz, Diaritz Beach, France. And uh, hello, everybody. Here <laughs> 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 it's so cool, too. For longboarding, it's perfect. It's a little bit similar right now to La Côte des Basques, so I feel like at home, but the, the water is really uh, hotter than, uh, than home. Did you come here for a holiday or to join the comp? No, I, I just come for holidays. First was like, uh, I come with my shortboard, and uh, then I want to practice for the European uh, champion, uh, Championship uh, in UK this, uh, this August. So I was thinking to take a longboard because I small wave uh, since one week now in Bali. So I, t I rent a longboard on a shop and I start uh, longboarding. And then I see the competition. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can do and let's go. Nice. So on a rented board into the finals, what do you think about um, the Asian longboarding since it's your first time to see Asian surfers and competing in longboard? Yeah, they are so good. They have a lot of style. and. Uh, it's a little bit impressive to see uh, how everybody surf well uh, on that kind of wave and with uh, with this board and, and it, yeah they are really really good yeah really really good yeah. All right, congratulations and good luck to your next heat. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, well thanks for the interview, Luke. That's pretty interesting. Just as you were doing a board heat or board discussion before down there on the beach. You know, talking about these shapers getting custom boards to these competitors and helping support them, which is amazing. But just great to see that our Frenchman that advanced to the semifinals just showed up with a shortboard. He rented that longboard down the beach no and way. he's made it all the way to the semifinals. As we see, someone that could possibly be making his way to the semifinals in red, looking for a 4.95 to advance there. Unfortunately, coming undone. We'll have to see. But yeah, back to that fun fact. That's amazing. He yeah, it's great up. to hear. Thank you. Yeah, he showed up down in the beach, brought a shortboard. He's here on vacation. Didn't even try to come here for this contest at all, and he got into the contest. And here he the is board, in the semis. And now he's in the semis. Almost paid for his accommodation. And uh, Tucker's <coughs> activated, getting those tricks and uh, emphasis on tricks, and really trying to bank one off the top and smack the lip, and losing a little bit of composure on his previous wave. This could be it here. So he's see, paddling hard on the top third of the wave and he gets the nose, holds that kick out, which is actually not that tricky to do. Um, and then he smacks off the top. So that all that hopefully he's not holding on to that score towards the end. And here's the surf school and this is Mentros's wave too. So keep in mind if Mentros wins, JR is the Asian re Asia region champion and will go to compete, get that spot on the World Longboard Tour. Wow. But is, okay, so... Uh, obviously, this is the second wave, so... Well, they're going all over the place with these replays. Talk to this, Jared. Um, it was quick, tricky footwork. Short nose ride, turn switch to save himself. He's comfortable that way, so... He is, huh? Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely comfortable facing regular. Um, he's, he's been doing that for years, so... And he surfs no uh, Batu Belong a lot? Batu Karas. Batu Karas, okay. Yeah, so... It's but great. no stranger to the Changu region. No stranger in the Chang'e region, he visits here frequently. He's got fans, supporters, 
and uh, just loves a good time. Come over here, gets a little sleepy over in Batu Cross, so the boys like to come down and spice it up, get amongst the social scene in the water and on the land. And consistency of Batu Cross, which is the, if you haven't heard of it, I'm sure you have, uh, look it up and respectfully pay your dues while you're there and, and give the locals their time and spend money with the locals and share the waves uh, because they'll share them with you and that in turn you'll get a really friendly smile and maybe some surf coaching from these legends too but what time of the year is Batu uh, break in comparison to say Chengdu which is more of an all year all, all round type of place yeah fortunately Chengdu is pretty much one of the most consistent surf spots that I've been able to surf around here um, but Batu Karas you're going to have to go find that one out for yourself folks it's already crowded but there's waves for most of the time in the beginning of the year Christmas January, February, March tends to get a little bit windier but people are still there there's other beaches around Batu Karas that you can go and explore and discover so you don't get stuck on the points but there goes our man from that hometown with the big arms up Claim 10. Unfortunately, he jinxed himself and went down on that one with seven minutes left in this heat, <coughs> the final heat of the quarterfinal round. Menchos is trying to take down the young Japanese phenon who is surfing quite well. He's hungry. He's using that passion from the incident with his sisters, sisters to fuel the fire so he can make it through to the semi. Feel free to look. We, we actually mentioned not realizing that ramifications of a situation, but towards the end of quarterfinal number two of the women's, if you go back and have a look towards the end, there was a watch swap. But what we didn't see on the camera was a board swap too because I picked that up because she, Sakura, actually got one of her best waves, a 6.5 on that heavily rocket board. You know, yeah, the 10. and They sat next to each other, swapped watches and boards. Yeah. It's, you saw it on the screen. She did leashes. They did it so quick. And leashes too, you're right. Yeah, yeah, they did it bang. so quick. Well, they the watch was in the mouth for a little longer, that's right. Yep. And then she paddled for the wave with the, with the watch in her mouth and uh, yep. scrambled over, yeah. Yeah, yeah they just... Um, they did it so quick, they were really trying to help each other out there. And unfortunately, it went the wrong way for him. That's alright, the brother is trying to thrive on here in the quarterfinal round of the last heat of four. Menchos is looking for the time out there. He's got five minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. He's under priority. And Taka is only looking for 4.95. Yeah. So anything can happen here coming down in the last five minutes of the heat. Hopefully some more waves will come as they always do, but right now we're sitting a little, a little lull. And technically, uh, you look at uh, both these surfers, they really enjoy their showmanship of surfing. They've got a big crowd here, but it's just in their, in their DNA. They just really enjoy it. Much like yourself, Jared, um, you're out there for a good time and having fun you'll surf for what half an hour an hour whatever you'll just keep surfing and feel the stoke but can't help but feel if Menchos had completed a couple of these waves and get you know you'd, you'd see those scores go to the six and get those conventional completions but there's nothing conventional about these two surfers and people surf for different reasons and these guys they surf for fun and here's Tucker who's also wanting to qualify and he wants to get past Menchos and up high holding that five and he's going to look for another bang off the top and he's out of there loses a bit of composure so I think Red Moore surfs uh, he's a competitive surfer he wants to win which nothing wrong with competitive surfing that's why there's champions and there's not and um, yeah Menchos he just loves to surf and he's a great surfer but we're gonna watch our man Red like see how quick he paddled back out there he's already up on another wave he knows how to compete he's hanging that five and he's gonna whack it off the lip right there ride it out oh, oh he's feeling it oh, gee wow okay well he um, definitely got the 4.95 on that one he saw especially that claim so he's solidifying mm -hmm. he wants to go on he wants to chase that opportunity to be on that world stage and yeah that's the, the raw form of com competitive surfing right there you gotta that's back it. it up here's a replay of his ride he just caught a wave too right before this, paddled right back out and then right back on the Under this priority. Way. Under priority. Then chose way down the beach. Remember there was that surf school before? Yeah. And yeah. Look at there. The passion. Fuel the fire. 
doing it for the family right there. That's it. He's doing it for himself. He's That's it. it definitely doing it for the family. And um, well, these are very tight knit community. Anyone who's been to any of these longboard events is um, it's hard not to miss the Inuits. There's smiles from ear to ear and. These guys are in the water. If you have a look at their Instagram, they're in the water. Like these guys. These guys are not in the water. They're having oh, a beer oh. on the beach. These guys are on the sand. Look at the boys. Enjoy Shout out to... Oh, oh and there's Padre. our Padro oh, community. Boys. It's our... Um, that's key. Our sponsor. There you go. Look at these boys already. This is what it's about. Good times with your friends, family. Everybody down here loves each other. And they're just trying to have the best experience and show them the Bali lifestyle and the community of longboarding down here at Halfway Kuda. As you see on screen, Menchos looking for another opportunity with 2 minutes and 40 on the clock. We're also waiting for that last score to drop in from Taka. Yeah, it's and red. I think that'll be the score, but only just, Jared. Um, the 5 was pretty impressive, but mm, not it overly yeah. critical. His hands looked nice, but it was just a long 5 and then banging off the top, which is actually pretty hard to do and land with momentum. Um, but yeah, it's... We'll see. It'll be about a five, I think. So we'll go into the lead with two minutes left. So Menchos are that four two seven. I can't help but feel that incomplete right that he got. Um, if he'd have just stepped back and finished and shown the judges a bit of control. But we'll see. He's, he's looking for something. He's probably going to be... He only doesn't need much to, to improve. He just needs to improve slightly on that four two seven. So Tucker's locked in. So there is a five, flat five. Oh, four, yeah. No, six four. Yeah, there you six, go. Six four. He's gone up to a lead, yeah. Wow. So 6.4 for Taka Inui. All right, see, he got it. And more than that five, it's a 6.40. Putting him in the first place, just a minute and 30 left on the clock. It's gonna leave Menchos looking for a 5.74, which he completely can do, he's a great surfer. But this is the heat of the moment. It's coming down to the wire for a man in blue. He's gonna try and Kill the dream of a surfer mm. in red. But the passion mm. is strong for our young man from Japan. And he wants well, to continue to possibly be on the world tour. Look at him. When you keep in mind the lower tide, and Tucker's wave did run quite a distance, and Menchos has closed out a lot. So I, I suppose not the wave selection scores in particular. It's what you do with it. So he had a completed set wave, and he did get a long nose ride and a, well, and that's a hit up uh, the top. So. Yeah, the prior waves and the heats before. And under the, priority. The, yeah, under priority. But the rights have been not running as long. No. As we go down to the beach, if mm. you get to sit down there, you have more perspective of what's going on along the beach because it is quite a big beach. And it's kind of like a, it's almost like a left point. Left point, yeah. yeah it's a really long left-handers. So Taka is looking for that last left to solidify his progression. But it looks like he's going to do it with... 15 seconds wow. left on the clock unless something happens with the Chos we're um, going to have to congratulate our man in red because Menchos is chilling. He can he can see it, he can feel it. And the dream is still alive for Tucker to take that that wow. ratings lead so one second remaining and Menchos is out of the mix unfortunately not through lack of skill but just perhaps wave selection and finishing those waves cleanly so Tucker takes the win and uh, I guess shows the judges that the Anui's um, what they're made of, and we'll see you guys after the break. We'll be moving into the women's.
Welcome back. We are into the ladies semi-finals. So after some fireworks in the quarters, we did have uh, Filipino surfer Daisy Valdez progressing through with Natsumi Teoka. It was going to be an all-Japanese affair, but a priority interference of one of the Anui sisters, well, actually on both of them from swapping boards, has seen in the water, has seen uh, Daisy progress. And Natsumi Teoka, who's the informed surfer of both across the male and female divisions logging the highest heat totals regularly and she's currently the ratings leader as well so uh, Daisy is in second place and we actually have I'll give you an update on the situations right in a moment but uh, both experienced competitors Daisy a well respected Filipino mentor to a lot of surfs and here's a quick start from Natsumi Here up to the tip and three nose rides, quick, nimble feet, and she gets a little reform in here, so I think the judges are going to appreciate it. Smaller wave, but as the tide gets lower, finding those little corners, as we referenced so often yesterday, is really tricky, so a great job to locate that. And we'll wait for that score to lock in. So on the women's side of the draw, Natsumi with that 1,000 points, Hiroka in the next heat with that 800, Daisy with 650, and last person in the draw, a ping with 500, so... We would have to see Daisy take the lead here, and that would mean she still cannot win because Natsumi would be banking a 650 point um, distance too. So it would, yeah, it would be a tie between Natsumi and Daisy, and then the next one would be a ping who's on 500 up against uh, Hiroka. So. Still a few uh, situations to be updated, so it's looking pretty good for Natsumi at this stage. As long as she can get through this heat, she will unofficially be the winner of the Asian qualifier and also the ratings leader from the first event in La Union, Philippines, and now we're at the second qualifying event. Of course, first stop on the World Longboard Tour at Huntington Beach in the USA at the end of July at the US Open. And then moving on to Bells Beach, the iconic wave down there and uh, just south of Torquay in Victoria and then moving on to El Salvador a similar type of wave uh, in the warm water of Surf City El Salvador and then finishing off in Malibu in California so here goes that's going to be a 6.5 to open up she'll get some confidence out of that she builds in her confidence and even after interviewing her after a few heats just to see her her passion and she just said just she's always a little nervous in those first waves, so she likes to start early and finish fast. As you see, our competitor in blue, Daisy Valdez from the Philippines, walking up to the nose. Quick little goes rather than just that low tide starting to affect the waves. She tries to go to the reform and just nose dives. Oh. So hopefully that fin didn't come back there. Yep, missed her. Thankfully she was underwater, but she's going to recoup. Get back out there. Plenty of time. As we see our surfer in red waiting for her next wave. There goes that low tide sucking out. The double ups coming in. It's a replay of Daisy's first exchange here in women's semifinal number one. We're going to see a replay of our competitor in red. Quick 5-10. Just cross steps back safely. We're going to have to be very selective with this tide going out. The wave's going to start breaking a lot quicker and closing out a bit here on this beach rig. So you can find a corner and it's in your best interest. As the conditions are still prime though, otherwise, wind's good, beautiful sunny day, plenty of waves coming in. And we'll give you an update on those tides, Jared, so we're at uh, 12.35 local time, and we are on just after mid-tide. The tide will, being a full moon, the tide will drop really fast. That's why we started a little earlier than yesterday, just so the contest can be run and done as soon as possible. Um, 
Still 20 minute heats, which is fantastic because there's many w opportunities for surfers. There's no logistics paddling back out, so no need to go to half an hour finals. And here goes Natsumi. Kicking those legs. Oh, struggling to get in there, and then she goes for it. Up Critical. On the nose. Critical. The wave's going to pick up and see if she can gain speed to make it around this last section. She definitely does. Back up on the nose. Beautiful, quick footwork. Up and down. Hangs on. Nice ray. Nice ride from our competitor in red, Matsumi Taiga. Wow. Excellent range. Uh, that was pretty excellent for the women's. Mm. I, I would say if her first wave was a 6.5, yeah. that was definitely excellent range. Yep. I think finishes strong. Yeah. Pretty cool. That first nose ride. This See the lower tide, the water drawing up off the face. Quite steep. Bang. Right there. That's where you want to be, folks. And then again. She trims right there, three quarters of the way up the board, yep. gaining that speed. Back up to the nose. And, and right here, sets it Rushka. up. Whacks it off the and top. And rides out of it. Smooth. And so finishes over the, I'm going to say, eight, too far? Yeah. Eight, yep. But I won't be surprised if it goes more or just a tad less. But um, the judge has been really consistent, which is kind of hard in the hot sun. And when you're seeing so many actual waves ridden by the competitors, yeah. it's not often you'll see, you know, some of the surfers have had well over 10 waves per heat. There's four surfer heats up until the quarterfinals. That's pretty overwhelming for the judges to... You just that mental strain to talk about. We've got just two of us chatting about the these waves and we don't have to score it down we're just we're throwing it out we're having mental strains <laughs> gonna have to yeah take that medicine and <laughs> sponsored by bgs uh so bgs being our medicine to uh, eight flat eight nice it's good flat eight, there we go and like you mentioned our sponsor is bgs bringing the coffee keeping it cold keeping it strong keeping it fresh down here at halfway kuna along with our other sponsors bintang crystal they are putting those beers on ice because it's going to be an absolute riot of a celebration as we crown a champion of the men's and women's divisions here on the beach later today. With 11 minutes and 40 seconds left in this heat. Our surfer in red is sitting comfortably in first as she has comboed the competition. And eyes on the beach as we see one of our local legends, Garut Wudiatra. There he is. Come give us a shout out, handsome. He's one of the halfway Kuda board riders legends. An all around good guy. Garut, how are you, how are you brother? Good, give us a little shout out right here. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's online. Oh, it's online. Yeah, say what's up to the people. What's up? What's up? What's up? How's the wave look? Nice, yeah? Yeah. Uh -huh. I heard you're judging with this contest. No, we can't tell you that. But always good to see you down here, buddy. Enjoy the rest of the day. One of our local legends here from Bali, Indonesia, Garut Wudiatra, one of my favorite surfers and just absolute good guy, family man, fisherman, uh, I think a priest too as well. But either way, always great to see the locals supporting people from all over the world coming here to surf. As we see our competitor in blue dropping in just trying to break down that 14.50 and unfortunately sliding out on the nose had a good look at that uh, board on the beach Jared it's got a anything um, it's got a uh, wingtip nose so it's a uh, chime rail in that front it's really? quite thick yeah it's got chime rails it looks pretty chunky from the screen yeah wingtip nose so actually go down the nose a little bit similar to the old in the pink model the takiyama yeah. model and a lot of those uh mid 60s nose riders from that we used to see in san diego and um uh, la area so and yeah it's it's a refined tail uh fair bit of rocker quite generous amount of rocker but as you see her paddling there you see the thickness of that nose versus natsumi's which is quite refined and thin um, but at the end of the day we keep referencing nose riding. I see two absolutely gorgeous McTavish surfboards crossing the road, courtesy of our Russian friends. Yeah, there they are. That's um, another shout out. Oli and Ksenia. Yeah, they they surf over in Chengdu at Batu Along, Batu Belong, quite often. Always a pleasure to see these lovely ladies enjoying a sport that we love and hold dear to our hearts. And a shout out to. The legend Bob McTavish, who we also love dearly, such an inspiration, and we're so grateful to have him in the sport of surfing and to share his 
knowledge with us throughout the years. Um, with that being said, we're going to go to a post-heat interview with Taka and Luke down on the beach. Take it away, Luke. So I'm here with the last heat winner, Taka. So Taka, talk us about a little bit of your strategy going in, into that heat. え、uh, the board choice was very difficult to win this game uh, and uh, there are fewer waves and very small so I made a good choice and that lead me to the uh, next round. I know your main goal is to win this event and be the number one surfer in Asia because the number one surfer qualifies for the world tour. So I know you came here earlier with your family, always traveling with your family, your mom and your sister. So tell us a bit something of your preparation for, for this event. Um, what was the preparation he did coming to this event? したんですけども、え、ま、残念ながら妹たちは負けてしまって僕もえ、どこまでできるかわからないんですけども、え、最後まで頑張りたいと思います。I uh, came here to have mind that if I lose this uh, event, I quit surfing. Uh, so I prepared a lot of things for this event. But unfortunately, the waves are very different and my sisters uh lost already. And uh, the difficulties, uh, uh, I have a lot of difficulties in this UA condition, but I'll do my best for the next round to uh, get the ticket to the world title. All right, um, any messages back home to your fans, to your family, or you have any sponsors to thank? Uh, え、皆さん今まで応援ありがとうございました。え、次勝てばえ、ワールドツアー行けるかもしれないので、最後まで頑張りますが、え、次負けたらえ、引退しますので、最後の日と全力で頑張ってきます。引き続きお願いよろしく
see that passion and desire and fire in these young kids' hearts. So best of luck to our man from Japan. I'm sure would like to see him continue. With that much talent, though, it's you can imagine him giving it another another try down the line as well. Uh, yeah, some surfers do that. They disappear for a bit and they pop back on the radar. And uh, we'll look at Roland Frenchman. Roland Frenchman. He's on a holiday. Yeah, uh, he's on a holiday. He wasn't even here to compete. He's in the semi-final, so same as uh, the Aussies, Mia Wade and B Conroy. They're here to get barreled. They're here to get barreled. It's uh, the Waits family's first time to Bali, and they're loving it so far. And as most people who come here for their first time, when they go home, they think mm. about how they're going to move here. <laughs> when, when was your first time to Bali, Jared? Obviously, oh, you're based wow. here now, but... Um, um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, first time, wow. Uh, I think I was 18, and we came over. I used to surf for a company called Insight from Australia. Ah, yes. We did some ad campaigns at uh, Dreamland Beach we did Dreamland we did a couple other locations around the island but yeah that was my first time that would have been about 17 years ago on Rapper Tank mm -hmm. considering I'm the young age of 35 now <laughs> but still living the dream out here in Bali Indonesia and thanks to all my prior and current sponsors for the support and love to allow me to be doing what I've loved my whole life and um, yeah it's just amazing life to surf and live out here in Bali so come on by say hi enjoy the culture enjoy the breeze the eccentric Jared Mel in the in the commentary booth here presenting the next generation of Asian longboarders here with Natsumi Teoka and Daisy Valdez looking for a combination of scores 14.5 so Daisy really not completing any of these waves uh, after maybe thinking okay she blew the opportunity in that heat against um the inui sisters she had that opportunity to get like a six that she needed and she didn't and she yeah. hasn't she hasn't had really you know anything in this heat to offer yet so but that's gonna be a tough chance to in minute 40 left it's gonna be difficult for her to get two scores against an excellent eight and a 6.5 from the informed surfer of natsumi tayoka yeah, it definitely seems like she lost that competition drive that kind of um, was a little bit broken spirited when um, she found out she wasn't progressing in that last heat. Mm. And um, it seems to have kind of maybe shocked her as she hasn't been able to complete much of anything in this current heat. And it's but dropping tide quickly too. It's dropping tide quickly, so it's going to become more difficult for these surfers. But I do like to appreciate our current heat leader in red her competition surfing is strong and she's doing obviously quite well she sits in the lead mm. with just under a minute and contrasted to the invitational events as she competed at recently as well say the duct tape invitational uh was quite big in brazil six foot plus and some of them had jet ski assist so uh yeah you may not have uh, priority interference but you have jet skis jet skis indeed Ooh. and these um yeah, jet skis indeed. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting thing. Longboarding in jet skis. Yeah. Um, it's never really happened before, but we're glad that they were there to help the surfers perform at the highest level. Yeah. As we see surfers performing at the highest level, it's our lady in red from Japan, the current heat leader, with just under 20 seconds. It's a little victory lap for her. Absolutely. And she's gonna progress to the final. So congratulations to Natsumi. And you're one step closer to winning that money, those points, mm. and coming to be able to compete on that world tour. And thank you to our competitor in blue, Daisy Valdez. Beautiful effort today. And I'm sure we'll see her around. Yep, absolutely. We'll go back to a break and we'll be back with Apinga Gudo and Hiroka Yoshikawa.
All right, tuning back in. That's Tim Hain with our ASC's stalwarts and a Pinga Gudo, our Filipino surfer. Still in the mix with the rankings. Paddling hard, hunting over the line. Here she is. She's already ridden a wave, I believe. But we'll catch up the scores very shortly. So a ping from Siago Island and Hiroko Shikawa, our Japanese surfer who, along with uh, Natsumi, has been putting on some very uh, clinical performances. So this is going to be a great heat. You've got the precise footwork of a ping who competed at the World Games in ISA for the longboarding just recently, and Hiroka, who is just one of the more, I guess you could say, well-rounded and refined surfers that's ever come out of Japan. S competitive at the same time as being super stylish. So as the longboard criteria in the last decade has transitioned away from the performance side and favoured uh, the traditional aspects of longboarding, we've seen the influx of a lot of surfers and the World Tour are actually super competitive with a lot of people from these different nations and cultural pockets getting into longboarding. Here's a small little wave, a contrast from the last heat with some of those bigger sets that Nasumi took. So this is a small one for Hiroka, setting up the inside run, timing it perfectly, and several nose rides setting up for the inside. So judges will like that after seeing what Natsumi started with in that last heat. So that will be a, a mid-range score, maybe a tad higher depending on where they go because it's a lower tide it's going to be tricky and we saw a wave from a ping too as she paddles back out we'll see if there's a paddle battle here with priority but there's lots of waves there has been no shortage of waves in this event and this is the Padrol Longboard Classic presented by WSL in collaboration with the ASC as well big thank you to our sponsors Padrol look them up on Instagram they've got bases in uh, Japan and in Indonesia but we've also got the Mamaka Hotel down the road, Bintang and BSG as well. So coffee, beer, hotels, as well as uh, hardware and software goods from Padrol. An amazing team here at ASC collaborating with uh, the WSL to put on this qualifying event. And and uh, Hiroka hunting down the line. And we're going to introduce Anais here. She's going to be joining us in the commentary booth. And Hiroka cutting through on this one, backing up that first one. So 617, the judges definitely liking that length of ride and the opportunity there as she steezes that one through and finds another little bonus section. She continues through to the inside section. So we haven't caught up with the ping. So 417 to continue her uh, her run. And then we will move. I think we'll have a replay of both of the ping's waves. So we'll see. We'll catch up very shortly. So Anais, tell us. You've been on the beach. You've been watching lots of hits. Actually, talk us through this one from, um, from Hiroka. Hiroka. Yeah. Oh, Hiroka is so stylish. I just... I think like she's so smooth and she always so soft on her stepping, cross stepping, knows exactly where to find. Look at that, like tiniest wave and then she still manages to go until the sand. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable to be honest. I, I met Hiroka like in, in Nusa a very, very long time ago and she was already ripping back then. Yeah. <laughs> and she used to yeah. suffer a lot of nerves in the events and um, you really wear her heart on the sleeve as this was her backup wave as well yeah. um, just steezing it out and um, probably pretty similar to that first wave I think uh, except the grab rail judge has been taking note of that so but yeah su super confident these days and you can see that every wave she's smiling and this is a ping yeah do you know much about a ping no I never met her before actually first time I see her surfing but pretty impressive too eh Absolutely. Yeah. Um, very precise. Soft feet, as you said with Hiroka too. Yeah, really soft. Wow, look at that switch foot turn. My favorite, favorite maneuver. Still progressing on that one. <laughs> How come it's your favorite maneuver? I don't know. I think like it's just so fun to do and it's like a good um, alternative to a normal, normal like cutback, you know? And it's just like playful. I feel like it's really playful turn. I really enjoy it. Generally, the judges agree with the playfulness of the turn as a transition more so. Um, and yeah, on a monotonous wave and a long wave, like say Malibu or Saladita, it can feel 
over and over and over again when you're watching the same heats when someone does something a little variation yeah that's it it, it can look nice and also depending on where you are on the board it can be functional so this is Hiroka, Hiroka up again again up again riding for trying to find that section and go down doesn't quite make it on this one but the wave is still really challenging it's better than before though like we saw really challenging conditions before and like everybody was ripping still uh, yesterday, that like today, I think, like yeah. with the high tide and right. that backwash, you know. Yeah, true, absolutely. That was difficult. There was uh, a little bit of luck involved with that finishing maneuver. Yeah, I feel like seeing that last way from Hiroka again. Still managed to go on the nose. And do you do much competing yourself, or um, you're obviously in the in the Asia region doing some surf retreats and and coaching as well? Yeah, honestly, I uh, absolutely hate competing <laughs> yeah. I tried I went to Noosa a few times and then I was doing this comp last year as well I think I just managed Ooh. stress very very bad right a pin riding still trying to find that section until the inside she managed it really good I like how you know like they're so smooth until the sand as well like yep finishing the wave that's really important right for the judges well in actual fact uh the um, ancient Polynesian culture, people settled arguments from length of ride. So whoever got the longest ride had the most respect in the community. Really? Absolutely. That's super interesting. It was an extension of your uh, connection in the water. Yeah. And if you, were a, if you could surf a wave uh, a long way and a big one, it showed the utmost respect for the ocean. And generally, the person who had the best connection with the ocean was the uh, favorite hunter and gatherer, the successful hunter and gatherer, and person oh, yeah. who had the most um, produce. Speaking of produce, we got BGS down there doing the espresso goods and uh, working hard, just punching that. Uh, what is it? Twenty six grams, twenty four grams in a, in a <laughs> coffee shot, and uh, twenty one grams, twenty one grams in in a, in a coffee shot. So pumping out that twenty one grams of, uh, I'm going to say that would be Sumatran blend coffee. <laughs> with you never know it could be a little bit of ecuadorian or uh yeah sumatran definitely sumatra i would say mm. yeah i don't know much are you about a fan coffee. Coffee. okay sorry i'm a fan <laughs> but at least you know way too much about way too many <laughs> <laughs> it tastes good it does taste good yeah. it does sure taste good for luwak. sure the what sorry the luwak luwak you I, tried I'm the luwak no i'm not, not i wow. think i know what luwak is we need so to you don't bring you there <laughs> all right i'll leave i'll, I'll We'll talk about that later on. So yeah. um, I'm gonna get back to that later on. And you're a goofy footer, and do you prefer going left or right? I love to go left. Yep. But I had to learn um, to enjoy the rights as well, right? Because yep. um, anywhere that I go, especially in the men's, actually, yep. that where you're going very soon, there's a bunch of rights. You're gonna love it there. Yep. And yeah. So and I actually really enjoyed to surf rides there. Right. They're just so smooth and like friendly. Not always, but like yep. yeah, mostly friendly. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. A bigger, the bigger wave doesn't always have to be intimidating if it's totally. smooth, right? And yeah. somewhere like the Mento Eyes or even Uluwatu, it's pretty easy when you get past the break to paddle out. So we watch Hiroka with priority using it and extending the hips out and redirecting higher on the wave, four steps back and tapping it off the top. So that's going to be that's going to go really well with a six one seven, and it's the first right scoring right we've seen in quite some time. I'm not going to be surprised if the judges. So wow, smooth. pop this out into the sevens, but length of ride doesn't score, but you've got to give yourself lots of opportunity. And I love the old step off there as well. So mm. I think a ping's now in the lead, going to need a 661, but that extension to the, well, it's going to extend out to a seven or an eight at this point. And a ping, surfing's right there. It's just you've got to complete those waves and get those. Um, Got, got to get those uh, reforms and that's Sumi Teoka for about the hundredth time we're going to go for her heat interview okay I'm here with um, Natsumi the first female into the final round of the women's um, padrol competition um, how are you feeling it's you won in La Union also for the WSL and now you're into the finals here again how are you feeling I'm, I'm feel so good it's kind of long way because today is like three round already, so I'm focused on every single hit. So uh, don't be pressure too much, and then just come down, and then just do what can I do. 
Nice. What do you think of all these longboard competitions happening in Asia now? Um, I think Asian skills is getting higher and higher. Um, I, it's almost 10 years I'm competing for WSL, but not so many Asian people join it. But now it's like 32 female surfers competing. I was like, wow, it's getting bigger and bigger. Okay, I will make you rest because you're going to have a final heat in a couple of minutes. So yeah. good luck and hopefully you um, catch good waves. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I'll do my best. Thank you. Back to you guys, back to the booth. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, RJ. He's about to qualify. So here goes a ping knifing this one. Nice to hear from uh, Natsumi again. And four steps up to the tip, quick feet. And yeah, finishing cleanly. But just that wave not offering that opportunity that Hiroko got with the inside section. Uh, finishing well on the shore though, so but completions have, been have really played crucial with a lot of the Indonesian surfers falling out of the draw. It wasn't through lack of skill, but it was just through finishing their waves and showing the judges that they had control and grabbing the rail or just punching out the whitewash or losing your board. And overwhelmingly, and as we saw a lot of people just trying these foam climb rios, which are not something you generally see in a lot of these surfers do in their free surfs. Yeah. But as soon as, as soon as they put a rash vest on, they think they've got to do something extra, which is bizarre because it's not scoring. <laughs> Have you yeah. noticed that on the beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I feel like there's also this, um, the mindset behind all of this that we we often forget about that stressful factor and um, it's not easy to handle and I think like everybody's putting a really good face out there and they're really handling it like legends because when you're out there it's a different game right and they they're giving all they have and they're trying their best so sometimes you do maneuvers that you wouldn't do normally and mm. I think it's that also that extra stress factor that kind of like mm. you know pushes you out of this out of your zone and you got 20 minutes to do it that's it so there's like the time so many settings that mm. make you like a bit rushed as well so here goes a ping delicate style real nice hanging on the nose she's a, a mother and a, a surf school owner herself uh over in Siago in the Philippines and super delicate surfer. Uh, love someone I would love to see at some of the invitational events too. Um, be cool if she could make it over to Mexico and um, some of the duct tape events. Uh, really representing the Philippines and I know they got affected from a natural disaster a few years ago and um, her and her sisters and her parents were affected pretty badly and it took a lot of rebuilding in that area and they were pretty avid about the support on Instagram, thanking everyone, but yeah. also really showing their journey as well. And it's not expensive. Uh, I mean, it's really expensive to get here. And it's certainly a, um, I don't know, it's an emotional situation when they can, I, I, I can imagine it's a, a cultural, a bit of a cultural barrier too, when they've got people at home really struggling with work and trying mm -hmm. to rebuild. And these people out here surfing, trying to represent and something yeah. like that happens. There's additional pressure that, a lot of us can't can't think about so yeah, Ping doing a great job for her family and her community. Yeah, totally. I think they're giving so much of their time and energy and, and money as well, you know, we're not gonna gonna lie about that. It's it's quite expensive. Like you told yesterday a lot about that. It's expensive to travel and stuff. Hiroka up and riding. Always always finding that perfect sweet spot, eh? I going down, slippery nose. Yeah, and uh, that board's very neutral. You see a neutral rocker, so I'm going to say it's like, well, probably three and a half nose, three and a half tail rocker, and a little bit of continual curve throughout, not as flat in the middle as some of the others. Mm -hmm. um, classic uh, traffic in the background here as well. <laughs> Scooters buzzing by and cars. And um, yeah, Hiroka's, that we talked about it earlier, very I talked about it with Luke actually, a very consistent surfer, and that often when I pick up a surfboard and I feel it I go oh well that makes sense because I know that how that surfer surfs um, it's the same with uh, shortboards as well you, you know you see someone does big power turns and you see they've got bigger set fins and maybe a little thickness and girth in their board uh, do you see that a lot with people that you coach 
Uh, no, not really. So far, we'll un un until Mentawai, we had really um, we go for like all levels. Yeah. In Lombok, but in Mentawai, we had a few a few like experienced surfers, so it was really interesting to see like their experience uh, of like surfing. We had this woman from Hawaii. She was 65. Oh. She was ripping. <laughs> it was a pin. Mm, in interesting that one it was good tan but she yeah. went all the way back to the tail and uh, you see the rocker is further forward so um a yeah. little missed opportunity there but she finishes and completes which is important but she's chasing 834 she'll chip away at that just but we're in it's talking about the ex it's like changing gears when you're cross stepping up and down the board and there's pros and cons to certain situations and where you stand on the board and that's actually where equipment uh, knowledge comes into it yeah totally it's all the settings you know yes Exactly. Speed yeah. speed settings. So here, Absolutely. so steps forward for speed, up on the nose, bang! Little levitated ten. But why you walk away at the tail? It's the slowest part in the longboard. Mm -hmm. Use it or lose it. If you're not going to do a turn, step forward yes. like that. Absolutely. Same as side fins. Often with a performance style board, if a, a traditional style longboarder with that upright style goes to jump on a board with side fins, uh, a lot of the time they'll just fall head over toe, uh. unless you're really engaging the side fin. And really, the edge of the board. Have you had that feeling before? No, I've never tried this kind of board actually. Okay. Yeah. I need to try. Well, it. well, there you go. <laughs> you <laughs> might. You would just remember that because I fall off all the time. And there's a pin cross step transition back up through the uh, midsection, just behind the flat spot mm -hmm. on the belly. Because that's a lot of these boards with belly. Oh, here's where I go. Oh. So two minutes left. Eight, three, four. I'm not sure if that score has dropped in for a ping, but she's keeping very busy, and it won't be through a lack of trying. You see that board raw wax down with her FCS Kalima knees fin, 9.75, generous flex, nice little base, and uh, quite consistent that type of fin as well. Great template. Who can bodyboard like this? Look at her. She's like a fish. <laughs> it's epic. Ping striking back out. So Rogue is pretty stoked knowing a ping needs an excellent range score. But we, I think we still have some scores to lock in, I believe. And the ratings leader, uh, Natsumi, is still is through to the final. But we have Hiroka, who's in second, uh, still keeping her hopes alive at the moment. So unless a ping's got a massive score to drop in, with a minute 15 to go, it'll look like Hiroka will continue on with the final and we'll see a first and a second on the ratings and if Hiroka wins and Natsumi gets second there will be a tie and it will go back on previous rankings oh. to see who will uh, qualify mm. for the best and most iconic World Bomb World Tour we've ever had. So it's going to be a um, Japanese final, right? Yeah. Uh, well, Japan. at this stage, 45 seconds, it's still <laughs> open to a ping. Who's been ripping? Yeah. Experienced competitor, humble, um, mother of one, and her preheat routine doesn't include stretching or um, <laughs> anything. It includes entertaining her daughter. That's also pretty good uh, routine. Keep your mind busy. Yes. Again. That's true. Very much so. You know. I feel like it's really something that people forget about this mindset. It's yeah. something that I don't have bit of construction right there. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, the <laughs> iconic um, Kuda wall on the beach has been knocked down That's and very looks sad. like they're rebuilding it again. Yeah, brand new. Five seconds remaining in this heat and a pink did get a wave because Hiroka's got priority. So mm. now Hiroka's smiling. So I'm wondering what happened here, but this could be a victory lap. We'll update you shortly. And then she's on her knees, which is a common place for coming in on a heat. You don't know, be disqualified. We did have that earlier. We're going to roll to a, a, um, a break, and we're going to be back for the men's final. We'll see you guys shortly.
nggak bisa lepas dari HP itu over screen time chill bareng bintang kristal smooth nggak over pahit waktunya kristal chill Welcome back to the Pedro Longboard Classic, presented by ASA and WSL. And we are watching the final. We have Taka Inui. We have our Filipino legend who is, well, legend in the making. Competed at the World Games, and he is back in the final here. He's going to try and regain that, well, gain that thousand points. So if he can win this, he wins the Asian Tour. The qualifying tour and he'll qualify for the world longboard tour but oh this is the semi-final we got a little bit ahead of ourselves there so uh sorry moving into the men's semi-final so kai hermasi the clinical japanese surfer uh logging in along with natsumi and hiroka and taka logging in some really healthy scores throughout the event uh very humble gentleman but he's yeah he's got some tough competition up ahead of him So way back down into um, ninth place with 350 points is where uh, Kai in red is sitting at the moment and he's paddling hard. He's looking to start this heat off and he's, he's sort of up the beach a little bit more and he finds this runner into the rip. Bigger first step and makes the distance to the nose and I loved that off the top. If you see the body torque. It was just a small little uh, little difference, but that body torque where he twists up and brings the board down showed a lot of control. And a smaller wave, so it's not going to really uh, factor in perhaps at the end of this heat, but a great um, heat builder. Often you'll hear a lot of coaches and surfers talk about building a house in a heat. So that would be, uh, you've got your uh, four walls and you have your roof and your foundations of the floor. Um, some people might opt to put the roof on like you might in the final. You might just go straight and put the roof on. Problem is, you can put the roof on if you don't have any backup scores. That's going to collapse and you'll lose. So here's Kai Hamasi. Bottom turning. Big first step. Makes that delicate uh, step to the nose. A lot faster and a lot quicker than if you do a small first step and a big leap to the nose. It's like uh, you have to have heavier legs and it's going to look like you've leaped and jumped to the nose and that'll usually distract the flow and the flex of the board. It will react and that's when we see the hand movements uh, wobbling. So composure, flow and connection, speed, all of these words are all in the judging criteria at different points and Kai's a perfect uh, example of that. And JR, who's been on a roll, he he's going to take this easy. He's got his coach Luke there. He's been in the booth with us uh, from time to time, giving him some information. But all eyes on Kai at this stage. Big thank you to our sponsors. Obviously, Pedrol in that background. You can hear the uh, the drilling. Someone's literally uh, jackhammering uh, the cooter wall next to us. Um, they're trying to knock this down and rebuild a smaller, cleaner wall. But that classic wall was quite iconic. But the rooms are still here. The umbrellas are up. We're in the semi-finals. And if you're around Changu, the Bukit Peninsula, Kuda, come on down. Maybe you've just landed on one of the planes because the finals are on very shortly. We'll have two men's. Finals and we're straight into the women's final and then finishing with the men's final at this stage. And JR just hunting around. That tide's dropped and drained a little bit, so it's a little tricky as you're standing on the sand, you're super hot and it's really difficult to um, I guess maintain focus we're in the air conditioning booth here to analyze all of this and here's Kai up again this is his third wave holds that 10 four steps back up again on the nose 
finding that pocket, driving through the whitewash and finishing that one clean and with a mild claim. So I'd love to see a replay of that one. Very technical and yeah, he likes it too. I think some cheers from the beach. And here we have, opening up his account, JR, bang, start one off the top. And yeah, we've, it's been mixed scores for re-entries. Uh, Natsumi had a pretty good one earlier, but it was the, the end of several nose rides, and it was linking maneuvers, and she sort of banked it off the top. So a 4 out 3 for Kai Massey, and a 2 to set this one up with another score to drop. Uh, JR was chasing a 6 8 3 that was a pretty impressive set wave that he'd waited for with 13 minutes left remaining. JR needs to progress to this final because Taka Nui is still in the uh, lineup for the next heat. And here he goes, Kai, bang. Pivots it, six steps up, finds a 10. Steers on the nose, really nice tip control. Up again, delicate footwork, all part of the criteria and he steps back. So. We'll wait and see what that last one logged in at, but he's got more on the inside as well. Trimming that one through. There he is with the gangster stance, and he's back, and he finishes that one out. So, I really like that wave. I, I'm thinking, based on what we've seen in previous heats in this heat, that one's going to be a six or maybe higher. A uh, lot of tip control, but we're going to go down to Jared on the beach, who's got a post-heat interview with Hiroka, another 15 of them, uh, and here we are. All right, guys, we're down here live at the beach with our winner from the last semifinal. She's found herself a place in the final today for this event. How are you feeling, Haruka? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited to surf with Natsumi. Yeah, it's going to be an all-women's Japanese final. Yeah. So excited. You're such yeah. a wonderful surfer. What are you going to do if you win? Um, uh, the waves good for me. <laughs> I, will, I will do my best. You yeah. are the best. I, I just want to have fun. <laughs> that's, that's the true spirit of a true winner, just having fun, doing her best. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the final. Of this event. Thank you. Congrats. Good job, sweet. I'll, I'll see you then, yeah. So far now, Natsumi's on Foxing Point 9 and, Fox, and Hiroka on Foxing Point 1-9. Oh! So, okay. so, so, Hiroka, so has, Hiroka, Hiroka wins. still yeah. has to win. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, To be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd have to be pretty high though. But that's, that's where it stands now. So back and rolling, we're just getting updated. I'll send it on the we're, yeah, we're going to have a little update of the, the rankings because, um, yeah, there's lots of opportunity for changes. But someone who doesn't want that change is JR, who's liking that wave for this, with the Philippines sticker on that board from the World Games. He's feeling that passion and everyone's riding him, riding it with him on the beach. It's, is it loud down there? Inviting Jared Mel back in the booth. Oh. Is, there, is there some crowds down there? And you it's guys, down? it's puffing down there. The sand is beautiful temperature. It's nice, clean, warm. The sun's shining. People are freaking. They're cheering their fans. Everybody's clapping, throwing sand around, having cold coconuts and beers. And just the vibe is live. As we see our competitor on the replay in Blue JR, just really going for that championship. While well, I was down there on the beach, though, interviewing our winner from the last women's semifinal, who's gonna we're gonna see shortly in the final today in this division, we came across some uh, great information in the points overall standings for these women competitors. So we're gonna see in the final Natsumi and Hiroka, and if Hiroka happens to take the win today. That's going to put them in a tie position for points in the overall standings. And if they go to that tie, normally they go back to... Um, previous results. Previous results. And I think they have a tie in previous results as well. Mm. Since they're tied all the way, they're going to go back to an average of heat scores. Yeah. So currently standing... As but I've been that, that, that's if uh, Hiroka wins? If Hiroka wins, correct. And so if she does win, and they go to this tie, and they go to a count back, and that's obviously tied, they're going to go to average heat scores, which currently, not soon, he's at a 14.9, mm -hmm. and 
Hiroka's at a 14.19, which is so close that it's going to come down in this final if Hiroka wants to clinch that spot. It's going to so, get hard. It's going to be hard for her, but it is possible. possible. It's yeah, possible. she's going to go excellent range, which she can do. Yeah. And um, so it's going to be an exciting final. We could see similar a situation uh, if JR is to build in his heat title. So he's in second spot now, but if JR was to progress to the final and Tucker was in second spot, we could have a similar showdown as well. Wow, folks. Well, that's you heard it first here from Matt Chinowski and myself. It's going to be an exciting final for both the men's and women's division as it could possibly come down to the very last seconds of the contest today for these competitors to solidify their spot to join the world tour. As we see our man in blue showing his passion and dedication of how he wants to join that tour. Oh. Nice nose ride in these difficult conditions as the tide is going out. He's Great. back up on the nose. Great mid-board control. He's still working that left. Yep. Which is great. Oh, there he goes. He likes that. But Kai Hamasi on that technical wave before dropped a 7.5 and a 6.5. So JR's chasing a 7.11 with that 6.9. So we'll see where this one locks in. The judges have got there. I hope they're uh, dead tuned in. I'm sure they are because they are they've got a lot of work ahead of themselves. But thankfully, we started early today. So the tide is still providing some really nice waves. Uh, slight cross your wind, but for the most part, not a lot of wind in general. Yeah, it's not bad, you know, it's favorable for the conditions right now. Um, the tide is dropping in quite fast, obviously, because of the full moon. As we go live down the beach and the supporters down there from the Philippine contingency, those beautiful ladies supporting their countryman as he is trying to clinch that first place position in the first heat of the men's semifinals. He's looking for a 7.11 to advance to the final and get that much closer. I think like, it'll be close. Yeah, that was a solid ride. But given uh, that the tide's dropping, you know, getting that length of ride, an opportunity, and he did get it. And I kind of really, I think he's learned a lot through this event where less is more. And here he goes again, backing cool. that up, not leaving anything to chance. Less is more and more is less as he catches another wave. Oh, oh, and he comes unglued. But fortunately, so seven, seven, seven comes through. Yeah, oh, comes so through. He's seven, gone to the seven, lead. Seven. So, all right. Well, there the, you go, the folks. The gods are on his side. Seven, 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 and he's heard that score and he's motoring back out. And here goes uh -oh. Kai needing a seven, one, eight, and well and truly capable. Oh, oh no! And he's going to regain priority, hopefully for his sake, because he got a bit of a rip out there. You see that? Yeah, that turbulence, low tide. That current. Yep. Low tide currents going out. Flicks up the sand Ooh, and the conditions. Paddle battle. Battle, battle, indeed. It's, everything is on the line right now. Oh, and it goes, priority goes to red. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. He's asking for the priority update, I believe that roll around is. Now, Kai has got a 7.5 on his first one. Uh, a little smaller, but very technical surfing. And JR just found one of those lefts that he found against Augusto. And you're in the booth commentating that. I was on the beach hearing all the, the sounds. Wow. Um, tell us a bit about that heat. Man, that was just on fire. Two really good, goofy surfers who are proving how qualified they are to surf against the world's best. Because that was just nonstop action. It was yep. a battle hand in hand, wave to wave. And um, yeah, that's what it is all day. That's what it's been. And as we see a quick wave, this is similar to what he was doing in that heat against Augusto Olinto. And. He was actually doing better than that. He caught these set waves and just lucked into the... Sometimes you catch the waves in the heat, sometimes you don't. And he definitely caught the waves that were a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. cleaner, and longer. And he performed on them as he has been all day and throughout the series. That's why he's in the number one position. And he's currently in first place as well. So he's having a look here under priority in blue. JR from the Philippines trying to better a 6.90. There he is, a little 10, arms to the side. Pushing a little water there though, smaller wave. Softer, softer section. He's looking at better a 6.9. I don't know if it's gonna better a 6.9, but it was a great effort. So this is where some uh, competitive knowledge and experience is gonna come in. Well, I know he's traveled a lot around the world, but I haven't seen his name up until recently on the international stage. So JR may, 
just need to cool it a little bit and have a have a look, have a think. Because Kai needs a pretty special wave. And look at him, posture, good posture. Asking for the time update. Um, consummate professional is is Kai Hamasi. And if that translation for anybody at home in Japan does not come across on YouTube very well, consummate professional basically means he's a true professional in every sense of the word. His preparation, his equipment, and even the way he's holding himself now, he's going to be doing everything he can to get that 7.18 to progress. But JR, he's active. Look at him. His posture is a little lower. He's down on his hands. He's he's listening to the scores. Yep, see, he's, he's kind of a little more frantic, just waiting for time, scratching his head. He's anxious. He knows that if he makes this final then Tucker is going to have to uh, to make his final as well. And then, yeah, you just see he's just activated waiting and asking. And, you know, perhaps probably not a bad idea to go and sit next to Kai with 2 minutes 50 left on the clock, although he doesn't have priority. Um, you know, Kai's a great surfer, but everyone can make mistakes. And you've got someone sitting right next to you with that choppy sea, you can see that current, uh, it's like a whirlpool. Generally, this current runs from left to right, but at times, like right now, it's actually running from right to left. You can see it swirling around. So that rip straight up the front, creating a little bit of havoc, but JI used it to his advantage on that 7.77. Two minutes 20 left on the clock, and JR's still looking for waves, but he's in the lead. He needs a better 6.9, and this is a difficult wave to see if it's on the screen if it's going to be it and something like that just is never going to be the score and a lack of experience maybe there and and just two minutes left it's it's something it's got to be the wave and and he should know that because he's he's got an excellent range right and the waves were the ones that did it for him yeah i think he just got a little excited yeah you know he's out in front he's all right here we go from red Kim amasi from japan Looking to get that 718. Unfortunately, I didn't see the beginning of the wave, but yeah. I'm going to call that's not it. A minute 40. We didn't see out the out the outside, so it would have to be something quite special. But I'm sure we'll, we'll get a replay of that shortly. And JR is going to gain priority. He's definitely going to sit on top of our friend you, from you, Japan. you would think so. You would think so. But he looks like he's still looking for a wave, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you'd think so. No. So he's, he's, this wow. is crazy. It's he's trying to better his score. Maybe he doesn't know his scores. He's true, just trying to true. better it. Um, wow. Oh, here we go. Under priority. The man in red. 5, 10. Hands oh. behind the back. Nice nose ride. Difficult wave right there to surf like that. Wow. Claims it. 7.18. Folks, if he gets it, it's going to be the buzzer beater of all time for these gentlemen in the semifinal heat number one. I'm going to watch this countdown, and I'm going to run down to the beach for another live yep. interview. So... 40 seconds left. Let's get a replay of that. Let's see what happens. This is exciting. Like we mentioned yesterday, as Herbie Fletcher, Fletcher always says, it's the thrill of it all, and the thrill is definitely here to stay down at Halfway Kuta Beach. So and Bali, here's the replay, folks. Five, critical 10. Close five. Yeah, not, close not five. quite 10, no. but feet Shuffle. together. And hands behind the back in control. Wax it off the top right there. Nice little up and down roller coaster ride. So I don't think, I think, just think of that little shuffle at the end and a close five, not quite a ten, smaller wave. Uh, yeah, it'll get close. I just can't see it going the seven one eight. All right. Well, but we'll see. We're not the judges. We're not the judges, and I'm going to leave the booth right now and take you down the beach. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Back to a uh, a break, and we'll let the judges calculate that, and I'll update you guys shortly. Still on screen, we're going to wait and see that one logged in. And that's uh, Kai is just waiting for that score. Somber moment there, or is it one of joy and happiness? I don't know if he's had that in yet. Yep, he's heard it. I think he's heard that score now. There he is. So, Jay on to the final, and Kai congratulating him. Uh, Semi final finish there for Kai Hamasi. And JR moves into the final, and Taka Inui will be 
Yeah, Taku Nui will be, uh, it's up to him now. So we'll see, we'll come back after the break and we'll tune you guys in very shortly. Roland kicking off there in our semi-final number two of the Pedrol Longboard Classic. This is a WSL qualifier number two for the Asia region. And here's Taku Nui who's second on the ratings. He did say before if he doesn't win this event he's going to have a uh, early retirement. And uh, banking one off the top like that and incomplete is not going to help his cause but no love lost because Roland in red, our Frenchman, was in the exact same situation, incomplete in his first wave. Good thing is though, there is no shortage of waves. It's super consistent. And I think we're gonna have some pretty entertaining surfing coming up. Well, I know we're gonna have some entertaining surfing up coming up because the crowd is flocking down to the beach. They've got umbrellas sitting at the Wurungs. You've got their Nazi Gorang and there's coconuts, there's bintangs. It's all going on down here in the Island of Bali, 17 minutes and 50 left on the clock. So the judges will be taking the best two scores out of these surfers totals. And on the rankings, it's the best of two events. And JR, our Filipino surfer, who'll be coming up in an interview shortly, has made the final. It's up to Tucker to continue that. Switch up to the nose and back. Super excited and completing that wave. We didn't get the beginning, but we'll see shortly. Our Japanese competitor, competitor who did have a little bit of controversy earlier with his sisters actually getting a priority interference by swapping surfboards during the heat. Uh, one of them was finishing and the other one was commencing a heat. And by swapping boards in the water, it is deemed a priority interference because uh, caddies are not allowed to interfere in the water. It has to be on the sand. Here goes Tucker hunting on this one. Slight fade. Stepping up onto the tip. Gets clean 10 and holds it. And stepping back and um, short, grovelly type of wave, but just trying to build a quick heat total. Now, Surfer in red pushing a bit of water on that uh, borrowed board. He rented down here on the beach apparently. He's here on vacation and thought he'd try his hand at the event. Already being a, a prior WSL competitor in the European region. He's not here for points. He's just here for a bit of prize money and a, a bit of fun while he's on, on holiday, which is the same with a couple of surfers like Brazil's Augusto Alinto, and we had uh, Russian competitors amongst uh, some Australian competitors and a Polish competitor as well. We had a Swiss competitor join, but there is no points for them. Just prize money, but it's looking like at this stage we do have our Filipino surfer, whose current ratings leader making it to the final. The winner of this will join them. And here goes Roland stepping back and unable to commence. Look at Stoke. His smile. He's smiling. He's, that's Tim Hayne, our photographer and uh, assistant here at uh, ASC. Are down on 
Buka Peninsula, Chungu, Kuta area, Seminyak, Legian, come on down. We've got the men's semi final, we've got the women's coming up very shortly, followed by the men's final. This is a world's qualifying event, and the winner of both the men's and the winner of the women's will make and qualify themselves to compete on that world longboard tour. He goes Tucker. He's, uh, he's seen something down the beach with a three and a 1.5, and dropping that 1.5, replace that with a 4.17 to go with that 3.83. So a quick turnaround and starting early is proven to be uh, helpful. But a 4.67 for Roland. He only needs a 3.33, and oh, levitated nose right. If he can finish this cleanly, it's going to do wonders for his scoreline. And that, unfortunately, that ending, that lack of composure and just sort of hunting for a bit of speed and I mean, he's getting sighted after an amazing hang 10. But the idea is to put it all in a package, super smooth and, and really ironing out the kinks in the surfing. And because we're on modern day longboards here and these boards are smooth with a lot of understanding of rock up, bang, nice hang 10. But then sort of gets a bit sloppy And uh, there's Roland cutting this one through and just hunting for more maneuvers. Just shuffling up the board, getting low, not using the cross steps to maintain speed, but just using his frame more so and banking that one off the top. So a clean finish for red. A uh, little cleaner than uh, Tucker's wave in blue, but the 10 for Tucker was pretty epic as well. I think red may have had the advantage there this this hang 10 was amazing it's a bit sloppy and then bang gets that levitation and then well, this is the this is another one he's banked on in the in-between and this is Roland's wave so four steps up to the tip he's critical soul arch and gets a bit of levitation himself shuffles back gets that drop knee and it's his ending here he gets a little low but he finishes cleanly when he banks this one off the top. Little shuffle back. So we're not going excellent. We're not talking uh, above average scores. But uh, the way this heat's playing out, these surfers are pretty evenly matched. So uh, I think that 494 will be replaced for red. But I think Tucker is going to improve on his. So uh, we've got JR being interviewed by Jared. Down to you guys on the beach. All right, you guys, we're live down at the beach with our last heat winner, supported by his countrymen from the Philippines, JR, a current heat leader in the points. How do you feel, buddy? I'm so stoked. Like, I'm so happy. I can't explain. Congrats, yeah. man. You're going to the final, and you're yeah. one step closer to earning that spot on the world yeah. tour. What do you have to say for yourself and your fellow supporters yeah. and countrymen and your country? So in thankful Philippines? for all of these guys, like, for pushing me harder. Yeah, and let's get to the next round and keep focus and yeah, let's try to win it. <laughs> well, there you guys have it from yeah. the beach line. Yeah. Yeah. We'll Thank see you in the final, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. man. Thank you. So that was very insightful from the Filipinos. Feeling the passion here from the commentary booth. We can hear the crowd, the Filipino flags. There's several of them on the sand really getting behind their their countrymen and a six for roland and i think we had a wave for tucker to lock in or at least replay and we'll get to you uh very shortly on that replay and in that in that uh, in that break with the uh with the crowd i didn't quite see that so we're gonna have to replay that now this is roland who's in first place, but looking to better that 4.67. It's going to have to be a wave that allows... Uh, he, I think Roland's advantage here, being a bigger frame guy, is, is going to turns. And he's got that nose ride down at that midsection. But if he can finish cleanly with a strong turn uh, and really harnessing that aggression into a smooth carve, showing that rail work, but stepping in and out of the turn, I think you'll see... Uh, I think you'll see the scores be adjusted accordingly, but Tucker, 543 and 4. Yeah, so that 543 and a 4.7. He needs a 525 to advance. And 
this is that replay holding it soul arching through shuffling back to the tail and opting out of that one so yeah lower tide the end section's really crumbling so it's going to come down to who can complete not just a nose ride fest but who can utilize their rail and their turns effectively in amongst the cross stepping in amongst the positioning and just doing it with composure and style that traditional longboard surfing we've seen displayed on the world normal tour two steps up the tip nice hang 10 and shuffling back to the tail and incomplete pulling into the tube so beautiful moment there for the photographers and that photo is unfortunately not going to be able to help him build on that heat total because the judges have been looking for a pretty pretty all competition they've been quite adamant on completions nine minutes and 15 left on the clock so we'll see what happens here lots of uh yeah situation updates as we are getting messages through from the officials about it's going up and forth and back and forth oh and a nice hang 10 there from roland wow he's stoked he feels it so he's got to get rid of a four six seven and it is getting a little bumpy now we've got jared mel back in the booth now jared just to update you on what's going on that was electric down there with the with the filipino crew thank you for that interview oh, man that was wild to see the support of everybody from that region and that country but just the love and their sheer happiness for the young jr to solidify being in the final i mean you just you just it was infectious you just felt the pride of everybody and the love supporting all those wonderful humans over there and down the beach it's just an uh, incredible feeling so thanks from all the people from the philippines and um yeah but, but congratulations it could, it, to jr but it's it could get more infectious with tucker if he makes this if he doesn't progress through but he's doing a good cause to make it through um yeah tucker wow. may make the final so wow he's doing he's doing something he's asking for something maybe he's up, up come he's pointing shaking his head no i'm not sure Wow, look at Roland. I mean, the guy didn't even choose to be, in, he didn't expect to be in this contest. Yep. He just showed up and he's blown up. Oh, oh the claims are coming. Oh, so the claims are coming. On a borrowed board, a rental, nonetheless. He's sticking oh, to his Oh, board kid. change. So he's board checking. Change. Obviously, he's going for more rocker, um, which he hasn't really fallen off, Tucker. It's just those end sections he's pulling into barrels and whatnot. Right, um, so well, yeah, you just want to be extra careful, you know, with the quiver situation. Yeah, hopefully they don't get another inner. No, no, <laughs> that's why he's checking. He's just checking with his uh, with his coach, his mum. Um, let's see. But I'm going to uh, prepare to go down for the post seat interview, Jared, and I'm going to let you finish this one quickly off because there is there's going to be fireworks in this next five minutes because Tucker has an opportunity to spoil the party. Because Tucker wants qualification. Don't forget what he told us after that last post oh, posted man. interview, man. The young, yeah, the, I was looking talent, forward. Like, I was looking forward to doing that interview, but you take it away, buddy, because that's going to be explosive. Like well, you said, who, it depends on who wins. It depends on who who wins, of course. But if he does make it through, I mean, well, it's going to go to the final then with the Filipinos and the Japanese, to who progresses completely. But currently, he's sitting in second. So, yeah, but if he gets this is semi, so if, if he Tucker wins, wins semi. And then if he goes to the final wow. and wins the final, wow. it's an it's a tie. It's like a tie. Hiroko and Natsumi. Yeah. Well, all the situations coming down, it's just coming in, updating. I hope we'd have a power black alley yesterday <laughs> with Natsumi just ripping. I think we already up. I think we already went through those hopefully, because we had two earlier today. So hopefully there's a finish and everything's back online and it's gonna stay that way as we see the man chasing the dream right now in blue. Going for a five, ten. Walking back, feeling that new board. Wow, that cutback was nice and tall. Um, reminded me of a Terry Sins bottom turn as he's making it all the way to that end section, but it doesn't take him back. So with five minutes and 40 seconds, we're gonna say goodbye to Matt Chanowski as he heads down to the beach for the post heat interview. You got everything you need? Yeah, I'm excited. we're all excited. We can hear the um, Cooter wall being knocked down. It's, it's all happening down here. Construction, surfing, scooters, cars, food, dancing. People are enjoying this beautiful Sunday to the fullest as we see 
The Frenchman in red on another nice wave. Trying to capitalize and add those points up to stop the dream of the young Japanese surfer in blue. So we're hitting the five minute mark. We're waiting for scores to drop. And the entertainment goes on as surfers are getting closer to the, earning that spot on the world tour. You can feel the intensity in the air. Cut it with a knife. But nonetheless, it's all about fun and games here. And it's going to be an exciting final for both the men's and women's division. Stay tuned. Turn up the volume. Stick around as we have 4 minutes and 20 seconds left in this second heat. The last heat of the men's semi-final round. What a spectacular event it's been so far. Thanks for all of you tuning in and thanks to our sponsors. Padroll for putting this event on, Longboard Classic, WSL QS Qualifying Series in the Asia region, as well as Pintang Crystal, PGS Coffee, and the ASC as we're approaching 3 minutes and 40 seconds left. We see some lines out the back. Our man in red's got a 6 Point zero zero to four point nine three. Our surfer from Japan in blue is looking for a five point five one to advance. He doesn't like the looks of that one, so he's gonna hang tight, wait for a better opportunity to hopefully clinch the win and progress forth to the final. What a thrill it could possibly be to see the standings and the points so closely in both the men's and women's. This could come to possible ties in the standing points, which will come to heat wins. And if those are tied like in the women's, it would go back to a heat average. So a lot of math being broken down over here at Halfway Kuda. All the judges have their calculators out and they're ready to get back to the classroom, see if they paid attention back in school, as we are just under 2 minutes and 30 seconds, we're still waiting for some scores to drop, looks like our man in red has a 6.33 and a 6.00, so he bettered his previous score, and the young surfer from Japan in blue has a 6.43 and a 5.43. He's looking for that 5.90 to advance, and he's sitting with priority as we see the surfers pass each other. Oh, sitting next to each other with less than two minutes to go. Taka is really looking forward to advancing. Um, as a previous interview, earlier today, we believe that he mentioned if he doesn't win this event, he's done with surfing. So he's definitely wearing the heart on the sleeve, like Chanowski mentioned before. And um, he's putting it all on the line here. The surfers are sticking close together. Our man in red from France is always looking for the win. And then spectacular story as he had come to Bali for a vacation. Only bringing a, a smaller board as he's quite known for his shortboarding skills and wasn't expecting to be a part of this event. Luckily, he found himself right amongst the mints of it. Rented a longboard down the beach from all the local shops around here that are available, and um, look at him. He's currently winning the semi-final. With less than a minute, who knows? It's gonna come down the last seconds right here. Love this part of the heat. Two talented surfers. Scores are very close. Taka's looking for a 5.90. As a Frenchman is sticking close. Put a little added pressure on the young contender in blue. Oh, 20 seconds left. 
He's looking for a wave, but I don't know if they're gonna if the ocean gods in Bali here are gonna give it to him today, folks. Which means I believe that JR will be taking the win for the points and moving to get that spot on the world tour. That's the end of the heat. There's the congratulations. We're gonna take a quick ad and get ready for the rest of the day. All right, you guys, we're back here at the Padrel Longboard Classic WSL QS event. What another wonderful heat. Um, the last semifinal just wrapped up for the men's. And we're gonna say congratulations to our surfer from France in red, Roland Lafleur, as we're kicking off the women's final. It's an all Japanese women's final here. Tatsumi Tayoka in red and Hiroka, Hiroka Yoshikawa in blue. These two ladies have been putting on a wonderful display of surfing all day. Very inspiring as we see Tatsumi in red on a great nose ride. 5, 10 in control, up and down, little roller coaster finish. Very stylish, very collected. She knows what she's doing out there as she has all day to get to this final. And what a thrill. We could possibly see a tie for the final here. I'm just gonna go down back to a couple count backs. But as we see in red, there she is, high five, breaking into the 10, walking back. Up and down right there, hanging on to it and finishing smoothly from our surfer in red. All right, these conditions are prevailing. Wind has been very generous and stayed calm and the waves have been pumping in all day. And as the tide gets lower, it's a little trickier here on this beach break at Halfway Kuda. But these surfers are making it look a lot easier than it actually is. I walked down previously on a post heat interview and the tide has gone out extremely low. So these waves have been changing from heat to heat. It's hard to tell on the broadcast, but when you're down here on the beach, you can obviously see. So with 22 minutes left in the heat, Natsumi is out and lead with an 8.33 and Hiroko Yoshikawa has a total of a 3.17. Plenty of time for anything to happen. And it's definitely going to go down. Can't wait for this post heat interview with Chinowski and the Frenchman and hopefully get some words from the young Japanese surfer Taka as we mentioned before we believe he was speaking about not continuing in his surfing career if he didn't win this event the passion is there with the family on the beach and all the fans it's a great day to be down here at Kuda halfway 
So if you are in the area, scoot her on down. I'll get down here as you please. If you're up in Padang, maybe you can catch the go boat, get dropped off for the presentations. We will be wrapping up shortly after this final, the men's final. And we will all be down here to enjoy and celebrate the champions and everybody who's helped put this contest together. The support and the sponsors. We're gonna have a good evening watching another beautiful sunset here in Bali, Indonesia. Coming up to the 20 minute mark, we see the best of two waves from each surfer with Natsumi uh, sitting on a six and a 2.33. And our surfer in blue who has priority currently sitting on a 3.17. She's in need of a 5.17 to jump into first. Just getting word that they're gathering the surfers from the last heat to get that post interview with Matt Chanowski. Let's, I wonder what witty comments Chono is going to think of next as he's been entertaining us all day and ever since I've known the little resemblance of a staffy dog. Great guy, all around great surfer, and very knowledgeable. We're thankful to have him here in the booth in Bali, Indonesia, and a part of this wonderful event as we see our surfer in blue. Quick nose ride, bigger wave, short wave, but stays in control, hangs on her board. Don't know if it's gonna be a 5.17, but it will help add up her heat total to come closer to Atsumi in red with priority and less than 19 minutes left in the heat. How exciting for these surfers being here in Bali and the opportunity to join the world tour, the world lawnmower tour for the WSL. First stop will be Huntington Beach at the US Open. A legendary contest venue. So many great surfers have been a part of that event, surf their way to championships as well as the rest of the event. They have everything from skateboarding, to BMX, to motorcycles, to great concerts. So if you happen to be in that area when the event is on, make sure to stop by the old Huntington Pier with uh, rubies on the end and Jack surfboards right across the street. Another great surf shop. I actually used to work there when I was younger. So shout out to all my old bosses and co-workers over at Jack Surfboards. As we see our current heat leader up, quick five and 10 walk back. Looks like this, oh, rail digs, but she manages to hold on to her board. And uh, looks like this low tide is starting to affect these waves more. That's why we started early. That's why we're trying to finish early. And give these surfers the best opportunity to get better waves and score the highest points possible. So we're seeing some scores dropped. Hiroko's second wave was a 2.80 for that quick nose ride. Bigger wave, but a shorter ride. So now she's looking for a 6.83. She's going left, she's up on the nose, nice controlled five. Waves dropping out. It's a hard opportunity, but she's gonna, oh, just doesn't make it past that se section, unfortunately. She's gonna continue going, see if she gets that length of ride. All right, Red's up and riding behind her. Five, walks back. Looking very difficult now in this final as the tide goes down. The waves are starting to close out on this beach break. And I guess we're gonna cut to that interview shortly. Chono's down there on the beach. I bet it's popping. I can't wait to hear about everything that's happened while we're up here in the booth. We only get to see the waves and we're not on the beach. So we don't get to see the vibe down there and everybody's smiling and cheering for their loved ones and their fellow countrymen. 
It's an all-day affair, though, folks. We've been down here bright and early every morning this weekend. Just soaking it all in. Exchanging great conversations and good vibes with everyone down here from all over Asia and across the world, really. We've had Russian surfers, surfers from Poland, uh, some surfers from France, as we just saw. The Frenchman who's going to move into the final. Roll on the floor. And where else do we have uh, Augusto Olinto, of course, from Brazil. So surfers all from all over the world, folks, not just the Asian region, but the surfers that are from the Asian region are trying to collect points to move forward. And we're coming down to the 15 minute mark. If Hiroka can pull off a 6.27 to jump into first and hold on to that first place position to take the win, we're gonna find ourselves a tie and the points standing to move on to the WSL and we're gonna have a count back. But right now, we're gonna cu cut to the interview we've all been waiting for, the post heat with Roland, the Frenchman, and the young blood from Japan, Taka, with Matt Janowski. Matt, take it away, buddy. So, commiserations to Taka in that last heat, but we have Roland taking the win, our Frenchman on vacation. Tell us about that heat, the lower tide. How were you feeling? Were you nervous? Uh, yeah, I was nervous. The waves are still more difficult now, uh, more curved and small, so it was difficult to, to find the right one. And uh, I do some thick nose, and <laughs> yeah, it's, and Taka is a, such a good surfer, so I was like, yeah, a little bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> And how does the surfing compare to your, your European region compared to, you know, and now you're surfing here? Some very good surfers, right? I don't know. I just do like one competition in Europe like three or four years ago. And uh, I started the longboard just six years ago. So before it was just short border. So it's new for me and uh, I try to train. Yeah. And Taka, you've worked so hard in your career so far, traveled all around the world. How are you feeling with this loss? We, we know you had an emotional heat interview last time and it, the day has been up and down. What are you feeling at the moment? そうですね。まあ、今まで I'm very happy to have a chance to join such a great tour at competition and then I meet a lot of uh, so uh, we're going to thank you very much for that emotional interview. We're going to let you go prepare Roland for your final. Good luck. Yes, we'll see you next. Thank you to Bintan Krista. To give us a little bit more insight to that interview, I couldn't quite hear. We have a little technical difficulty. It sounded like Roland was happy to make it through to the final, and um, yeah, he's only been competing for six years, so he was just doing what he's learned and uh, what he's passionate about. He's here to win, it's competition, that's what you do in competitions. So unfortunate for our young surfer from Japan, as we see another young surfer from Japan in blue, Hiroka, just looking for that 724, but unfortunately she's not gonna get on that wave. With just under 11 minutes and 35 seconds left in the seat. Oh, door's open, Chono's ran up the beach, he's made it into the booth, Chono. Walk us through that interview, couldn't quite hear everything going on, so give us a play-by-play -play if you could. Well, bittersweet for Roland, you know, he makes the final and he gets a little bit more spending money on his trip over here in Bali. But amazingly, only last competition he did was four years ago, the WSL ranked one in Biarritz, which uh, I actually was in with him, funnily enough. And oddly enough, Kataka, who uh, through translation said he was going to maybe retire, 
after this heat. It was also bittersweet for him. He was so stoked to be here from the translation we picked up that his mum was translating for him. But just said, you know what? He's just stoked. He's got his Tucker model board. He did a board swap. The board went way better. And he felt like he surfed really well on that heat. Uh, but the waves were a little tricky and Roland surfed better. And he's stoked for everybody as well. So, um, yeah, not confirming that this was his last event. But, I mean, someone whose last event it is certainly not is Hiroko Shikawa needing a 724. And I'm sure you've touched on that uh, heat requirement that if she's going to take the regional victory it's got to be by a lot and she has to get some extreme scores because it's going to fall back down to average heat scores yeah yeah we did just briefly before it while you were running up the beach and um thanks for heading down there in the heat enjoy the vibe and get the first insight from those competitors but and did you guys pan to you pan to jr winning this did they show the um filipino crew celebrating on the beach yeah they did they passed out when i was yeah. down there interviewing oh there was another there was another when when Tucker actually uh, oh, yeah, in the countdown, that means Jr. Would have yeah, won the they, they no. went berserk and um, yeah, of course they would have. Unfortunately, they didn't get that shot. But we'll um, see. Maybe well, someone else. Maybe another camera angle did. So we'll maybe see. Maybe on the ASC, one of the filmers down there. True. They would have got the shot for sure, as they love that Filipino crew. Actually, I did get it on Instagram too. I'm going to show you quickly. Oh, please um, break the, it out. Yeah, let's let's go. Well, another. There we go. So. There it is. Look so at that. Congratulating him. And I mean, you know, one thing that was super infectious is as soon as this celebration, um, check it out, the wax head, he goes over to his mum, Tucker's yeah. mum, and sends her commiserations and uh, shakes her hand and bows. Yeah. And Respect. then, yep. And actually True went up to Tucker and, yeah, apologized. Or, you know, not apologized, but basically said, well done, good, right. well, good surf good surfing and uh, that was really cool and that's the example of a competitor that you want to see respectful prideful and just be the true gentleman I mean to go up to a mother a family and they lost you know they put so much into it a rough day all around it's a rough day all around but you know congratulations to everybody the, the Nua family for making it this far and supporting longboarding culture and lifestyle and congratulations to JR and the Filipino crew over here supporting, surfing, just having a good time. But the prize money is also something big, and, and Natsumi's obviously trying to take the win in this heat with, from Hiroka, who's second on the ratings. And speaking about that prize money, we saw the checks being mm. collected that we were guarding in our little booth in the van. Um, do you know how much the prize money is, actually? The prize pool is... Five thousand Australian dollars uh, across. Place? No, it's a, it's spread across oh, the, spread across the, the finalists. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, someone's gonna get some money, and congratulations to all of you that do. As we're under the eight-minute marker, and we're watching Natsumi well out in front with a six at a five point one seven. Hiroka has a three point nine three. And a 3.53. She's looking for a 7.24 to advance. Completely possible for the lady in blue. Fortunately, these conditions with the low tide are making it quite difficult. But you never know what can happen down here. Well, thinking back to yesterday, one of the countrymen, uh, uh, Masumoto, got that long left. And here she goes now. And it was about this time. It was thought, uh, it's getting a little low and it's... It's not a lot of potential, and he got that long left, and he scored an excellent range score. I believe it was uh, eight, eight point five, or low nines. Super Somewhere long. There, yeah, I, yeah. Kinda, I remember him getting a nice wave towards the end. I forget the points exactly. What a beautiful display of his talent, and from all the other surfers as well. It's just been really inspirational to see these competitors compete at such a level. As we watch a replay, four steps up, two steps to I love that uh, style. You see her. Um, the hips are back, but the knees are forward, and it's super elegant. Uh, it's also very functional too, because as, uh, as we're nose riding, we're always going to be the back foot. And here's Natsumi, dedicated, knifing this one. Currently sitting in first place. Short ride for Natsumi, and she goes down. Not really displaying that elegance, as you were mentioning, or as we've seen in Thomas Campbell's movie, The Lady Glide. Mm-hmm. Part of Sprout. Um, Beautiful section want to find some windsurfing oh. like we we're watching right in front of our faces and Sumi's powerful too she got a carve on her um, yeah. oh nice definitely that one back. Ping on rail. 
And that thing's uh, actually um, quite a wide nose and refined rail on that forward. So kept talking about it all day. Talked about it with an ace earlier as well. It's sometimes when you pick up a board, it you can okay, I can see that. I now I know why you surf the way you do and those things. So it's quite a wide nose, stable functionality of design coming then, through for a surf in red. And then this refinement in the rail, bang. <laughs> Able to whack it around, swing it around and clock up those extra points as we are almost coming to the end here for the women's final, the Pedrol Lombard Classic, the WSL QS series. So I'm almost to the five minute marker. Scores are been updated. Natsumi is sitting on a 7.17 and a 6. So she's progressed her lead. That's leaving Hiroka in blue with priority. Looking for an 8.14 to jump into the lead, folks. That is a big call for our surfer in blue. She can do it. We're rooting for her to do it. To bring the thrill of this heat. Yeah. Down to the very last seconds. She's gonna need some. Yeah. She probably almost. There's eight one four to go to first, but she's gonna need to take the ratings lead as well as the event victory. Although at this stage she's just hoping to, to probably win the event, but she's gonna do it. She has to do it convincingly. So she'll have to up her overall heat total. So I would say two eights, uh, which will have a sixteen point heat total, and given that her existing heat total is thirteen point one nine. Um, so two eights. two eights will be 16, and that would, you would imagine, uh, lift that up. So Nat Natsumi's heat total is a little lower at 13.17, with a 13.9 heat total throughout the year. That's what it's going to come down to if Hiroka was to take the win. It's all hypothetical at this stage. Four minutes remaining, and here she is, Hiroka. Beautiful poise. She's running this one through, like that little and she makes it, but don't think it's going to be the 8.14, but you never know. Could be better than that 3.93 for sure. I like that little tuck knee grab rail. Look like a skateboarder from Dog Down on yep. in the pool, going to the coping. Love a skateboarder tuck knee air that they do in the pools. Such a great technique. And so we style. got the replay. That's nice footwork. So nonchalant up on the nose right there. Surfing that wave all the way through as far as she could. Yeah, I really, um, really enjoyed that poise actually. And here's Natsumi paddling hard, so she's got seven one seven a six, which is Hiroka's five zero five point zero three. So that's definitely going to improve on the five point zero three, judging by this the way this heat's rolled out already. Judges just queuing up a score for Hiroka. So yeah, paddling out next as we see our uh, Filipino surfer JR and the Frenchman. And Natsumi just going down on that. Two minutes 30 remaining. The crowd is packed. Once again, this is the women's final. We're about to have the men's commence very shortly, but... Still a lot on the line, so Natsumi current leadings rating leadings ratings leader. And she's paddling back out. She's not quite sitting on Hiroka yet. She's got priority. She knows Hiroka's still got a score to drop in. The judges are deliberating over this. Here she goes. And mistimes it, so yeah, we'll see what that first score from uh, Hiroka, that left, will come in at. She's got a minute 50 left to go. It's not over yet. I think she would have chipped away at it. So, 6.48, it comes in at a 6.7, uh, her first wave. So, 6.48 she's looking for, and that's going to give her a lot of confidence. Keep in mind, for the ratings, it's going to need to be a 16-point heat total or thereabouts to lift it up. So, she just heard that. And hopefully, minute 30, well... Now Natsumi's got priority, we'll see what happens. So this is what we saw as we panned to JR paddling out. Natsumi opts for the left, rides up high. Four steps back, ooh, and just that low tide bank crunching down. We've all been there, haven't we, Jared? Oh, definitely. Just crunched right there in the sand, underwater. Not a fun place to be. Thankfully it's sand though, right? 
thankfully it's Santa not Reed. Oh, and Hiroki. We see another crunch for our surfer and blue. She's got a minute left. Oh. Go, Hiroka. Go, go, go. She's Washing the sand out. Fixing herself so she can get back out there and show her beautiful surfing skills. These lovely ladies have been displaying all event long with just under a minute now, 45 seconds. She's paddling away. She's not giving up. She's no. in search for that 648 to take the lead and the win here. Let's see if the ocean gods will provide an opportunity for her to clinch the win. So 25 seconds, Natsumi's nowhere to be seen with priority. Yeah, 20 right. seconds, so she may get another roll of the dice here. It's looking but like a, a straight wave. Yeah. I think she's going to let it go. 10 seconds. It's going to cut it close to the wire. Yeah. She's paddling, let's see. We're at just under 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's unfortunately not going to count as she hasn't stood up above the hooter. As we go over to Surfer and Red, Natsumi, just so happy, splashing so water. Well deserved win for our Surfer and Red, Natsumi, as we see the Japanese flag down there. Camaraderie between the surfers, the supporters, and the fans. These Japanese surfers are very proud and prideful and of course they should be they put on a great display today and yeah good job you guys thank you so much for being here we love you congratulations all the best on for Natsumi on her um, campaign to go yeah. to the world, world and stage winning the event too and, and winning the event I think we're going to a quick break as we see Natsumi coming in and we'll be back with the men's final very shortly stay tuned There's the congratulations to our Japanese competitors. That's uh, Hiroka Yoshikawa coming in second place and ratings leader Natsumi Taoka winning the WSL LQS 1000 presented by Pedro as we roll into the men's. That's uh, our Frenchman Roland who's made it all the way through to the final and up against the Filipino JR who's just qualified. He's heard that news after Taka was eliminated and he's won the ratings leadership and he'll be moving on to the world tour as will Natsumi and there's a lot of fireworks still to go so there they are. Team Japan celebrating uh, two really good friends and they've been competing all around the world together and another one celebrating is JR with his hands up. Our fresh inductees onto the World Longboard Tour. So JR is going to be showing everybody out there tuning in what he's made of and he will be seeing him at Huntington Beach alongside Natsumi at the US Open of Surfing. Paddling back out there, you see the turbulence of the, uh, of the rip current. There's a fair bit of prize money up for grabs. The points at this point are irrelevant but Roland, he's in it for uh, for the money. He There's no points earned if you're from outside that Asia region. Uh, he's a European coming from France, and he's, you can sort of see how he's activated his hands, so he's focused. 25-minute final. 
uh, from 20 minutes. You can see in the in the foreground there all the celebra celebrations going on for Team Japan. They're all down here congratulating. I see uh, Key from Pedro Padro down there and look at Roland. He's looking at something. His hands out. He's wondering what blue is after or priority. Or he's waiting for an update. He can't hear. Perhaps it's uh, the beach announcer is talking about what's going on on the shore. So he's a little bit bothered there. We'll have to catch up with him later on and find out what's bugging him. And that's what's so good about these camera angles is that you can really tune in and see their body language. But he's activated. He hopefully it doesn't let him and let, uh, annoy him. We'll see if it affects his performance as he's paddling for this one. So he's probably waiting to hear what, what his requirement is as well. Gene JR started fairly quickly. Here he goes. This is our Frenchman, Roland Lefebvre. Wow. Upright 10, pushing a bit of water and finishing smoothly. So uh, Roland style and, and bigger frame during a few comparisons to Ben Skinner from the UK, uh, the stalwart, the European uh, stalwart coming from yeah the UK, the shaper and also a similar haircut to, to Ben as well with Roland. So, and he goes, this is what JR had before, uh, steering on the nose, four steps back and banking that one off the top. So that was his second wave, I believe. This is a replay of uh, Roland's, Roland's wave here. So left, right, nope, opts to go left. Quick little drop knee and riding high, gets the 10, pushing a little bit of water and he's stepping back to the tip and straightening out on that uh, rental board. If you've been tuning in all day, you'll realize that Roland's actually here on a holiday and he's borrowed a board. He wasn't, he was here with shortboards, so he's stoked that there's an event on. Gets that sole latched hand and holding the nose ride as he straightens out. And that board's definitely looking good and feeling good, I think. So a uh, 467 and a 433 for JR. And we yet to see that score from a Frenchman drop. Big thank you to our sponsors. This event's presented by WSL and Asian Surfing community and we've got to say big thanks to halfway board riders here at Cooter too they've been amazing and helping set up every day and running the beach marshals and you can see Roland there wow redirecting on the nose it's steering up the judges have really been liking that with the limited potential of these closeouts when someone's able to get to the nose and steer and come up the face and click 10 uh, it's showing a lot of tip control um, very limited scoring potential uh, out there trying to pick those waves with the corners Roland's actually done that and I think he'll capitalize and definitely better on those ones at this stage. Here he goes, riding high, gets to the nose, and here, gets up to 10. So not as dynamic as I first thought, but I think that wave was running quite fast and uh, he did a really good job. All right, folks, what a great final we have on our hands, RJ. The points leader and winner is going to gain position to compete on the world tour. Is currently sitting in first with a heat score total of 9.00 with a 4.67. And it just got updated. His second wave was a 4.43. And the Frenchman in second place, Roland Le Fleu, has a combined heat total of 6.37. He's sitting on a 4.67 and a 4.00 now. So the scores have been updated mm. for both. They're really close. They're neck yeah. and neck. Prolon is looking for a 4.43. And what a legend. Thank I you. mean, he's he shows up. He blows up. It's his second WSL event ever. And he's but hungry. I must say, he's hungry. It's great. It's kind of... He, it, was very, it seems nonchalant about mm. his hunger. We've seen that way, but as soon as the heat started, he's... He was really uh, hands up and, and sort of asking for requirements. And I think there was a lot of commotion on the beach with Hiroka and Atsumi. And 
JR up and riding way out in the face though. So the judge is taking note of the hands, de-weighting and smacking this one, this one off the top, but landing. Whoa. Man, claiming. And, um, claiming. He's feeling the vibe from his overall he, win he and, <laughs> and the energy from his fellow countrymen, the F Filipino crew down there. They're just, the support and love is just so infectious. It's blowing up. It's erupting all over the beach. People are just coming down because they hear the screaming as you walk so, by, the, the cheering, and they just. I've never felt know what's going on. this much camaraderie for the whole event of a longboard event before. Like the, the, from all day. So here's JR here. It's our job to criticize, critique, and congratulate. And that one was a con well, congratulate him on the make, but it was a little soft on the nose ride aspect. So he's trying to sell that one. I think that'll be a five or thereabouts mid range. But bigger set way for Roland. Gets that critical tan. Not sure about the hands. Well, he's got his arms up. Everybody's throwing their arms up. It is crazy out there, folks. And he's arms up all the way to the end. I mean, there's actually French surfers. I, I've seen guy. I saw, saw some of the French uh, football jersey on as well, um, oh. down there. So I don't know if it was coincidental, but I, thought, oh, really? I saw someone, yeah, a supporter for Roland too. But I want right. to say the 14 Filipinos and their families would be quite loud right now. But look at the set wave. We have not seen a wave like this all day. Bang! Or heat, at least. Now, this is great, but he gets shuffles here and he rushes back. How do you have not hey, gone push, for the... He's pushing water. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, know. Jared. Thanks. He's pushing water. Yeah. Okay, let's just say it. The hands were up. It was a bit uh, too much. He's he selling it. There, there's a couple of used car salesmen yeah, out there. <laughs> this is... The judges can see right through it, guys. They're um, selling some lemons. Yeah, it's and it wasn't a lemon of a wave. That, that was, you know, you put, um, well, these two are the best of the competition, but you put a lot of those competitors out there who's a little more composed. I think that's a seven or an eight, that wave in mm. particular. But we'll see. It might roll in about, a, excuse the pun, as a six or a seven. Let's see. Look at it rolling. Speaking of that hunger, it's rolling actually in. Show, it's showing now as he's... In second priority, so Look if JR this. wants to go, JR will go. It looks like he's paddling deeper. He's possibly going to go for the right. Roland wants it, but CC clearly can't take it. And JR is going to take this one mm -hmm. away in red. And he's back up into first. JR sitting on a 717 and a 467. Opting out of that wave and losing his priority. He's going to swing around and try and catch one. But our Frenchman is there to say no thanks as he takes this one straight up to the nose. Five, ten, five, clinging on, pushing some water, but he's clinging on, hangs on, and then gets dismounted and the rough whitewash there. So he's got a problem with his ear. He's probably got that surfer's ear as we do. Yeah, definitely. And at the beginning of the heat, he was super uh, irritated trying to hear. And I've can talk from experience when you're trying to hear something on the beach you yeah. can't and this is he keeps English it. is his second language you've got a Balinese commentator whose English is second language as well but this one way out in the face again but he gets that 10 pedals back and he's going to go for another slow. bank no pumping oh wow he's pumping whoa whoa wow looks like a Jeff Mo Moisa, Moisa attempt what pulling that one out uh, so it was Jeff uh, I know he put in some great performances on uh, in Hawaii, but he was Californian and rode yeah. short and longboards, right? Yeah, that's correct. And um, I was, I got to grow up watching him in Newport Beach, back there. Put on some great surfing throughout the years. He's definitely an inspiration for me on smaller boards and longboards. Part of the Lost crew as well for a little while there. I remember he was in one of those Lost Across America films. Yeah, I forget what crew he did. He worked with a lot of surf brands, as you know. That's a hub for surf brands. O'Neill in industry, industry there. Yeah, but he's a local favorite amongst wow. Newport and Huntington. So shout out to Jeff Moisa. Hope you're doing good and holding it down over there in Newport Beach. Speaking of holding it down, he's on a Kai Salas, JR. That oh, board's well, yeah, well, um, there you go. well used board, this one, but uh, it's got a snap in it. It's got a big crease in the front, but uh, seems to be working. Shout out to Kai. Um, a great, another great surfer. Let's get this kid. All around gentleman. Let's get this kid on a board. Let's get, yeah, Kai, if you're watching, man. Or another board. A yeah, quiv. A, a Let's get him a quiv. Get him a quiver, get him a fresh one, whatever. Keep the kids stoked. Class Alice Surfboard Co. And um, Kai, one of the uh, the longboard greats. And super smooth, very functional surfer from 2 to 20 feet. The guy's all around. And he goes rolling. 
Five three five required. Oh, oh a little foot kick. Oh, oh and off the top. All the maneuvers. This guy is pulling the cat out of the bag. The I made I made reference to Ben Skinner with his ben appearance. Ben Skinner. I like, Can you see that? Like he reminds me of yeah. Ben. It's strong as well. Shout out to Ben Skinner. Also, when I, he's actually Cars House's, uh, you know, sparring buddy. That sort of generation, a little bit older than us. Yeah, yeah. Great to see those guys around. They're such good guys to have a laugh with. Just talk some jargon and yeah. see some good surfing. So Whereas here it is, replay of that last wave. Technical aspect of that nose ride. Were you buying into it, Jared, or uh? it, was a, it was a little slow. Kind of, you know, he was kind of selling it with that little heel kick. Yeah. Um, it, I don't think it really played into the functionality of that nose ride. Looks a lot harder than it actually is, right? No, uh, it's still it's still pretty hard, but it just it was just slower. He threw his his leg back out there um, in the front just to push himself over the ledge and get back into the wave. But it was great to see him cross step back and smack it off the lip to end it, which was which was nice and functional and quick. You see a nice nose ride from Jr. Nice footwork to finish that one too. Five, ten foot kick. Everybody's kicking their foot out and throwing their hands up. So this is a longer left. We haven't seen this one yet. Oh, oh whoa! Oh. oh, loses it at the end there, but it was nice. Nose mm. right down at the bottom in a critical section. So unfortunately, comes undone. That was a replay. So Jr. Hmm, it's gonna it's be exciting to see these scores drop yeah. as both these surfers are tied with their second wave. Of a 4.67. Mm. So they're looking to better that. Here's a replay of that last wave from our Frenchman Roland. Right there, he just comes, Whoa. he goes over the ledge. Interesting that Roland's using a leg rope as well. Yeah, and JR took his leg rope off. Wow. Uh, so this one, uh, I mean, it's, it's not, there is a huge pocket out there, but there's a lot of closeout. So he's steering on the nose there. There, ooh. That's the section. Yeah. That's where you want to be. I think it's going to score pretty well, Jared. That was a long running oh. corner. Uh, I feel the same way display of mm. technique on the nose right there from our surfer in red currently with priority nine minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock he's going right see what he's got on his backhand straight up to the nose Oy. just gets a little confused up there mm -hmm. uh, he's gonna have to head back out losing priority to the surfer in blue the frenchman the surprise attack from france very much so very much so so he's gonna paddle down the beach. Looks like he sees something. He's deciding. Looks like he's going, folks. Look at that strength in his paddling. Determined to get up to the nose and score some points. Let's see what the section's got for him. It's gonna close out that low tide. Fortunately, that's not gonna be the 7.05 he's looking for. So the clock winding down. It looks like his ear is really irritating him. I felt that pain plenty of time, and it is not enjoyable, to say the least. So let's explain what surfers here is. A lot of the people who are tuning in from some of the Asian countries may yeah. not be aware of what happens when you surf colder water. Colder water and just uh, wind in the air. So surfers' ear is just your ear canal actually closing. So your ear canal forms a bone growth and is trying to protect your body from bacteria entering through your ear canal problem is is it doesn't seal completely and so when it gets really close like mine are 95 percent closing each year you get water stuck behind there and then then it causes a really terrible infection and it is quite painful mm. and the only solution is to get the surgery which now it's there's better options not like before where they can drill they don't have to slice your ear behind it and fold it over and um, mm. also, I also talk to a lot of older surfers that I've known, and they just say wear earplugs and put the drops in and just go as long as you can, for which sure. I've opted out for. So I've been using Blue Tech, which you're familiar with, being from Australia. Um, yeah, it's been the best, best solution for me, as all the other ear, earplugs I've tried have fallen out. And waves um, blue tack does too but at least it's cheaper <laughs> mm. yeah i do the blue tack and i noticed a few of the competitors using uh earplugs over here including one of the russian surfers mitt he was wearing earplugs um but yeah a lot of the asian countries don't have to worry about it too much uh generally yeah cold air and impact as well uh yeah. work work related injuries or 
constant um, noise can cause it's exotosis and yeah it's swimmer's ear and a colloquial term but uh, you're exactly right and yeah I feel the same thing 95% and thankfully I have them both pretty bad so I don't get in any nausea but here we have back and rolling six minutes 40 left on the clock high and tight now beautiful flare getting the highlight reel stepping back and banking that one off the top a little grab rail to finish and the arms are up so the arms are up the fun is up the excellent sun range is up. excellent range close yeah, man. take Six off half a point for the claim yeah. Yeah. hey man he's feeling it he just won he's going to wsl let him claim all he wants all right. young bug he's proven himself he's done his job he still wants to win this event but it's almost like a victory lap for the kid like look at him he's from the philippines he's a soul archin Baking out like this little grab rail right there to just pull it back in. Well, the crowd's egging that on as well. Yeah, no, if no one's on the beach, you're doing a little. You're like, yeah, yeah. He's got a huge crew from the Philippines down there with him. That's the best. Yeah. One of the best. Day. Apart from maybe representing his country at uh, El Salvador the other week, this would surely have to be one of his surfing highlights. But we'll find out if he does I mean, win I mean, the final. Well, this could be a fantastic day for him. But he's got a Frenchman who needs a 7.05. Who's not laying down. These guys are stoked. Have a look at them out in the uh, water. Their either, body language is relaxed. Either way, it's going to be a fantastic day for all of our competitors here, especially our man in red, earning that spot. He's going to have many highlights to come in his career ahead of him as he's going on to compete in the world tour. Like you said, first stop is Huntington Beach. I wonder if he's even been to California. If not, he has a lot to look forward to. I was fortunate enough to grow up in Southern California, Orange County, and it is an amazing experience. And you're not there anymore? Why? No, no, because I, I love to get surf better waves. <laughs> <laughs> There's great waves in California, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot better here and more frequent. So, shout out to all my friends and family and other Californians. But, um, yeah. And then the stop after that, somewhere that I'm familiar with, Bells Beach. Bells Beach, yep, yeah, as you are. You surf there quite a bit? Yeah, I have. Uh, oh, what, what a wave, man. What the, the history behind that and the surfers who have gone there to be champions. Wow. Yeah, but uh, the old Bells Beach Easter Classic, which has been won many a time from Sydney surfers. And I can tell you something about Bells is that it's going to be pretty similar to El Salvador. So if one picks their quiver accordingly... They're going to have a cold water version and a warm water version of the similar sort of wave. Huh. And moving on to El Salvador, some of that I hope to know a lot closer with my fiance being Salvadorian too and oh her yeah. family uh, having relatives in that area. Congratulations, by the way. I heard it was the uh, biggest drop knee you've ever done. <sighs> Apparently so. Apparently so. Good job, my man. You're just locking it in. And Malibu is somewhere we're both familiar with for the final stop. Oh, and the dream. I think both of these men out in the water, not that we'll see Roland there, but JR, is JR be will be there. And I'm, well, you know what? There's actually going to be a, a cut. A cut. Oh, that's right. So JR, let's assume with this momentum that JR will make the cut. Uh, and if he makes the cut, he's going to surf Malibu. Oh. And it's going to be pretty crazy oh. not to have heard about Malibu. For a young longboarder going to Malibu, it is like going to Waikiki, paying your respects to the Duke. Hawaiian people, it's just, it's the best, it's iconic, it's Malibu, you know, it's been here, it's paved the way for so many longboarders, it's just so many of us, and it's helped groom longboarders that have been inspirational to everyone around the world, and supported this community and lifestyle, so. And the, the, original, the original Malibu surf spot, that's where the surfboard name came from in Australia, because it was the Malibu style surfboard, the hot dogging surfboard. That's right. And rolling, rolling the dice on this, and that is not a pun intended. So he's holding that line. Looking for an eight six seven. Uh, Does complete it though, but a little sloppy on the on the finish. Just, uh, just the wave wasn't there for an eight six seven. Yep. If you if you compare it to Jr's eight and a seven one seven, mm. unfortunately, it's a great ride. Well, there's side fins in that board too. Yeah, yeah, it's a rental. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the leg rope came with it? Oh, for sure. Uh, J. Oh. And he's going to go back out. Kind of a uh, little Nueva-style walk there. He sort of was quite low and compact. Spreading those feet out. You know, David sort of he's opens them up a lot. Yeah. Like, open knees. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's got that bow-legged Bow-legged, yep. But, uh, 
another great to mention. Yep. One of our surfing's favorites, David Nueva. He's made that left quite famous at the U.S. Open there in Huntington Beach, which Justin Quintal obviously watched a million times because he's mastered that and won pretty much every duct tape that's been a part of the U.S. Open. So thank you, David Nueva, for showing us some great surfing, keeping us smiling, and uh, just being you, my man. And Justin, of course, our 2019 world title. He did. And you know, another a quick little story, too. When the duct tape, I forget what year it was, but I got to be a part of it at the U.S. Open with David. And the night before, he had a heart attack. No. A heart attack. And in the morning, he checked himself out of the hospital and came down to the U.S. Open and competed in the Vans duct tape. I mean, what year? that says it all. What dedication. I, I forget. I'm losing my memory, man. I'm getting old. Mm. <laughs> With just under a minute left, though. We're going to take it back out in the water. And JR is out in front. Roland's chasing at 8.67. So it looks like it's JR's day today, folks. Yeah. He's made it to the WSL World Longboard Tour. He's going to take this event. Congratulations to the Filipino family back home and on the beach here, around the world, wherever you may be. Thanks for the support, the love. But you know what? Vibes. No love lost for Roland. He's on a holiday and he's just banked a whole heap of prize money. Oh, look at the guy. And it's Roland. His second. World Longboard Tour contest and he ripping. made it. And he got second. Congrats to JR. I can actually hear the crowd from here and we're just behind the Warungs here. So 15 seconds and here they are. Our Filipino contingent. There it is. Look at that. Oh, that's Kyle Maria out. down there from ASC just There's getting K. the content. There's, There's K. K. Yeah. Yeah, from Padre our major sponsor. And we're going to wrap it up, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for throwing us some comments and paying attention to us have a jargon as we see the champion coming all the way in we're gonna head down to the beach and celebrate with everybody and so just, you guys take care just lastly a big shout out to our sponsors we thank Pedrol, the naming rights sponsor the mamaka hotel ben bgs Tang. and of course bin tank thank the asc wsl and all the fantastic judges the barungs the halfway board riders club here look at kuda at beach look at that guys what a celebration you guys it's so infectious. We can feel it all the way up here in the van. We're going to make our way down there. Stay We're going to join in the celebration. On the, on the beach. Otherwise, for me and Matt Janowski, we'll catch you later.
have your attention, please. I'd like everybody here on the beach to please put their hands together for the naming sponsor of the Longboard Classic. Thank you very much, everybody. And put your hands together for Padrol. Come on. Thanks, guys. The Padrol Longboard Classic. I'm sure they're pretty stoked with how things went this week. The surf was really good. There were a lot of people here. The sun was out. It was an absolute ripper. So Padrol, thank you very much for helping make history here at Cooter Beach with our first ever entrance into the championship tour coming via the Padrol Longboard Classic. Thanks very much. The party's going to be here this evening. I'm sure everybody's been there at least once. Can we put our hands together for Mamaka, the official hotel of the event? Mamaka. Woohoo! Yay. I'm sure everyone knows this name. Bintang, the official beer. Woohoo! Sure there's going to be plenty of those going on this evening. BGS, the coffee partner. Thanks, guys. You lot were awesome. Kept our mornings clean and fresh. Thanks very much. And also the halfway board riders. Thanks to the halfway board riders for your help, fellas. We love your work. Cheers to the halfway boys. Okay, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to bring up our women's third place finalists. So if we could please get and put our hands together. We are going to get this presented by Tafik from BGS. If you're there, Tafik, could you come up? Okay, and in third place, everybody, could you please put your hands together for these two? We're going to call up Daisy Valdez from the Philippines. Come on, Daisy. And Aping Agudo. Really quickly, girls, good fun this week, Daisy? Yeah, we had so much fun. How about yourself? Yeah, me too, like. Woohoo! Okay, everybody, third placing, here are your checks. Thank you, Tarpik. If we can hand those over. The prize money will be handed out this evening at Mamaka. So we'll hand the ladies their official um, Padrol trophy. Thank you very much. And we have a little bag of goodies as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Daisy and this is Aping. Woohoo! Put your hands together, come on. Sorry. Oh, uh, no. I think he wants. So ladies, we'll just stay here if you don't mind. We'll get the other finalists up and we'll get some big group photos done. Thank you very much. Okay, so our runner-up in this year's women's division of the Padrol Longboard Classic from Japan, Hiroka Yoshikawa. <laughs> Hiroka, really quickly, congratulations. But for you, how cool was this week here in Bali? for longboarding in a long way. Um, I was so fine to surf with Natsumi in a final. Well, you Japanese surfers, listen, you're really coming a long way. We do take notice. Would you like to give a quick shout out to your gang, the, the team that you rolled with in your, your corner, your support people? Oh, thank you so much for uh, supporting me. All right, runner up. So if we could get Helmi, is Helmi there? Thank you, Helmi. Helmi is representing Bintang. Thank you very much, Helmi. So Hiroka takes the runner up check. Thank you very much, team. Let's just stay right here, because we're going to call up the winner of this year's Padrol Longboard Classic. Her name is Natsumi Taoka. I'll come over here, Natsumi. Oh my goodness, not only has she won and made history here at Kuta Beach, the first lady out of the Asian region who will be surfing on the championship tour, Natsumi. How good does that sound? I feel so amazing. I feel so good. Thank you, everyone, for watching my heat. I'm always fun heat with Hiroka. It's always like competing each other. It's, it was very fun heat for her. Well, it's been a very fun couple of days, I must admit. Now, Natsumi, has this been a dream of yours? Yeah, it's 
well, my dream come true right now. So now I will focus next competition for WLT. So Natsumi, one of the best days of your life right now? <laughs> there you go. Short on words, but put big smile, everybody. Put your hands together, please. Natsumi and Hiroka. Okay, sorry, Padrol, sorry, can we just keep you come over here? This was uh, Mr. Kai, representing Padrol. He's going to hand over the official check to Natsumi. Thank you very much for the team from Padrol. Huge, I'm sure you guys have uh, lots of good feedback from this event. We very much thank the crew from Padrol. So maybe a quick opportunity just to get some photographs here. And maybe one more time, everybody, could we please put our hands together for our finalists in the women's part of the Padrol Longboard Classic. Yeah, girls. Woohoo! Yay, how good. Thank you, Arigato. We need all the winners' checks for tonight. Prize money at Mama's house. Okay, thank you ladies, I'll just jump out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna uh, hear from our men. So we're gonna bring up our third place getters and we are gonna ask Mr. Taufik from VGS to come up again and hand out the goodies. In third position, can we please call up Kai Hamasi and Taka Inoy? Thank you. And thank you Taufik from VGS. He's going to hand over the checks. Kai Hamasa, everybody. Kai. Let's put our hands together for Kai. Why not? Kai, you've had a good week. Have you had a good week here in Bali? Good fun? No. No, good, not good fun. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you're kidding. The sun's out, the waves are being good, and you've got a third placing. That's pretty good, I reckon. Here we go. Things are about to get better. There's a bintang on the way. All right, Taka Inoi, quickly, third placing. Ka okay. Kai, how has your week been here in Bali? So nice. <laughs> Boys, are we going to party tonight? Yeah. Oh, there we go, there we go, of course we are. Woohoo, everybody, our third place getters. All right, we're going to call up the men and we're going to call Helmi from Bintang to come up here and hand over the goodies to our runner up. So let's put our hands together for the French surfer, Roland Lefouve. <laughs> Roland! <laughs> Thank you very much there, Helmy. Thank you, here he goes. Roland. Okay, Roland, really quickly, if, I, if you don't mind, tell us about your experience here over the last two days. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, surfer are amazing here. Everybody is so friendly. So, thank you to everybody on the beach and in water. Everybody was so friendly. So, thank you for all. It must have been a big team effort to get this far and reach the final over a massive two days of surfing. Who was in your team and would you like to thank anybody? Who was on my team? I don't know. <laughs> Who was on your team? You got a coach? You got some friends? I come with uh, Willow, he's over there somewhere. But uh, I come here for holidays, so I just enjoy the time here. <laughs> and for the story, I just read the board on another shop just behind, because I don't come with my surfboard, I come with a short board to surf big wave normally, but there is no wave, so I rent a long board. Oh my goodness, he's rented a surfboard all the way to second place. How good's that? My goodness, Roland, that is a great story. That's one of the best things I've ever heard. Test. Rent a board and come second, my goodness. All right, which leaves our winner, everybody, from the Philippines. Let's please put our hands together for JR. Sorry, sorry, Bart. Thank you. All right, I'd like to get um, Kai from Padrol, please, to come up here and present, present the winner's check. 
Okay, well. Go, a bintang at last. Okay. Okay, we have some questions. We're going to have a chat with JR. JR, you've made history here at Kuta Beach, brother. You become the first surfer on the Asian region to become a championship tour. How good? Yeah, I feel so nice. Like. Everyone here deserves the slot. Like um, everyone who came here to compete was really nice and good. And I'm so stoked and I can't imagine I won this event. Well, you have, brother. It's not a dream. It is not a dream. Let me tell you that right now. Listen, um, there'll be a lot of people at home in the Philippines watching this. You're the first person to crack it. You're basically the Rio Wider of longboarding out of your area. So how big is this? How big is this moment for the Philippines? What does it mean for the crew back home? Yeah, it was a uh, big um, history for the Philippines for sure. <laughs> and hopefully it will like boost the young generations in the Philippines to like um, go harder than what I can. And um, I can't wait to see them like um, on the next um, tour, like also the world tour. And yeah, let's push them harder. <laughs> well, you busted down the door. You busted down the door is now open for other Filipinos to step on through. Um, you've had a big team of Filipino crew here. You guys, this is your man. How about a shout out to your team? Yeah, thank you so much um, to everyone who is here. Like to all the Filipinos who traveled here to watch and support. Thank you so much, guys. Um, this. Uh, uh, that is a really big help for us um, that will push us really harder. And yeah, also to the um, people in the Philippines who is watching, thank you so much for the support. And to all our sponsors, thank you so much. Yeah. Right, uh, how about you guys spray him again with your beers? Come on, let's do this, everybody. There's our finalists. JR is the man, and he'll be taking on the world's best on the World Championship Tour. Okay, everybody, that wraps up our presentations. The final preso this evening's uh, social event will happen at Mamaka on the rooftop from 5 o'clock. So get ready to bring your dancing shoes. Get, let's get ready to turn it up. And we'll see you all at Mamaka from 5 o'clock. Sunset drinks are on Bintang. How good. Thank you.